Jake Alfred. Brains and Realities. Prologue. This distinction between past, present, and future is only an illusion. Albert Einstein, physicist. Conventional neuroscience assumes that there is a real objective world out there and that the brain constructs a world that is representative of this world but how do we prove that? Do we use our three, dimensional instruments to probe and our three dimensional consciousness to verify? What exactly is out there? Contrary to the conventional neuroscientific three dimensional model, cutting edge physics tells us that the world out there is multi dimensional and not solid but a cacophony of waveforms. The three dimensional world constructed by the brain is a reduction and a limited interpretation of what is really out there in Eastern religious philosophy and certain Western philosophies. There is a bold assertion that what is out there is a paradoxical full void, i.e., a nothingness which contains everything apparently. This void has been experienced by mystics and advanced meditators, as recorded quite extensively in religious scriptures and the metaphysical literature in this void, space and time are meaningless the Sarangama Sutra of the Buddhists emphatically point out that location in space is illusionary Saint Augustine believed in an ever-present eternity which was not accessible to humans both space and time may be illusions. Ultimately, all moments are really one therefore now is eternity. David Bohm, Physicist. Vi. For a long time it was assumed that space and time were fundamental to the underlying reality, but Einstein's theory of special relativity toppled this assumption what we observe as space and what we observe as time are now regarded as two aspects of a more fundamental space-time continuum to what extent this continuum manifests as space and how much of it manifests as time varies according to the relative motion of the observer in other words. They are both subject to our perception within specific frames of reference which provide three-dimensional frameworks to structure our mental image of the world but we are perhaps deceiving ourselves when we assume that they are also fundamental to the underlying reality. Space and time are like the two lenses in a pair of glasses without the glasses we could see nothing the actual world, the world external to our minds, is not directly perceivable. We see only what is transmitted to us by our space-time spectacles the real object, what can't call the thing in itself, is transcendent, beyond our space-time, completely unknowable. Perceptions are in, in a sense, illusions they are shaped and colored by our subjective sense of space and time. Martin Gardner, Mathematician Advances in brain science recently, science has made significant advances in studying the brain during meditative states using cutting-edge medical imaging methods, observations have been made of specific areas in the brain which are activated or deactivated during meditation it has also been widely observed that many meditative traditions emphasize the activation and development of the right hemisphere of the brain in fact, Certain studies have shown that various areas in the right hemisphere grow thicker with regular meditation is it possible to modify the operation of the brain to allow a meditator to experience a totally different reality? Can we bypass the brain's constructions to reach a more fundamental reality? It is becoming increasingly evident that we are blocked by our perceptual apparatus from experiencing a more primordial reality hence. It would make sense to look at how the human brain processes information to understand better the models that it uses to construct its interpretation of the underlying reality, while being limited by its own processing power and capabilities. Prologue. V. Dot 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 our senses cannot be fully trusted especially when it comes to such fundamental questions as the dimensionality of the world. Dot 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 there is nothing three-dimensional in the objective world. Dot 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 the three-dimensionalist view contradicts Einstein's special theory of relativity and more importantly the experiments which confirm its consequences. Dot 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 space time is not merely a mathematical space but represents a four-dimensional external world which is not directly reflected in our perceptions. Veslin Petkoff, Physicist
the journey we will begin the journey by first discussing the different methods of processing sensory information in the right and left hemispheres of the human brain we will then explore what happens to the brain during mystical experiences as revealed by recent medical studies after this we will take a look at what modern physics tells us of the nature of the universe or multiverse Comparing it with what mystics have said about it we will then propose the astonishing hypothesis that the experiences of mystics are reconcilable to modern physics, and that the brain can be made to experience a more fundamental reality where space and time do not operate. Descriptions of this reality recorded in religious and metaphysical literature will be reviewed. Alongside descriptions from modern physics then we will proceed to see how the human brain connects to parallel universes and review its non-local nature readers will however note an undercurrent of questions regarding the nature and future of science and how it can be reconciled to the totality of human experience science parted ways with religion more than 500 years ago shaking off the dust of centuries of non-verified claims and superstitions will it be reunited with religions in their essence and wisdom in the next 500 years i still believe the universe has a beginning in real time at the big bang but there's another kind of time imaginary time at right angles to real time in which the universe has no beginning or end stephen hawking 1 c h a p t e r 1 Right versus left brain. Our brain, like many other parts of our anatomy, is made up of two halves, a left brain and a right brain they are connected to each other by a thick cable of nerves at the base of each brain, called the corpus cassum it is analogous to a cable or network connection between two incredibly fast and immensely powerful computers, each running a different program to process basically the same input when Roger Sperry severed the corpus cassum in the 60s which connected the left and right brains, he was stunned by the fact that his split brain patients behaved as if they had two minds and two persons in one body. He found that the patient could name an object but could not explain what it was used for when the object was shown only to the right eye. The left verbal brain processes data from the right visual field, when shown to the left eye. The right nonverbal brain processes data from the left visual field, the patient could explain and demonstrate its use, but could not name it. Roger Sperry received the 1981 Nobel Prize for his work in this area. It appears that when a normal person names an object and explains its purpose, both halves or hemispheres of the brain, which are connected by the corpus cassum, participate in this final conclusion. Split brain versus Normal people split brain studies imply but do not prove that ordinary people have two minds however, there is abundant scientific evidence that demonstrates. 2. The relevance of split brain findings for ordinary people with intact brains and split brain patients The left brain uses different strategies from the right brain Scientists have found that ordinary people have the same differences in cognitive abilities between sides as split brain patients If an ordinary person is seated in front of a screen and asked to look forward and an object is flashed very briefly to his right side, i.e. his left brain he will respond faster and more accurately if the task involves language if you flash a spatial task, for example, asking the subject to identify if a dot is within a circle, he will perform better when flashed on his left side, or to the right brain. Ordinary people are also shown to be better at seeing the overall picture if an image is flashed to the right brain These studies and others involving hearing through the left and right ears have been repeated many hundreds of times in ordinary people. And the findings are consistently similar to those in split brain patients The findings mean that the cognitive abilities of the left and right brains of split brain patients are similar to those of ordinary people PET scans show that even when normal people with intact brains, talk, the blood flow pattern changes in their brains, and there's more activity in the left brain than in the right when they imagine space, the pattern reverses one study on occupational preferences in cognitive styles showed that those who declared English as a major had a greater blood flow in the left brain, the verbal brain, whereas those who majored in architecture had a correspondingly higher level in the right brain one.
when all the evidence is sifted and weighed, we are reminded that our ordinary minds are more similar to split brain minds than some neuroscientists would like us to believe. Dr. Frederick Schiffer too. Despite myriad exceptions, the bulk of split that brain research has revealed an enormous degree of lateralization, or specialization in each hemisphere. Michael Gazan Eager 3. Different modes of thinking The term left brain used in this book includes both the higher, i.e. the neocortex, and lower, for example, the amygdala, brain structures on the left side of the brain similarly, the right brain includes both the higher and lower brain structures on the right side of the brain according to Bernice. Right versus left brain Chapter 1. 3. McCarthy the two brains control two different modes of thinking or cognitive styles each of us prefers one mode over the other while the left brain is logical, sequential, rational, analytical and looks at parts, the right brain activities appear random, intuitive, holistic, synthesizing and looks at holes for the left brain processes information from parts to whole, the right brain however, processes from the whole to parts. Right brain is holistic uses top-down processing according to Ornstein, from the early studies of the split brain through recent research on the whole competently functioning brain, the scientific understanding has become increasingly certain of the right brain's role in seeing the large view seeing the large organization is a specialization of the right brain. 5 More specifically, Newberg and Diaquili believe that the right parietal lobe is involved in a holistic, top-down, approach to things whereas the left parietal lobe is involved in a more reductionist and analytic bottom-up, process 6. Figure 1, regions of the brain Many split brain studies confirm that the right brain is superior at assembling pieces of the world into a coherent picture 7 when we lack a higher level perception. The world will seem like a disconnected maze of individual experiences. The brain does not assemble three individual lines into a triangle we only see a triangle when we change our viewpoint to some. 4. Extent. This evidence is a higher dimensional view of the subject whereas the left brain has a linear perspective in that it sees three individual one-dimensional objects i.e. lines, the right brain, on the other hand, sees a whole two-dimensional object i.e. a triangle the right side seems to be specialized for the large elements. The overall shapes of objects and the word shape the left side handles the small, precise links that carry the smaller, more precise meanings and movements it's this specialization that contributes to one side being good for the analysis of small features versus the holistic vision of the other side the left hemisphere is more focused on details and the right hemisphere is better at perceiving overall patterns this also goes for language processing people with right hemisphere damage can always understand the literal meaning of a request, but they cannot always judge what the request means in context. In other words, the other dimensions of the subject, the use of metaphor involves the right hemisphere metaphors, like in direct language, sarcasm or irony, convey a significance that is different from the literal meaning many right brain damaged patients also seem to have difficulty in identifying the gist of passages in order to do this, we need to be able to see things as a whole eight this has also been alluded to in the metaphysical literature Charles Leadbeater says that the causal, or higher dimensional, consciousness deals with the essence of a thing, while the lower mind, associated with the left brain, studies its details 9. Right brain is a parallel processor and appositional experiments conducted by Bianchi concluded that in animals the parallel spatial processor of information processing is localized in the right hemisphere and the sequential temporal processor in the left 110 according to Kaiser, reducing input from the environment to components and sequences as a result of the left side's form of organization apostrophe 11 McCarthy says, the left brain processes in a linear, sequential, logical manner when you process on the left side, you use information piece by piece to solve a math problem or work out a science experiment when you read and listen, you look for the pieces so that you can draw logical conclusions if you process primarily on the right side of the brain, you use intuition apostrophe 12 according to Joseph Bogon 13. 
the human propositional left hemisphere is complemented by an appositional mind on the right side to oppose means to place attributes in juxtaposition. In a superposition or in parallel propositional is an either or or true false approach, either one attribute or its contrary is accepted as true at a point in time it uses asymmetric, classical or Aristotelian logic the right brain uses a both and approach it uses symmetric logic, some might say quantum logic apostrophe. Right versus left brain chapter 1. 5. Hence, the internal logic used by the right brain is different from the left brain according to Einstein, many researchers in the field have now concluded that the role of the right hemisphere seems to involve maintaining the alternative meanings of ambiguous words in immediate memory while the role of the left hemisphere is to focus on only one meaning generalizing, we could say that the right hemisphere is able to hold an attribute and its corresponding contrary attribute in superposition, or in parallel, whereas the left hemisphere tends to one attribute at a time, first one attribute and then the contrary attribute, in a sequential manner. Right brain has convergent awareness Karl Popper and Nobel winning neuroscientist John Eccles authors of The Self and Its Brain, describe the right brain as the minor brain apostrophe some have even questioned whether the right brain is conscious at all the left side has long been considered a dominant hemisphere, responsible for the uniquely human gift of language and because of this, many have argued, our self-awareness and intelligence Eccles thinks that the right hemisphere is not conscious at all because split brain patients cannot express the contents of their right hemispheres in words this is obviously a premature conclusion how does consciousness arise? Consciousness is how we feel the affirmation negation contrast. Alfred North Whitehead 14. The Hindu saint, Paramahansa Yogananda says, there are no pictures without light and shadow apostrophe 15 in other words, there is no consciousness of this or that without discrimination or differentiation consciousness or conscious awareness arises when complementary attributes are differentiated in the environment, hot from cold, acidic from alkaline, light from dark and so on even single celled organisms move away from certain stimuli and move towards other stimuli by differentiating favorable and unfavorable sensations the nature of conscious awareness is therefore necessarily dualistic we will describe this type of consciousness or awareness, associated frequently with the left brain, as divergent awareness in this book, or conscious awareness. A perceptual system which is neither attracted to an attribute nor repelled by its complementary attribute, does not differentiate hot from cold, acidic from alkaline, light from dark and so on this would be the opposite of being conscious. But we should not conclude that it is unconscious apostrophe we will describe this type of consciousness as convergent awareness or 6. Unconscious awareness in this book the choices for these terms arise from the different ways in which the two brains relate the self with the environment according to Kaiser, the right brain believes the organism includes the environment and subsequently models this extended self the self is interpreted from the vantage point of the world and converges into the self from the environment the left brain, and lower structures on the left side of the brain, on the other hand, believes events in the world follow the organism's rules of organization in other words, the world is interpreted from the vantage point of the self and diverges out from the self to the environment in other words, the right brain uses exterior rules, from the environment, in its neuronal organization and processing, whereas the left brain uses interior rules, from itself to perceive and analyze the environment 16 anatomical evidence supports these inferences the left brain has a greater density of cells than the right, and more importantly, there is more gray matter relative to white, with the opposite pattern in the right brain 17 this suggests that the organization of the left brain, relative to the right, emphasizes processing within regions while the right brain emphasizes processing across regions evidence from both normal and brain damaged populations supports this dichotomy, according to Kaiser 18 divergent awareness is asymmetric it oscillates from an attribute to its complementary contrary attribute over time, and is analytical and discriminatory. This is normally associated with the left brain convergent awareness is symmetric and appositional. 
carrying out parallel processing of dissimilar attributes or synthesizing inputs from two or more serial processing streams, this is normally associated with the right brain in other words, the right and left brains combine convergent awareness with divergent awareness this configuration is similar to Bernard Ba's idea of a theater of consciousness apostrophe 19 which combines convergent input with divergent output. The right brain is visual and spatially intelligent according to Einstein, damage to the right brain not only destroys the visual information coming from the left, but more importantly our understanding of space similarly, damage to the left brain destroys the ability of the right brain to verbalize occasionally, using the left brain speech centers, 20 the left brain verbalizes and is time-like in contrast. The right brain communicates using visual messages and is space-like we can say, therefore, that the left brain handles name and the right brain handles form, the right brain handles space and the left brain time apostrophe together, the whole brain gives us the experience of name and form in space-time. Right versus Left Brain Chapter 1. 7. Spatial intelligence is that aspect of our intelligence that allows us to make judgments about the three-dimensional world in which we live a football player catching a pass relies on spatial intelligence to judge the trajectory of the ball an architect uses it to visualize what a building will look like when it is completed we all use it every time we drive a car and have to judge the distance to the car in front of us advanced math courses require good spatial intelligence this spatial intelligence is related to the ability of the right brain to see things holistically, using a top-down process as already noted, while the left brain may see three lines, the right brain sees a triangle. Aging and brain dominance The rates of development between the two brains are different during a person's lifetime the right brain develops at a faster rate during the first two years in human spear has shown that an infant attends to more events in an episode than even an adult however. This ability deteriorates as the left brain develops from ages 3 to 5. The left hemisphere develops more rapidly, as the child acquires language 21 The gradual elimination of blissful states experienced in childhood may be due to the development of the discriminatory left brain The old saying that we have to become like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven also becomes more meaningful with our understanding of brain development Many aging studies show a decline in right that brain functions as we age for example. Many researchers report an age-related drop in spatial memoir while no significant analogous changes occur in left brain tasks also, memory for faces, a predominantly right brain ability, declines with normal aging 22 as we age, the left brain attempts to control all aspects of the organism, including the flow of information across the corpus cusum in other words, the left brain becomes dominant Clisms found that adults in their early 40s could best be differentiated from adults in their 50s by impairment tests to their right brains 23 all this suggests that when we, most of us, come into this world we are right brain dominant, but when we leave it we are left brain dominant since the right brain is also associated with creativity. Does this provide evidence on why the most creative work of many artists and scientists are normally found earlier in life rather than later? Avoiding generalizations the physical boundaries of the left and right brains must not be taken too seriously we are ultimately concerned more with the types of processing that goes on in the brain, whether bottom up, starting from parts, or top down, starting from the whole, rather than their physical locations the 8. Split brain experiments show that if the two hemispheres are not connected into a single circuit, that is, if they do not speak to each other, they exist essentially as two major circuits only the circuit connected to the language center seems to result in conscious awareness hence, in split the brain patients, the right brain functions do not enter into consciousness directly since it is not connected to the conscious left brain however. It should be noted that the two brains can speak to each other on another level that does not require the corpus cus and they can also speak to each other via the limbic system, through the thalamus and hypothalamus, and the autonomic nervous system. Unsuspected connections and disconnections until recently it was believed that the entire corpus cus must be severed to provide relief from severe epileptic seizures however this is not necessarily the case. 
the corpus callosum only needs to be severed enough to provide relief, without losing all neural integration based on this new form of surgery. Dr. H. G. Gordon, a neurobiologist at the California Institute of Technology, also found that a connection at the back of the brain alone is enough to integrate both human minds according to him. The cerebral hemisphere is totally integrative but a small fraction of the corpus callosum remains intact apostrophe on the other hand. Tumors or blood clots pressing on only part of an intact corpus callosum can cause full-blown Jekyll slash Hyde reactions, similar to split the brain patients. Gordon and his co-workers J.E. Bogan and Roger Sperry believe that tumors and clots cause waves of inhibition to spread to all parts of the corpus callosum. Shocked nerve fibers simply do not carry impulses from one side of the brain to the other. Furthermore, it has also been found that even in a healthy corpus callosum only certain types of information can be carried. Complicated higher level information cannot pass through from one brain to the other. Split brains can be initiated both physically and chemically. It may also be initiated psychologically through thought processes and communications between the left and right brain selves, resulting in one side being dominant logically. This could mean that a normal person with a dominant left brain may exhibit behavior similar to a split brain person with a partially damaged right brain. Plasticity of the brain The brain is fairly plastic and can accommodate different types of processing if it was organized differently physically. For example if there was significant damage to one hemisphere of the brain one of Michael Gazanegger's right versus left brain chapter 1. 9. Patients developed the capacity to speak out of the right brain 13 years after the brain surgery. There are also cases involving children, where one cerebral hemisphere was removed. Children who have undergone brain removal at an early age develop more or less normally. The remaining cortex takes over the functions once provided by the removed cortex if the removal occurs later in life. However, this sort of compensation does not occur. Migration of skills from right to left brain over time it has been noted that while novel skills, such as playing a musical instrument for the first time, may be handled by the right brain, the skills and knowledge tend to migrate to the left brain over time, thus, inhibiting the creativity initially exhibited, this may also be the basis of beginner's luck apostrophe. Shared resources and services In the 1980s Jeffrey Holtzman of Cornell University Medical College found that each hemisphere is able to direct spatial attention not only to its own sensory sphere but also to certain points in the sensory sphere of the opposite, disconnected hemisphere 24. In other words, certain resources in the left brain are freely available to the right brain and vice versa the two brains therefore use the other brain for certain parts of the processes that are initiated and concluded in the other brain cooperative processing and sharing of resources must be borne in mind when talking about the dichotomy of tasks between the right and left brains left-handed people the brain organization of left-handed people is often different from that of right-handed people this could include a reversed brain organization or both brains with both language and spatial abilities for optimal functioning Ornstein believes that the two major functions of the human mental system need to stay within the range of equilibrium 25 according to him the right brain specializations develop to their fullest when informed by a fully developed left side otherwise we get form without content apostrophe both sides of the brain most likely incorporate the other side into their models of the world the left side may model the right as part of its own organization the right side may perceive the left side as partially exterior to the organism a complicated region of the environment whose rules the right side will attempt to acquire the body and possibly the other side of the brain are experienced as being the exterior environment and subsequently modeled as such in the right brain. 10. Sex differences Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania Medical Center have recently reported that, relative to cranial volume, women's brains have a higher proportion of gray matter, which facilitates computations while men have a higher proportion of white matter, which facilitates communication between groups of cells in different areas of the brain. Studies also show that women have a thicker corpus callosum, which is composed of white matter, connecting the right and left brains, allowing them to integrate their right and left brains better the corpus callosum, however, 
is composed of white matter women are therefore superior in their capacity to communicate between the different modes of perceiving and relating to the world, according to Christine Holt, 27. 11. C-H-O-P-T-E-R-2. Intuitive versus discriminating rational, mind. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Albert Einstein 1. We are now used to hearing about right brain and left brain processes however, before the localization or lateralization of certain brain processes were discovered, there were many references, in philosophy, religion and psychology, to the intuitive mind versus the rational, analytical or discriminating mind the Lankavatara Sutra, an age-old Mahayanist scripture, speaks of a discriminating mind and an intuitive mind which have unmistakable similarities to the attributes given to the left and right brains, respectively according to this sutra, it is because of the discriminating mind, which is also called the thinking or intellectual mind, that an objective world evolves the discriminating mind is portrayed as a dancer and a magician with the objective world as his stage the intuitive mind, however, is the wise jester who travels with the magician and reflects upon his emptiness and transience, an observer. 12. The intuitive mind, now associated with the non-dominant right brain, partakes of the universality of a universal mind and is one with this universal non-local, mind by reason of its participation in transcendental intelligence and at the same time is one with the mind system, the local mind by its comprehension of differentiated knowledge, generated by the discriminating mind, to this is consistent with the statement by Def Jailing that the unconscious, which comprises the intuitive and universal mind, is the larger sphere, which includes within it the smaller sphere of the conscious, the discriminating mind, because everything conscious has an unconscious preliminary stage the intuitive mind sits between the universal mind and the individual's discriminating mind according to this sutra, the universal mind transcends all individuation and limits, and is devoid of personality it is like a great ocean. Its surface ruffled by waves and surges caused by the activities of the discriminating mind the discriminating mind has been accused of defiling the face of universal mind forcing the universal mind to play a variety of parts as actors consequentially, the universal mind has become the storage and clearing house of all the accumulated mental products and actions of the various actors nirvana, according to this sutra, is achieved by getting rid of the discriminating mind apostrophe however, the cessation of the discriminating mind cannot take place until there has been a turning about in the deepest seat of consciousness. 3. Does this allude to a turning about from the left brain to the right brain? The Sarangama Sutra, another age-old Mahayanist scripture, describes something similar. It identifies both a thinking mind and an intuitive mind apostrophe according to this sutra. Enlightened persons discard the use of their thinking minds even then, they are perfectly intelligent because they apprehend knowledge, not by means of their thinking minds, but directly by intuition apostrophe the intuitive mind, according to this sutra, is not enlightened by something else, it is self-enlightening apostrophe the true essence of our consciousness is our enlightened intuition apostrophe this wonderful intuition, the sutra says, abides in tranquility permeating everywhere throughout the phenomenal worlds and universes. For in other words, the intuitive mind is non-local, as it expands into the universal mind, it is with the attainment of the essential intuitive mind that the intuitive mind's enlightening nature is known hence. You need to experience the workings of the intuitive mind to know of its mysterious intelligence because unlike analytical thinking the thought processes cannot be traced. It, i.e. the right brain, is perceived as unconscious or a black box by the thinking mind, normally associated with the dominant left brain. Intuitive versus discriminating, rational, 1001 nd chapter 2. 13. The intuitive mind's perception according to the Sarangama Sutra, physical sense perception is by its very nature limited it says that the objective world arises from the mind itself taking these manifestations of the mind as being real we go on discriminating them and cherishing the dualism of this i.e. an attribute, 
and that i.e. its complementary attribute, the multiplicity of objects, however, has no reality in itself and is like a dream it is not until discrimination is gotten rid of that the fact that all things are empty, unborn and without independent existence can be appreciated in ignorance things are perceived and in perfect knowledge they are not perceived, the sutra says objects and the world neither exist nor do not exist, it depends on your frame of reference over time, the sutra says. Sentient beings have been led astray by mistaking the nature of their mind to be the same as the nature of any other object their minds became bewildered by outer objects and the perception of their sight changed to conform to the dimensions of its visual field and to become limited strictly according to outer conditions if you learn to see things by your true mind, says this sutra, so perfectly universalized will your mind become that even at the point of a single hair all the kingdoms of the universe will be seen apostrophe 5 we must be careful to distinguish between the perception of our eyes and the intrinsic perception of sight by our enlightened mind that is conscious of the fallible perception of the eyes though there may be all degrees of illumination between brightness and darkness, intrinsic perception possesses no differentials. In other words no complementary pairs of attributes are discerned, according to the Sarangama Sutra, as soon as consciousness, i.e. divergent awareness, appears. Then all such phenomena as sight, space, motion etc., will be manifested, and as soon as this consciousness disappears, all such phenomena also disappear this discriminating consciousness has no originality of its own. In other words it is derivative, it is an elusive manifestation developed by our sensory systems. Divided and indivisible realities Matt Blanco, a renowned psychologist, describes two antagonizing modes of being, a dividing one, the splitting and polarizing logic of our discriminating consciousness, and an indivisible one, reality as it is, prior to any division by discriminating consciousness, according to Def Janning. Freud's true psychic reality comes pretty close to what Blanco would describe as our second mode of being, what he calls indivisible reality apostrophe. 14. Symmetric logic of the unconscious right brain unconscious thought operates with a systematic logical structure of its own in other words, it has its own internal logic, which is different from the logic used by consciousness it uses symmetric logic, according to Blanco 6 using this logic. The ordinary concepts of cause and effect, time and space are overturned we are confronted with an absence of mutual contradiction and negation, and timelessness according to Janing, psychoanalysts have tended to focus on various detail aspects of Freud's work while disregarding the fundamental and disturbing implications of the idea that the mind, in this context, the conscious left brain, works within a framework of timelessness and spacelessness i.e. within the environment of the intuitive right brain and the universal mind. Unconscious thinking unites or unifies things which for ordinary thinking are distinct and separated relations within the unconscious are symmetrical. For instance, Mary is different from Clara, or A is identical to B, they remain true when they are inverted to use mathematical terminology, they are commutative apostrophe the unconscious is characterized by an increasing prevalence of symmetry at the surface there is a mixture of asymmetric and symmetric logic, i.e. both commutative and non-commutative operations apply, but the deeper you go into the unconscious, the more symmetrical it becomes blanco distinguished different serata in the mind, the deeper the unconscious the higher the degree of symmetry blanco also noted that the unconscious was timeless, placeless, uses symbols and imagery, appositional, unable to distinguish between hard and fluid reality, or fantasy, and between the part and the whole, and uses a combination of symmetric and asymmetric logic 7 it will be immediately noticed that all the attributes of the unconscious described by Blanco are identical to the characteristics of the right brain noted in various experiments cited previously. Logic of the unconscious symmetric logic basically equates an attribute or property with its contrary or anti-property, in other words yin equals yang if there are two events, A and B, symmetric logic allows you to say that if A is before B, then B is before the order of the events is not important in symmetric logic the operation of the logic would therefore be described as commutative apostrophe for example, 
In the arithmetic operation of addition, 1 plus 2 equals 2 plus 1 in other words. The operation of addition is commutative on the other hand, 1, 2 is not equal to 2, 1 apostrophe the operation of subtraction is not commutative, the order is important. Intuitive versus discriminating, rational, 1001 ND chapter 2. 15. Experiencing superspace in our minds in supersymmetry theory, in modern physics, there are two sets of four dimensions one set is commutative and the other set non-commutative the two sets of dimensions, when combined, constitute what is called superspace apostrophe according to physicists, it is very hard to visualize this geometrically because we have no direct conscious experience of non-commutative geometry however, considering that the unconscious, according to Blanco, uses a combination of symmetric commutative logic and asymmetric non-commutative logic, we should not be surprised if superspace is experienced as part of our deeper unconscious and in dreams. The one according to Blanco, in symmetric logic the part and the whole are interchangeable, classes are dissolved into increasingly larger wholes, until we arrive at indivisible reality. Here the infinity of things is in a mysterious way reduced to one single thing 8 This can be understood when we reflect on a particle and its entangled anti-correlated particle in quantum physics, we know that when the particle is disturbed in a certain way, its anti-correlated particle instantaneously changes in a converse way, even if it was on the other side of the galaxy it is as if the particle and its anti-correlated particle were a single entity even though they may be a galaxy or light years apart this implies that space-time is an illusion there, Mahayanist, Lankavadara Sutra claims that the intuitive mind partakes of the universal mind, which is often described in the sutra as a perfect unity, also implying an absence of space-time 9 neuroscientists, Eugene de Quilly and Andrew Newberg from the University of Pennsylvania, have asserted that there is a final mystical experience common to humanity that they call the experience of absolute unitary being 10. Effect of the discriminating mind on the one dealing argues that because of discrimination, reality is split into opposites. Matt Blanco views the mind as a dynamic discriminator and classifier every second the human mind is classifying things into categories. The ordinary logical thinking activity is constantly dealing with combinations of triads, it recognizes and makes propositions to itself about one thing, another thing, and the relation between those two things. Most of these relations are asymmetrical, for instance, Simon is the father of David, or A is part of B, the converse order of such relations is not identical to it i.e. it is non-commutative apostrophe. 16. This discriminating consciousness is a typical human phenomenon I do not know how and why it came into being, says Deening but I am convinced that it deeply influences our being in the world our discriminating consciousness automatically compels us to discriminate and classify these perceptions friend or foe. This is the question to which our discriminating consciousness unremittingly tries to find an answer whenever we try to listen to a piece of music, to contemplate a landscape or a work of art, some discriminating question pops up and disturbs our general empathy's sign there is a human need to try to retrieve some form of direct contact with indivisible reality beyond the dividing categories of discriminating consciousness apostrophe thus our asymmetric discriminating consciousness divides indivisible reality by its splitting action. Discriminating consciousness fragments reality this crumbling cascades in a never-ending process of symmetry breaking, consequently the subject is left with an ever-growing number of things what was originally one and indivisible falls apart into a plethora of elements that extrapolates infinitely by establishing relations between different elements in our minds, we try to cement the countless cracks in indivisible reality that our discriminating consciousness caused according to Blanco, relations do exist in the indivisible reality, but these relations are different from the asymmetric relations we are familiar with we cannot represent them, in order to do so we would have to asymmetrize them, to make them fit into our well-known discriminating, and reductive, schemes to some extent then, indivisible reality is like a living body, remove a part of it and the part dies.
good and bad Ledoux showed that mammalian brains are arranged so that incoming sanitosauri information collected at the thalamus goes through the lower brain structure in the limbic system, called the amygdala, first before reaching the neocortex, long considered the seat of conscious, cognitive reasoning the amygdala, which is strongly associated with emotion, renders initial good slash bad approach slash avoid responses and triggers an autonomic response when it perceives a threat this initial response, however, can be overridden by the neocortex's cognitive processing 11 Antonio Damasio believes that the human brain seems to have evolved to favor quick, intuitive judgment first, followed only afterwards by slower, cognitive, conscious processing 12 there are, in fact, two amygdala in your brain one inside the left brain and the other inside the right brain each brain hemisphere, therefore, has its own amygdala switch for the adult mind it is generally very difficult to suspend the discreamy. Intuitive versus discriminating, rational, 1001 nd chapter 2. 17. Nating activity of consciousness, and to be just aware, meditation may provide a condition in which this pre-conscious awareness can be recovered. Deening says. Dual process models whether we describe it as right versus left brain, discriminating versus intuitive mind or thinking slash analytical slash rational versus intuitive mind, we are talking about dual process models dual process models of human thinking are becoming more widely accepted in contemporary mainstream psychology here is a summary of differences between intuitive and analytical thinking 13. Unconscious intuitive thinking Conscious analytical thinking Fast and effortless slow and effortful Process is unintentional and is automatically cued this evidence is an absence of personal will apostrophe Process is intentional and is consciously controlled, an exercise of free will apostrophe Process is generally inaccessible, only results show up consciously entire process can be controlled and viewed in consciousness pattern matching Thought is metaphorical, holistic symbol manipulation, thought is truth preserving, analytical comment to all mammals unique to humans over age 2 and perhaps some language trained apes context dependent context independent. Platform dependent, i.e. inclusive to the brain and body that houses it. Platform independent, processes can be transmitted to other rule following organisms or machines in other words. Experiences can be easily communicated to others the information is portable apostrophe. Psychologists say that the intuitive aspect of thinking appears to be evolutionarily older and more established than the analytical aspect many mammals demonstrate experience based emotionally related judgments, but few if any demonstrate analytical reasoning like humans 14 in addition. Human infants clearly develop their ability to make experience-based emotionally related judgments well before they develop analytical abilities 15 in evolutionary terms analytical thinking appears to be still in a realm. 18. Atively embryonic stage of development compared to intuitive thinking intuitive learning, then, may be the default style of human learning 16 while the words used in the dual process models imply that intuitive thinking is unconscious, as compared with the conscious, this may not be completely accurate according to Gaidano, it might be more accurate to refer to intuitive thinking processes as superconscious dot 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 because they govern conscious processes without appearing in them apostrophe 17. 19. C-H-O-P-T-E-3 the intelligent, intuitive unconscious. Ian Wilson says that it is a well-attested fact that a remarkable number of the world's distinguished scientists and mathematicians have made their inventive discoveries or solved some scientific problems in mental states that do not seem to have been normal, verbalizing consciousness, normally associated with the dominant left brain, Dr. Jonas Salk. The virologist who discovered the first vaccine against poliomyelitis says, It is always with excitement that I wake up in the morning wondering what my intuition will toss up to me, like gifts from the sea I work with it and rely on it it's my partner apostrophe in fact, Webster's dictionary defines intuition as quick and ready insight, 
immediate apprehension or cognition or the power or faculty of attaining to direct knowledge or cognition without evident rational thought and inference apostrophe, emphasis added comma. The unconscious problem solver William James asks, why do we spend years straining after a certain scientific or practical problem, but all in vain, thought refusing to evolve the solution we desire? And why, someday, walking in the street with our attention miles away from the quest, does the answer saunter into our minds as carelessly as if it had never been called for, suggested possibly by the flowers on the bonnet of the lady in front of us, or possibly by nothing that we can discover? If reason can give us relief then, why did she not? 20. Do so soon. 1. On repoint care, when talking about the creative process, says, often when one works at a hard question, nothing good is accomplished at the first attack then one takes a long rest and sits down anew to the work during the first half hour, as before, nothing is found and then all of a sudden the decisive idea presents itself to the mind apostrophe this sequence of events is not only evident in scientific quests, similar descriptions are found in religious quests, for example, as described by, Saint, Teresa of Avila or Saint, John of the Cross in religion, it may be described as insight, in scientific circles it may be described as creativity renowned physicist, Helmholtz, admitted that often his ideas are arrived suddenly, without any effort on his part. While taking easy walks over wooded hills in sunny weather physicist Lord Kelvin reported receiving inspiration in similar ways he sometimes had to devise explanations for deductions that came to him in a flash of intuition Ghost described how a solution came to him for an arithmetical theorem that he had spent years trying to prove, like a sudden flash of lightning the riddle happened to be solved on repoint care. The famous mathematician, says that the appearances of sudden illuminations are obvious indications of a long course of previous unconscious work before and after, there had to be controlled conscious work, but in between was some mysterious process in a letter to a French scientific journal in 1886, referring to an arithmetic theorem, the proof of which eluded him for years, Gauss writes, two days ago, I succeeded, not on account of my painful efforts, but by the grace of God like a sudden flash of lightning, the riddle happened to be solved apostrophe too. The unconscious calculator Enid Blyton, the novelist, says that she receives directions from what she terms her undermined that the story must be 40,000 words long and sure enough, the book ends almost to the word the unconscious appears to possess mind-boggling computational power there are many cases in his story to illustrate this as an example. Let's look at Zera Colden. Zera Colden was born in 1804, the son of a farmer of Vermont, USA when only six, not yet able to read or write, the young Zera began giving public demonstrations of his mathematical skills one of the most spectacular feats related to the number 4,294,967,000. Which until shortly before his time was thought to be prime by mathematicians Leonhard Euler, one of the greatest mathematicians in history, laboriously calculated on paper that it was divisible by 641 when Colden, ignorant of all this, was given the same problem he swiftly arrived at 641 by the mere operation of his mind. Apostrophe the really significant feature about Colden is that he was totally the Intelligent Intuitive Unconscious Chapter 3 21. Unable to explain how he had reached his conclusion having never had formal education, he was entirely ignorant of elementary mathematical rules, and could not even perform the simplest multiplication and division sums on paper everything was done in his head, where he literally saw the computation form up clearly and effortlessly before him 3. Brain drain Truman Stafford could calculate in his head in 60 seconds a multiplication sum whose answer consisted of 36 figures, when only 10 years old however, when he went on to a professional career in mathematics, he lost this mental gift similarly, Richard Waitley, a 19th century Archbishop of Dublin, although being a calculating genius in early childhood lost the ability after undertaking formal education why is this so? 
David Kaiser offers a clue. Kaiser noted that novel skills, such as music, which are processed nightly in the right brain, migrate over, after extensive practice, to the left brain. This has been noted in Lesion and Deke studies for over-practicing skills enables an individual to learn how to model exterior rules of the right brain, in the more confidently controlled domain of interior rules, of the left brain, however, when the skills do migrate to the left brain, the creativity and the computational power diminishes. Perhaps because direct access to the universal mind, via the intuitive right brain, diminishes significantly. The unconscious eye degenerator the great Russian composer, Tchaikovsky, says that the germ of a future composition comes to him suddenly and unexpectedly he says, I forget everything and behave like a madman, everything within starts pulsing and quivering, one thought follows another apostrophe he describes this as a magic process which occurs to him when he is in a somnambulistic state apostrophe Brahms told one biographer that when the inspirations for his most famous compositions came to him they are clothed in the right forms, harmonies and orchestration measure by measure the finished product is revealed to him apostrophe Richard Strauss, the composer, also says that when the ideas flowed in him, the entire musical, measure by measure followed it seemed to him that he was dictated to by two wholly different omnipotent entities dot 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 and was conscious of being aided by more than an earthly power apostrophe Puccini described in similar terms he says that the music of the opera, Madame Butterfly was dictated to him by God he says, I was merely instrumental in putting it on paper and communicating it to the public apostrophe this echoes the view that normal people with intact brains have experiences which make them feel as if they had more than one mind or one. 22. Person in their bodies, like split brain patients George Eliot told J. W. Cross that in all of what she considered her best writings, something that was not herself took possession of her, and that she felt her own personal tie to be merely the instrument through which this spirit, as it were, was acting the German poet Goethe reported that he wrote his first novel, Werther, almost unconsciously, like a somnambulist, and was amazed when he realized what he had done in her listening is the term that is often used when the creative ideas output from what seems to be another person in many of the experiences that communication even seems to come in the form of an audible voice the left brain often views the right brain which is delivering the solutions as another mind or person, which is not far from the truth as evidenced in experiences of split brain patients the illusion of a unitary self is caused by the fact that, for most of the day, we normally only hear the vocal left brain talking when the right brain intervenes, using the left brain speech centers, we attribute the messages to another person apostrophe. Dream solutions We know that the right brain takes over when we are in a dream state the ideas generated in dreams can therefore be attributed largely to the right brain Niels Bohr, one of the founding fathers of quantum physics, dreamt of a planetary system as a model for atoms, which led to the Bohr model of atomic structure and a Nobel Prize the laboratory procedure for producing insulin on a mass basis was discovered in a dream by Sir Frederick Banting Otto Liue dreamt the design of an experiment went to the laboratory later and performed the experiment and generated the results of the Lior I of chemical transmission of nervous impulse which won him the 1936 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine the most popular song in history yesterday was received by Beatle Paul McCartney in a dream, chords and melody. Ram Nujan Srinivasa Ram Nujan was born in India, near Madras, in 1887 by the age of 10. It became clear that Ramnu Jan was not like the other children as a child. He had already derived Euler's identity between trigonometric functions and exponentials after receiving little formal education. He worked as a junior clerk in the Port Trust of Madras. He then mailed some of the results to his dreams to three well known mathematicians, hoping for contact with other mathematical minds. One was received by the brilliant Cambridge mathematician. Godfrey Hardy the letter contained 120 theorems totally unknown to Western mathematicians on reading the letter. The Intelligent Intuitive Unconscious Chapter 3. 23. 
Hari was stunned he came to the conclusion that it could only be written by a mathematician of the highest class in terms of mathematical skills, Hardy later rated him New John even higher than David Hilbert, universally recognized as one of the greatest Western mathematician of the 19th century unfortunately. Neither Hardy nor Rum Nujan were interested in the thinking process by which Rum Nujan discovered these incredible theorems, especially when these theorems came pouring out of his dreams with such frequency Hardy noted, it seemed ridiculous to worry him about how he had found this or that known theorem, when he was showing me half a dozen new ones almost every day apostrophe Rum Nujan used to say that the goddess of Namakal inspired him with the formulae in dreams he kept a notepad next to his bed to write down the formulae that he claimed were revealed to him in dreams on the spot. Rim Nujan could recite complex theorems in arithmetic that would require a computer to prove working in total isolation from the main currents of his field, he was able to re-derive 100 years worth of western mathematics on his own Jonathan Bond says. He had such a feel for things that they just flowed out of his brain apostrophe 5 We know that the left brain is active for most of the day and when we go to sleep, activity shifts to the right brain in dreams, right brain activity is evident One interesting aspect of Ram Nujan's powers is that he often took hours or even months to laboriously verify and prove what he often received in an instant, and that sometimes his insight turned out to be wrong. Ideas arrived at by intuition just as ideas derived from deliberate conscious thinking, can contain errors. The method garbage in garbage out the more clearly, completely and intently you formulate a question and direct it to the unconscious, the more quickly and effectively the unconscious can come up with an answer to it a sloppy question would generate a half-baked solution, garbage in garbage out errors in formulating the question or in the information supplied will generate solutions tainted with these errors this gives us an interesting insight into the nature of unconscious processing it works like a quantum supercomputer using a different type of logic it does not in itself have any content but it links up with content even non-local content when required to solve a problem the intuitive mind is frequently associated with a universal mind in metaphysical and religious literature our local, discriminating, mind cannot fathom the processes that go on in the universal mind brain to avoid a 24. Cognitive overload, it treats it as a black box is this unconscious processing going on in the universal mind brain? This question will be explored in a later chapter including to what extent scientists believe that the universe, as a whole, operates as a supercomputer. Intent The strength of our intent affects the priority the intelligent unconscious assigns to a problem the higher the priority the larger the area freed up in the mind to process the question on repoint care, in an essay on mathematical creativity, said that the appearance of sudden illumination was a manifest sign of long, unconscious work apostrophe Strauss says. Dot 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 an ardent desire and fixed purpose combined with intense inner resolve brings results determined concentrated thought is a tremendous force. Hence, a strong intent is important in obtaining a creative solution. Scientific and religious use of unconscious processing This unconscious processing of questions generated by the conscious mind has been applied not only by scientists, musicians and artists but also mystics and highly influential religious figureheads like Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, who had intently searched for the truth for six years, using very well-defined questions as a result of a consciously initiated process. A mysterious process produces the solution to our problem in a flash, from out of literally nowhere. The unconscious is placeless and timeless, in the form of a religious illumination, a literary image. A scientific understanding Elias Howe worked intensely for several years on a scheme to invent a lock stitch sewing machine and eventually succeeded after he had a nightmare which suggested the solution and the modern sewing machine was born Amadeus Mozart wrote that it was on occasions when he was entirely alone and of good cheer that his ideas flowed best and most abundantly whence and how they come, I know not, he says he goes on to write that, dot 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 provided I am not disturbed, my subject enlarges itself, becomes methodized and defined, and the whole, though it be long, stands almost complete and finished in my mind, 
so that I can survey it, like a fine picture or a beautiful statue, at a glance all this inventing, this producing takes place in a pleasing lively dream apostrophe Rudyard Kipling agreed that the key to gaining help from this inner helper was not to think consciously, but to drift in a reverie although trance states are commonly associated with yogis and hypnotists. We all experience trance states every day, the time just before falling asleep and the time just before waking up these are called the hypnagogic and hypnopompic. The Intelligent Intuitive Unconscious Chapter 3 25. States, respectively, by psychologists the philosopher and mathematician, George Spencer Brown, declares that to arrive at the simplest truth, as Newton did, requires years of contemplation not activity, not reasoning, not calculating, not reading, not talking, not making an effort, not thinking, simply bearing in mind what it is that one needs to know apostrophe 6. Reducing errors in the intuitive process intuition must not be confused with sloppy analytical thinking, which may be the result of faulty logic or misperceptions intuition requires data to work with, just as the conscious use of logic requires data collection is vital to the intuitive process but as noted earlier this data must be verified before submitting it to the unconscious intuition is not always correct because the initial data supplied may be inaccurate or incomplete hence. Both input and output must be verified by the conscious, both pre and post processing verification must be undertaken. The ideas that bubble up into consciousness must be examined using direct observation, additional data collection, logic, and testing. Intuitive dominate people often do not test their intuitions, they may operate as though their intuitions are the absolute truth, since intuitions can be wrong because of incorrect or incomplete input. And since these people can feel absolute certainty of their correctness, they open themselves to making mistakes errors will occur in unconscious processing if the process itself is not administered properly according to Shirley D. in Lang and Fox J. It is possible, based on research, to train individuals to improve their intuitive abilities the basic steps, according to them, seem to be quieting, or stilling, the mind, learning to focus attention and adopting a non-judgmental receptive attitude which allows intuitive thoughts to enter consciousness without interference 7 it is obvious that these steps are very similar to that adopted in meditative techniques meditative insight and creative insights in science and the arts basically involve the same processes visual stories intuition often draws on visual and other forms of imagery to communicate its output in the form of stories apostrophe there are many examples already given in this chapter Kekul first discovered that the carbon atoms of the benzene molecule linked up into a ring through watching the flames of fire transform themselves in his mind's eye into snakes that turned round and bit their own tails visual output seems more appropriate to the type of Symmetric, logic the unconscious uses and to convey a large amount of information efficiently to the conscious symbols can communicate. 26. Ideas which may sound hopelessly self-contradictory if verbalized, take the Taoist yin-yang symbol which represents the interdependence of opposites, for example. Role of conscious analytical thinking The growing realization in modern physics that we live in a multidimensional multiverse forces us to a radical revision of the alleged superiority of consciousness, says Def Jaming Benjamin Labet's experiments reveal that all conscious awareness is preceded by unconscious processes we are therefore forced to conclude that unconscious processes initiate our conscious experiences apparently voluntary acts which appear to be initiated by free will consciously, are found to be initiated unconsciously before an awareness of wanting to act nevertheless. We can consciously veto any decision made unconsciously according to Daniel Wenner, since much of what we do seems to surface from unconscious causes, conscious free will may be an illusion. Conscious will Daniel Wenner says that conscious will is an experience not a cause the thoughts that we attach to our actions are not necessarily the true causes of the actions, 
and their causal connections is something we ascribe to them it appears that the experience of will occurs through a system that presents the idea of a voluntary action to consciousness and also produces the action the idea can occur before or after the action when people are forced to act rapidly it usually occurs after it has been found that the experience of will occurs mainly when the idea occurs before the act date. Our sluggish consciousness when actions are forced to be fast, consciousness is perpetually late. The sluggishness of consciousness becomes apparent when people do things fast. It typically takes only 100 milliseconds to react to a stimulus but it may take up to 500 milliseconds to become conscious of having responded. Nine conscious processes are more flexible and strategic but they also take more time this parts to whole analytical approach of analytical consciousness must necessarily circumambulate around the subject the approach is a more laborious process but has the advantage of generating information that can be easily communicated to other persons unlike intuitive judgments which appear to come out from a black box the slowness of consciousness according to Daniel Wenner suggests that much of what we see and do involves the operation of pre-conscious mental processes i.e. we may begin to react to a stimulus even before we are consciously aware of it. 10. The Intelligent Intuitive Unconscious Chapter 3. 27. Consciousness and action seem to play a cat and mouse game over time although we may be conscious of a series of actions before they are performed, it is as though the conscious mind then slips out of touch the time interval before and after the action in Labette's study indicates that consciousness pops in and out of the picture and does not really seem to be doing anything Nisbin Wilson asks, assuming for the moment that unconscious intuitive thinking is indeed our primary system of thinking. What part then does conscious analytical thinking actually play? It may be that the result of a thinking process, not the thinking process itself, is what manifests as a conscious, cognitive thought 11 what appears as cognitive reasoning may be more accurately described as a rationalization after the event 12 for example, participants in a dialogue may each state a position, perhaps that they oppose abortion, and then proceed to explain cognitive arguments like a lawyer, justifying their position but even when a skillful and learned opponent defeats every single one of these arguments, the protagonist may concede defeat, but rarely changes his mind why? It is probably because our position on the issue was not a result of cognitive reasoning in the first place, it was an intuitive judgment what appeared to be an accurate cognitive explanation of the protagonist's reasoning was in fact a justification, after the event of an intuitive judgment, made without knowing exactly how or why 13 Polony says, dot 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 all knowledge is either tacit or rooted in tacit knowledge a wholly explicit knowledge is unthinkable apostrophe 14. Contributions of the right brain to science David Bomb says we must change the orientation of physics he says we must turn physics around. Instead of starting with parts and showing how they work together, we should start with the whole yet it is evident that without intuitive and holistic processing by the right brain, science could not have developed the many examples cited above and elsewhere show that intuition is as important to science as it is to religion. 28. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-4. Complementary Thinking and Feeling. Every major advance in our understanding of the nature of the universe has been preceded by a contradiction. Ron Cowan, quoting Andrew Strominge Harvard University, 2004 1. Throughout the 19th century and the early part of the 20th century physicists were fiercely debating whether light was essentially a particle or a wave-like phenomenon Harman and Ringold noted that. The peculiar thing about this debate was that both sides could produce sound mathematics and experiments that the other side couldn't explain, but neither side was able to disprove the opposing point of view apostrophe to when Niels Bohr introduced the principle of complementarity early in the 20th century, it was one of the early recognitions that reality is too rich to be adequately represented by any one model or paradigm physicist. Edward Witten, notes that history teaches us that reconciling incompatibilities between theories is a good way to make really fundamental progress. Einstein's theory of special relativity came from a wish to reconcile two outstanding theories of the day. 
namely Maxwell's theory of electricity and Newtonian gravity quantum field theory came from an effort to reconcile non-relativistic quantum mechanics with special relativity the most far-reaching advances in the 20th century have come about. Complementary Thinking and Feeling Chapter 4 29 because previous theories weren't compatible with one another the time symmetric theories of both relativity and quantum physics conflict with the time asymmetric theories of chaos and complexity theories in fact, every major part of physics conflicts with the other at a fundamental level the certainty of Einstein's block universe, derived from relativity theory, conflicts with the uncertainty in quantum physics nevertheless, they appear to be complementary theories. On the one hand, Relativity and quantum theory are irreconcilable, yet on the other, they are mutually dependent. David Peet, Physicist 3. Each thesis appears to be destined to meet its contra or antithesis, its mirror image, in time taking a positive approach, we may say that the antithesis is merely a device to enlarge the thesis so that it is able to explain and predict observed events more accurately Einstein extended Newton's theorize, who in turn extended Galileo's and Kepler's theories William Blake states, without contraries, there is no progression apostrophe and so it is that students are taught to criticize for with the contrary view comes progress, a resizing of knowledge taking a negative approach we could be dismayed that there will never be one solution we will never reach the target, only circumambulate around it the Ramayana, a Hindu scripture, says, the world must suffer under the pairs of opposites forever apostrophe. Hegelian cycles, knowledge breeding knowledge. Sure, a house is real, but what does it look like? That depends on whether you view it from the front or the back sure, an electron is real, but is it a wave or a particle? That depends on what sort of experiment you design to detect it sure, your theory of the universe works pretty well but it's not the only theory that works well, and another one, in some cases might work better, even though at other times it works worse the opposite of a great truth is another great truth. Tom Siegfried, Physicist 4 Science appears to be subject to Hegelian cycles apostrophe each Hegelian cycle consists of a propositional state in which a thesis is formed and established, if you remember, the left brain had been described as propositional apostrophe, then sooner or later it is confronted by a complementary antithesis, another. 30. Propositional state which is contrary to the thesis then it moves into an appositional state, a characteristic of right brain processes which collapses into a transthesis, another propositional state, in chronological sequence a transthesis is defined in this book as a thesis which reconciles the thesis with its antithesis but it is not a mere synthesis of the thesis and the antithesis it is a new way of looking at things the thesis and the antithesis then form specific limiting cases of the transthesis in the next generation or Hegelian cycle, the transthesis is identified as the thesis which again bifurcates after a time, into a thesis and its antithesis a review of the history of scientific thought and philosophy will reveal it moving in, what I call, Hegelian cycles a simple example is when photons were thought to be waves, a propositional state, a thesis, and then particles, a propositional state, the antithesis, then the two were considered complementary under Boer's complementarity theory, an appositional state, and subsequently wave equals under de Broglie and David Bohm's theorize, a propositional state, a transthesis. The complementary brain just as in the organization of the physical world with which it interacts, it has been proposed by Stephen Grossberg, from the Department of Cognitive and Neural Systems of Boston University, that the brain is organized to obey principles of complementarity in fact, he says, it can be argued that known complementary properties, in the brain, exist because of the need to process complementary types of information in the environment apostrophe 5. Complementary aspects of the physical world are translated into complementary brain designs for coping with this world. Stephen Grossberg, Neuroscientist 6. Geometry of knowledge let us use a geometric model to understand a Hegelian cycle if a thesis is represented by a single line, 
then its conflicting and complementary antithesis would be another line which is orthogonal, i.e. 90 degrees, to it if the thesis represents the length, then its antithesis represents the breadth, a new spatial dimension if the thesis, length, and its antithesis, breadth, are imagined to form a square, the transthesis i.e. a new thesis which reconciles and at the same time transcends the original thesis and antithesis would then be another line orthogonal to this square, the height the three form a cube a person with 3D awareness would be able to see the cube as a whole a complementary thinking and feeling chapter 4. 31. Person with only 1D or linear awareness would see three separate lines, two conflicting lines and one reconciling line in the past 500 years, science, in a sense had 1D or linear awareness, in other words it could not conceive of more than one theory to explain reality, it insisted on there only being one this could be described as propositional science apostrophe. It's extremely unsatisfying to find two ultimate descriptions of reality when you're looking for just one. Paul Davis, Physicist, 2002 7. Cognitive dissonance arises primarily in the analytical left brain when confronted by two equal and opposite theses this is unpleasant to the left brain, so it tries to resolve it by ignoring one of the theses and rationalizing the choice in this way, it can get on with the plan of action a fork on the road leaves you wondering in which direction to go if you cannot decide you would be at the fork forever. If you do select one, you ignore the other symmetry is broken we go through similar cycles in our daily non-abstract, thought processes in this context, the right brain's spatial intelligence is significant spatial intelligence includes the perception of three spatial dimensions unlike the constricted linear time dimension of the left brain, the cubic space that the right brain perceives shows that the right brain will be able to accommodate at least three diverse theories, without cognitive dissonance, just as it is able to perceive three spatial dimensions orthogonal to each other but right brain science is still in its infancy there are, however, signs to a more right brain appositional science apostrophe conflicting theories which are complementary, which individually explain experimental data successfully, are beginning to be seen in science western, science is relatively young apostrophe with its maturation we will see more and more conflicting but internally self-consistent theories which can explain the same empirical data and predict the same outcomes this will bring science to where philosophy is science will simply become a more rigorous philosophy apostrophe the rigor increases its utility this means that there is no absolute, all-encompassing truth that can be given by a 1D theory multidimensional reality is much bigger than any particular 1D scientific or religious theory however, particular scientific or religious 1D theories do convey relative truths, which are empirically or experientially testable these relative truths have utility, its predictive and explanatory value within the context of a particular universe. Theories are computable within their own dimensions, but non-computable across dimensions when two conflicting theories are reconciled. 32. They collapse into one dimension and become computable within that dimension in this case, there is a state reduction in the knowledge progress, from two dimensions to one dimension logical self-consistency must precede computability the formalism of quantum theory allows infinitely many ways to decompose the quantum state of the universe into a superposition of orthogonal states if we apply this fact to knowledge, it would mean that a multitude of theories would be able to explain the same empirical data in other words, there would not be any privileged scientific viewpoint there could be more than one science which is rigorous enough to explain and predict outcomes in a particular universe just as mathematical systems or any acceptable theory must be logically self-consistent, every parallel universe must be logically self-consistent each parallel universe is orthogonal i.e. 90 degrees, to another, just as each face of a cube is. Just as each conflicting theory is contrafactual attributes of two contradictory lower dimensional universes can be accepted as axiomatic, i.e. as experiential rather than theoretical attributes, in a higher dimensional universe however, they could not be observed at the same time in the lower dimensional universe because of cognitive dissonance, 
generated primarily by the analytical left brain the right brain as we know is appositional. Kantian antinomies and the limitations of a propositional science antinomy, a term used in logic, means a paradox or unresolvable contradiction. Immanuel Kant believed that when the categories of understanding are carried above possible experience, they often fall into various antinomies, or equally rational but contradictory views here, reason cannot play the role of establishing rational truths because it goes beyond possible experiences generated by the dominant left brain. For example, Kant thought that one could reason from the assumption that the world had a beginning in time to the conclusion that it did not, and vice versa this was part of Kant's critical program of determining limits to science and philosophical inquiry in mathematical logic. Antinomies are usually seen as disasters for the formal system in which they arise in the above example. There appears to be something inherently wrong in asking the question does the world have a beginning in time? We are forced to the conclusion that both answers must be true we must, in reality, perceive both answers as correct, and thus have a limit to our knowledge in a sense. This is a limitation in our knowledge of the universe Siddhartha Gautama refused to answer such questions during his discourses because he knew that an ultimate answer would be inherently contradictory even science gives contradictory answers when it reaches. Complementary Thinking and Feeling Chapter 4 33 Its limits for example, we are told that electrons are both particles and waves and so are all quantum objects the interesting thing about these contradictions is that they are complementary and interdependent, just like the yin and yang of Chinese philosophy when traditional scientific and conventional religious theories try to reconcile these contradictions they have the quality of myths. Virtually all myths can be reduced to the same consistent pattern, identify a crucial existential concern, frame it as a pair of incompatible opposites then find the resolution that alleviates anxiety and allows us to live more happily in the world. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D. Aquiliate. Move towards an appositional science The philosophy of science appears to be changing according to Tom Siegfried, the search for an ultimate physical theory will not produce one and only one picture different points of view reveal different pictures Harvard's Kum Runvatha says that the main lesson of recent progress in string dually ties has been the recognition of the existence of different viewpoints on a physical theory all of which are good for answering some question 9 according to Lee Smolin there could be two theories, one where strings are fundamental and field lines are an approximate picture. A second where the reverse is true he says physicists are excited about the possibility that two theories may be just two ways of looking at the same thing physicists call this the hypothesis of duality apostrophe according to him, the hypothesis of duality is the acceptance that there could be two, opposing, ways of describing the same thing ten if that is so. This is evidence that we are moving away from a propositional to an appositional science. At least in modern physics it seems that this move could not have come about if not for the natural ability of the right brain to be in an appositional or superposed state. The different frames of relativity theory are all equally valid for describing nature the frame of reference you use depends on the frame of reference you inhabit in the same way, many different space-time signatures may turn out to be equivalent and we organize physics based on the signature that seems most sensible from our point of view. Tom Siegfried 11 Strange Matters 34. Recently, scientists have found that two very different theories which are constructed using different numbers of space dimensions can be equivalent. One Malderson a first conjectured such a relation 11 in 1997 for a five-dimensional universe it was later confirmed for many other universes with different numbers of dimensions by Edward Witten of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, and Stephen Gubser. Igor Klebanov and Alexander Polyakov of Princeton University examples of this correspondence are now known for universes with a variety of dimensions. 12 physicist Jacob Ekenstein says that creatures living in one of these universes would be incapable of determining if they inhabited a 5D universe described by string theory or a 4D one described by a quantum field theory of point particles apostrophe Bekenstein believes, however. 
that the structures of their brains might give them an overwhelming prejudice in favor of one description or another. In just the way that our brains construct an innate perception that our universe has three spartal dimensions 13 the unified theory of everything that science is seeking would be really a multitude of logically irreconcilable, conflicting, theorize which can only be held together in multidimensional awareness the limitations of knowledge generated through mainly linear analysis rather than direct experience were discussed and noted more than 2000 years ago by Hindus and Buddhists they rejected linear, one solution models and were motivated to seek the truth in more direct ways as Wallace puts it, for generations the notion that scientific theorize represent objective independent physical reality has been seriously challenged by philosophers of science indeed there are few today who adhere to such straightforward, or navi, scientific realism among the many problems with the realist position is the fact that multiple, mutually incompatible theories can often be presented that equally account for the given body of experimental evidence. 14 A philosophically unreflective approach to science gives the impression that objective reality screens out false hypotheses, leading to only one true theory in fact multiple hypotheses are often put forth, and the choice among them is based on human factors apostrophe. The best that science can give us is a metaphorical picture of what's real, and while the picture may make sense, it isn't necessarily true in this case, science is a type of mythology a collection of explanatory stories that resolve the mysteries of existence and help us cope with the challenges of life. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D'Aquili 15. Complementary Thinking and Feeling Chapter 4. 35. So is there objective truth? Heron describes objectivity through the broader web of intersubjectivity. What can be known about the cosmos is that it is always known as a subjectively articulated world, whose objectivity is relative to how it is shaped by the knower but this is not all, its objectivity is also relative to how it is intersubjectively shaped. It presupposes participation, through meeting and dialogue, in a culture of shared art and shared language, including the rules of language, shared values, norms and beliefs. Apostrophe 16. Complementary dualities, fascinating mayor. In the 19th century, and before, the guiding idea was geometry apostrophe in the 20th century, the most fruitful principle was symmetry apostrophe and the idea of the 21st century, I believe, will be duality apostrophe. Tom Siegfried, Physicist 17. The Vedic scriptures declare that the physical world operates under one fundamental law of mayor the principle of relativity and duality God is absolute unity the illusory dualistic veil he wears is mere, emphasis added comma. Paramahansa Yogananda, mystic, 1946 18. According to Yogananda, the entire phenomenal world is under the inexorable sway of polarity, no law of physics, chemistry or any other science is free from inherent opposite or contrasted principles physical science, therefore, cannot formulate laws outside of Maya in her own domain, Maya is eternal and inexhaustible, future scientists can no more than probe one aspect after another of her varied infinitude science, therefore, will remain in a permanent flux, unable to reach finality fit to discover the laws of an already existing and functioning cosmos but powerless to detect what is beyond Yogananda warns, all who cling to the cosmic illusion must accept its essential law of polarity, flow and ebb, rise and fall, day and night, pleasure and pain, good and evil, birth and death this cyclic pattern assumes a certain anguishing monotony after man has gone through a few thousand human births. He begins then to cast a hopeful eye beyond the compulsions of Maya apostrophe 19 through sheer boredom man may seek an escape from the cyclical madness which becomes increasingly meaningless with each incarnation the royal philosopher laments in the Bible. 36. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity what do people gain from all the toil under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes. The sun rises and the sun goes down all things are wearisome. The eye is not satisfied with seeing or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, 
and what has been done is what will be done there is nothing new under the sun. Dot 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 it is an unhappy business that God has given human beings, and physicists, to be busy with all is vanity and a chasing after wind apostrophe. The Bible, Ecclesiastes 20. Thinking and Feeling Versus perception it is interesting that we have no problem holding conflicting ideas in our heads in abstract thinking often we can also have mixed feelings about a person, event or thing in other words, we do not find it difficult to move into an appositional state in abstract thinking or feeling but is this also true for perception and imagination, perceiving through our mind's eye? 37. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-5. Split Reality. The world must suffer under the pairs of opposites forever. Ramayana. Binary splitter in the brain deaf jaining non-discriminating awareness constitutes the ordinary condition of the infant, especially when he is at rest, neither sleeping nor excited. According to deaf jaining, the infant enjoys this non-discriminating awareness because left brain development, which gives rise to discriminating consciousness, lags behind right brain development at this stage as noted earlier discriminating consciousness, as opposed to non-discriminating awareness, appears from the very moment that oppositions arise, splitting probably corresponds to the first conscious activity this splitting, usually considered a defense mechanism, has a structuring effect, says jailing by it human experience becomes split, divided into opposite, but complementary, poles this opposition which is by no means present in the observed thing in itself, is superimposed on it by, discriminating, consciousness. 38. Newberg and D'Aquili. The binary operator, in the brain, does not simply observe and identify opposites, but in a very real sense it creates them. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D'Aquili, Neuroscientists 1. Myths, according to Newberg and D'Aquili present themselves as systems of antinomies, or polar opposites, heaven slash hell, good slash evil, life slash death, because of a basic function of the brain that they call the binary operator apostrophe to the binary operator helps us to perceive, a particular, reality by ordering it into pairs of opposites we need a way to divide space and time into more comprehensible units to orientate ourselves to the outside world also. When we experience something as good or bad, pleasure or pain, right or wrong, this is because our binary operator is helping divide reality into sets of opposites or dyads each opposite in the dyad derives its meaning from its contrast with the other opposite, its mirror image, they do not represent absolute functions the binary operator abstracts qualities of things and arranges them as pairs of opposites, or dyads whose meaning is intimately related to its partner this is identical to the dynamics of yin and yang. Apostrophe described in Chinese philosophy Newberg and de Quilly conjecture that the binary operator is located on the inferior parietal lobule of the dominant side, usually the left brain, and is simply one way that the mind seeks to understand the world no brain lacking some kind of parietal area could think in terms of opposites, they say and the binary operator evolved for a purpose. You have not yet gotten rid of the habit of dividing things that by their nature are indivisible, which had developed in the sense organs since time immemorial, emphasis added comma. Sarangama Sutra 3. The inferior parietal lobule of the left brain not only generates conceptualizations but may be responsible for the human proclivity, which is hardwired in the human brain for abstract antinomous or binary thinking lesions in this area of the brain have been found to prevent patients from being able to name the opposite of any word presented to them there is abundant evidence in science and almost every other aspect of our everyday life that our brains decompose or break down indivisible reality into complementary pairs of opposites but what does it do after this? It integrates some complementary pairs into wholes, while for other Split Reality Chapter 5. 39. Complementary pairs it suppresses one attribute of the pair which it finds logically, dissonant perception is therefore driven and structured by an internal logic peculiar to a brain and its evolutionary history. 
Everett's many minds interpretation many books on quantum mechanics have cited Hugh Everett's theory as Everett's many universes slash worlds theory, suggesting that the universe splits into innumerable parts to accommodate every outcome of the experiment in a measurement process David Baum has argued strongly that this is to wit's interpretation of Everett's theory Everett's theory had a different orientation for according to David Baum, it is not the universe that splits but it is just awareness as a whole that divides into many parts that are not aware of each other we repeat again what Squires has said, it is not a theory of many universes, but a theory of many viewpoints of one universe ever its aim is not mainly to explain the universe but to explain our perceptions of the universe Everett's theory relates the universe to various points of view that are contained within it Everett did not contemplate the splitting of the universe there is no mention of splitting universes in Everett's work indeed Everett's view should not even be called the many worlds interpretation but rather as Albert and Lo Yue have suggested the many minds interpretation apostrophe the many minds interpretation assumes that physical reality corresponds to the total wave function of the universe according to David Baum, implicit in Everett's interpretation is that each person has a total mind that can split into many sub-minds that are not aware of each other each mind can be aware of a particular brain state corresponding to a memory of a particular experimental result that is stable and distinct from other memories is corresponding to different results of the experiment if the mind were in the domain of quantum mechanics. The wave function would be in a linear superposition ever it then assumes a random process in which the original mind splits into two distinct minds each observing a mirror image of the other's experimental result when one mind observes plus one the other mind observes minus one apostrophe the observations are correlated and its sum is zero thus ever it replaces the random collapsing of the wave function by the random partitioning of the total mind five what would happen if a person is able to integrate his many partial minds? Perhaps advanced meditation techniques allow this to happen will his many, partial, anti-correlated, minds cancel out to avoid? We will attempt to answer this question in the next few chapters. 40. Complementary Attributes and Universes and the brain it is a scientific fact that each elementary particle has a complementary opposite, a special partner called its antiparticle that has the same mass but the opposite electric charge according to Richard Feynman, antiparticles can also be considered as particles moving backward in time, in other words, in reversed time apostrophe it has also been found that this universe favors left-handed particles in supersymmetry theories, matter particles fermions are reflected as force particles, bosons, and vice versa objects comprising these reflected particles are invisible to us there is abundant evidence that the multiverse appears to our brains to be composed of a plethora of pairs of particles and universes with complementary attributes contrafactual universes exist and stabilize each other under David Deutsch's many worlds interpretation of quantum physics yet why do we not experience contrafactual universes at the same time? Why do we live in a matter-dominated left-handed classical universe? According to Fred Allen Wolf, it is impossible in any single universe for an object to exhibit two or more contrafactual attributes at the same time a coin showing heads and tails simultaneously would be a coin showing one side up in one universe and the other down in another universe each universe is the confluence of agreements concerning what is logically consistent 6 perhaps our serial mode of perception confines us to a 3D universe which is blocked off from other contrafactual universes nevertheless there are complementary pairs of interlocking attributes that can be processed by our brains as a whole, for example the edge and the surface of an object can be processed in parallel streams and then synthesized to present one object to consciousness, while for other complementary pairs, one attribute is suppressed whether the rejected complementary attribute is immediately conscious, becomes conscious later, hence, generating perceptual cycles or is left in the unconscious. Depends on the degree of dissonance between the attributes in the complementary pair we cannot see matter with reverse parity, 
the so-called mirror matter, we also cannot help to see antimatter objects because they will be mysteriously and conveniently annihilated by matter objects. Our physical brains also cannot see very high energy objects compared to our physical sensory systems. Scientific instruments can go somewhat further in what they can measure and observe but they too have their limitations we see that when an experiment is set up in one way, electrons appear as waves, when the context of the experiment is changed, they appear as particles, much like how our brains operate do you see an old woman or a young lady in this popular illustration? Split Reality Chapter 5 41 Figure 2 old lady or young girl? We see above a famous perceptual illusion in which the brain switches between seeing a young girl and an old woman an anonymous German postcard from 1888 depicted the image in its earliest known form, and a rendition on an advertisement for the Anchor Buggy Company from 1890 provided another early example are you able to see the old woman and the young lady at the same time? Impossible? Try to oscillate between the two for about a minute. While relaxing yourself you will notice that when you are relaxed you can accommodate both images in your conscious perception in fact, the more you relax, the easier it becomes the oscillation is analogous to a background foreground switching activity this is no different from an experimental setup, to make strong measurements, which sees or measures an electron first as a wave, and then as a particle, but not both at the same time this shows that a brain making strong measurements, can only accept a group of attributes when it considers them logically self-consistent it suppresses dissonant attributes however, if it is relaxed and non-critical, making only weak measurements, it tends to accommodate even contradictory attributes classical either or logic is generally associated. 42. With the left brain both and logic, which is also sometimes described as quantum logic, is generally associated with the right brain our everyday perception appears to be largely driven by the either or logic, generally associated with the left brain this underscores the fact that our perceptions are determined by the internal logic that our brains use at any point of time. Generalization yin and yang are symbols of all the fundamental dualities in life in Chinese philosophy they are interdependent, when one increases, the other decreases, in other words. They are complementary opposites why does yin and yang oscillate in our daily life? Bhagwan Sri Rajnish, a modern mystic, tries to explain, the mind is made up of pairs of opposites, so where will the second part go? It will lie under the first waiting for it to exhaust itself the first gets tired, after all how long can this man keep saying God? When he is tired, the second part comes up which prompts him to say, this man is Satan now these are not two things, they are one when we love we hate also he who is our friend is also our enemy deep within apostrophe seven expectations, memories and biases significantly influence perception if a person views an ambiguous figure and is predisposed to see one figure instead of the other, then this predisposition can affect the way he sees the image this influence has been shown to be quite strong for example. In one experiment eight participants were shown a reversible figure briefly, in other words, they knew that the image could be perceived as one figure or the other, and then asked to sketch the figure they perceived all of them could not identify the other figure from their sketch after drawing the image they initially perceived, participants were even told what the other image was, and still could not identify it in their sketch. Even though the drawings were not very dissimilar from the original this gives us an idea of how strong and persistent the influence on visual processing can be it effectively blocks the complementary or contrary view previous learning molds expectations, resulting in selective attention or perception the perception of a particular 3D universe, when according to science we are living in a multidimensional multiverse, is an inherited form of selective perception perhaps. That is why many meditative techniques stress the importance of unlearning and keeping an open mind, so that you see things as they are apostrophe. Split Reality Chapter 5 43 Serial Linear Operation of Conscious Left Brain According to psychologists, we know only a single coherent event in each moment, a visual scene, 
a mental image or a fleeting thought we cannot do two things consciously at the same time, such as carrying on an intense conversation and driving in busy traffic however you can switch attention from one activity to another rapidly, so that it appears that you are conscious of more than one activity when one activity becomes conscious, the other activity recedes to the background and is operated in an unconscious mode, again analogous to foreground background switching with the conscious left brain in the foreground and the unconscious right brain in the background during most of the day however, it is proposed that if subjects in an experiment relaxed their gaze and slash your attention, i.e. when the brain makes only weak measurements of the environment, it may be possible to maintain an awareness of two different images or activities it is only when attention is focused strongly on one activity or part, i.e. when the brain makes strong measurements of the environment that the other activity or part recedes to the background. Oscillations and Suppression of Dissonant Sensations Researchers, Nikos Logothetis and Jeffrey Shawl, used to visual streams, a grating moving upward in front of one eye and downward in front of the other since the two streams appear to be in the same space. They cannot be interpreted as two separate streams it was found in this experiment that one of the two, visual streams, is always suppressed by the brain. It would, therefore, appear to us as if the grating was moving up one moment, and down the next moment, in reality, there were two separate independent visual streams moving in opposite directions. An integrated, binocular, vision breaks down if there are significant differences between the inputs presented to the two eyes to obtain coherence, i.e. to reduce dissonance. Many experiments show that the visual system will suppress one image in favor of another in the same way, dissonant auditory inputs are also suppressed any significant disparity in the inputs to the two eyes or ears causes one of the two flows to be suppressed 9 according to bars, conscious perception is always coherent, even if the nervous system needs to cancel some input in favor of another apostrophe 10 it seems that inputs to the two eyes the two ears or two parts of skin, either compete or cooperate in general, Buzz says. It seems to be impossible for human beings to hold to different interpretations of the same thing in consciousness at the same time in many cases, two representations can be proved to exist fleetingly in the brain, but only one can be conscious at a time we can handle two. 44. Streams of visual or auditory information only when they are mutually? i.e. logically, consistent, says Bars 11 Stephen Grossberg shows that complementary pairs of attributes, for example, the surface and boundary of an object can be processed in parallel streams subconsciously, and then synthesized by the brain as a single object to be viewed by consciousness 12 this is when the inputs cooperate, rather than compete. Cancellation of contrary sensations? Imagine if human beings can train their brains to see, hear or feel, consciously, opposing or competing complementary sensations at the same time, instead of oscillating, what would they perceive? We would expect the oscillations to become more rapid until it became superposed. Then we would expect a cancellation of sensations and a cancellation of consciousness. The latter because without contraries, there is no consciousness, perhaps, that is why the right brain, which is attributed with parallel processing abilities, appeared to be unconscious in early 20th century experiments relating to the brain, although it was processing inputs from the environment and the left brain continuously one device that actually evidences a cancellation of sensations received by the right and left brains is Robert Monroe's hemi-sync device which uses two different signals to the two ears for example. When a subject is required to be put into a theta brain wave state the technique is to send a signal of 400 Hz through one ear and 404 Hz through the other the so-called binaural beat would then cause the whole brain to resonate in the theta frequency of 4 Hz in other words. The 404 Hz cancels out against 400 Hz, leaving 4 Hz 13 if we applied complementary signals, for example the same frequency but phased out, there would be a cancellation or a subtractive combination of complementary sensations furthermore, it has been noticed that when the same input is given to the brain repeatedly, 
the brain simply switches off because of the redundancy in the data apostrophe in both and or symmetric logic used by the right brain. The attribute and contrary attribute are not distinguished. They are treated similarly and equally this is perceived as redundancy in the brain, and the brain possibly switches off, leaving the mind to be catapulted to a higher dimensional perception, by analogy, the trance thesis. Appearances and reality a stick in the water may look broken but we know from scientific analysis that it is not broken and that this illusion is caused by refracting light the appearances of a broken stick but the reality is that it is continuous according to physicist Gary Zukow, our experience tells us that the split reality chapter 5. 45. Physical world is solid, real, and independent of us quantum mechanics says, simply that this is not so, it is a superposition of waves in other words, the world cannot be as it appears what we perceive to be physical reality is actually our cognitive suppression of the symmetric void, i.e. suppressions by the brain of one attribute of a complementary pair of attributes due to cognitive dissonance in the brain symmetry in the void breaks down in a cascade due to this continuous suppression the world that emerges from the cognitive suppression may appear to be substantive but it is not if dissonance reduces, however, for example by adopting a non-critical receptive right brain approach, the suppression eases and symmetry is restored our illusory consciousness of this or that object then vanishes. All knowledge is metaphorical, even our most basic sensory perceptions of the world around us can be thought of as an explanatory story created by the brain. Andrew Newberg and Eugene Diakwili Neuroscientists 14 46. C H A P T E R 6. The brain and mystical experiences. The right brain, as a whole, has been associated with religious experiences more specifically, certain parts of the left and right brains have been associated with mystical experiences these include the temporal lobe and a part of the brain near the core understood to govern both arousal and quiescence the latter is thought to play a role in experiences of active bliss similar to mystical trances and raptures in this state, part of the brain, is believed simultaneously to generate a sense of calmness and alertness contributing to the religious experience of being wholly other apostrophe Nancy Murphy, professor of Christian philosophy at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California thinks that how God acts in the natural world is one of the most pressing theological questions she believes that God's action in human life must be through interactions with the human brain 1. Temporal Lobe Epilepsy Tl. Experiments on monkeys suggest that the temporal lobes mediate various states of consciousness in the experiments, Monkeys were given LSD after having various parts of their brains removed the monkeys continued to trip no matter what parts of the brains were missing until both temporal lobes were removed the conclusion was that the temporal lobes, in addition to all their other functions, including the processing of music, also function to mediate states of consciousness. The Brain and Mystical Experiences Chapter 6. 47. At San Diego's University of California's Center for Brain and Cognition, Vilena Ramakandran studies patients with epilepsy, brain lesions, strokes or head injuries by testing patients who suffer seizures from temporal lobe epilepsy or TIL. His team found intriguing hints of dedicated neural machinery affecting how intensely someone may respond to spiritual or mystical experiences such epileptics display an unusual obsession with religious matters and, during seizures, report overwhelming feelings of union with the universe apostrophe the researchers found these people also have a heightened but completely involuntary neural response to religious language something has happened in their temporal lobes that heighten their response to religious terms and icons, says Ramakandran there may be a selective enhancement of emotions conducive to religious experience apostrophe to temporal lobe epilepsy, Ortl, has been linked to divine encounters. Artistic creation and disturbing visitations from Mother Realms till has also often been linked to a variety of transcendent experiences, ecstatic communion with the divine, epiphanies of artistic creation, fearful encounters with alien beings a woman who was suffering from till testified, 
Whittle, I see things slightly different than before I have visions and images that normal people don't have some of my seizures are like entering another dimension, the closest to religious or spiritual feelings I've ever had epilepsy has given me a rare vision and insight into myself, and sometimes beyond myself, and it has played to my creative side without till, I would not have begun to sculpt apostrophe this condition is caused by unusual electrical activity in the brain's temporal lobes a significant proportion of people with till report that their seizures, i.e. when there is a breakdown in the neural machinery, of ten bring on extraordinary experiences of transcendent wonder, luminous insight, or, at times, harrowing, uncanny fear Michael Passenger a neuroscientist at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, found that people with frequent bursts of electrical activity in their temporal lobes report sensations of flying, floating, or leaving the body, as well as other mystical experiences by applying magnetic fields to the brain, he can also induce odd mental experiences, possibly caused by bursts of neuron firing, similar to epileptic seizures, in the temporal lobes for example, he has made people feel as if two alien hands grabbed their shoulders and distorted their legs when he applied magnetic fields to their brains more recently, several tall nuns have provided further evidence for an epileptic root of many mystical religious experiences for example, one former nun apprehended god until seizures and described the experience, suddenly everything comes together in a moment, everything adds. 48 up, and you're flooded with a sense of joy apostrophe American neurologist Professor Gregory Holmes studied the life of Ellen White, who was the spiritual founder of the Seventh Day Adventist movement during her life, Ellen had hundreds of dramatic religious visions which were critical in the establishment of the church, helping to convince her followers that she was indeed spiritually inspired but Professor Holmes believes there may be another far more prosaic explanation for her visions at the age of nine, Ellen suffered a severe blow to her head as a result, she was semi-conscious for several weeks and so ill she never returned to school following the accident, Ellen's personality changed dramatically and she became highly religious and moralistic and for the first time in her life. She began to have powerful religious visions Professor Holmes is convinced that the blow to Ellen's head caused her to develop temporal lobe epilepsy her whole clinical course to me suggested the high probability that she had temporal lobe epilepsy apostrophe we will never know for sure whether religious figures in the past definitely did have the disorder but scientists now believe the condition provides an insight into revealing how religious experience may impact on the brain they believe what happens inside the minds of temporal lobe epilepsy patients may just be an extreme case of what goes on inside all of our minds for everyone, whether they have the medical condition or not, it now appears that activity in the temporal lobes can be altered to generate certain types of religious and spiritual experiences. Passengers findings, instant tells passenger believes that spiritual experiences come from altered electrical activity in the brain David Baer from Harvard Medical School believes that a temporal lobe focus in superior individuals, like Van Gogh, Dostoevsky, Mohammed, St. Paul and Moses, may spark an extraordinary search for the entity we alternatively call truth or beauty apostrophe religion, then, is sometimes our interpretation of altered activities in the temporal lobes and the limbic region of the brain this is not to demean the mystical experience, because tall personalities have obviously accomplished great things, whose depth and meaning have radiated far beyond the electrical storms in a single brain passenger has conducted experiments with a helmet that pulses bursts of electrical activity to the brain stimulating what he calls a god experience apostrophe the experience of god, he says, is definitely produced in the brain there are certain brain patterns that can be generated experimentally that will generate the sense, presence and the feeling of godlike experiences, says Passenger the patterns we use are complex but they imitate what the the brain and mystical experiences chapter 6. 49 brain does normally apostrophe Passinger originally set out to explore the nature of creativity and sense of self but his research into patterns of brain activity led him to explore the nature of mystical experiences as well to do this Passinger puts his subjects in a quiet room, depriving them of light and sound, 
so that the nerve cells typically involved in seeing and hearing are not stimulated then he applies a magnetic field pattern over the right hemisphere of the brain Passinger claims that most people can experience timelessness and even meet God simply by strapping on his unique helmet this God helmet general Gly creates miniature versions of temporal lobe epileptic seizures by causing short-lived increases in the neuronal firing in the temporal lobes in other words the helmet simulates epileptic seizures but in a safe way patients sit reclined, isolated from sound and with eyes covered the helmet is strapped to their heads and currents shoot from its solenoids into the brain. Generating a low frequency milligorse magnetic field the magnetic field, no stronger than that produced by a computer monitor, rotates anti-clockwise in a pattern around the temporal lobes researchers can cause the helmet's currents to create micro seizures in specific regions when currents are aimed into the limbic regions in the brain, subjects report experiencing extreme emotions, distortions in their body image and sensations of forced motion when the temporal lobes are stimulated, subjects often report specifically religious, dream-like hallucinations and four out of five subjects report sensing a spectral presence in the room with them narcotic drugs and alcohol have often produced similar effects, why would such sensations arise when the limbic and temporal lobe regions are stimulated? Can we make neurological sense of the religious visions and feelings? Inside the temporal lobes is the temporal cortex, the left hemisphere of which passenger suggests is responsible for our sense of self in most people. There is fairly equal neuronal activity in both the right and left temporal cortexes however, when activity gets out of sync say, by strapping on passenger's helmet, passenger argues that the left hemisphere interprets the right hemisphere as a separate sensed presence, or sometimes as God this usually happens in conjunction with extra stimulation in the limbic system, where the hippocampus, associated with equilibrium and memory, and the amygdala, associated with emotion, reside this region also controls certain aspects of movement when this region is stimulated with passenger's helmet, it makes sense that subjects experience strong emotions and sensations of forced movement the limbic system also labels specific events such as the sight of loved ones with significance the limbic system's unusual activity during spiritual experience may. 50 help to associate feelings of deep awe and emotional significance with the experience of a sensed presence, a oneness with the universe, and a sense of infinity miniature temporal lobe seizures occasionally occur in otherwise healthy people without the aid of passenger's helmet passenger tested subjects with tendencies for mystical and spiritual experience, and found that they tended to have subtle hemispheric mismatch all the time even when not suffering a seizure potential triggers for seizures include fatigue, high altitude, low blood sugar, personal crisis, anxiety and other physiological stress as not everyone may have a God experience apostrophe but those who do may have been predisposed for such an encounter by the interhemispheric circuits in their temporal lobes obviously. There is a wide range of spiritual connections that one can experience without passenger's helmet but most spiritual experiences appear to involve more or less dramatically the same parts of the brain some people may be hardwired to have such brain region specific experiences more frequently and to varying degrees of intensity one study suggests that people with mystical experiences are more connected to their subliminal unconscious and are more prone to dissociation this dissociation may correlate with the dissociation between the temporal lobes. The counter argument simulations passenger claims that by putting on his helmet, the brain generates aeronaus experiences, such as feeling the presence of other, invisible, beings however, we cannot conclude from this that all these experiences of invisible beings are totally imagined as pointed out in the metaphysical literature including the authors are invisible bodies, higher energy bodies are electromagnetic in nature although they are difficult for current scientific instruments to detect, due to their very high frequencies, a human being's own higher energy bodies may be able to sense them passenger is simulating presences which the brain, and its higher energy counterparts, has evolved to respond to a good trick sticking show a very good hologram of an orange from a distance many may believe that it is in fact an orange, 
although it is only a representation that doesn't mean that all perceptions of oranges are illusions in other words. Some aspects of Pissinger's experiments are tricking the brain to conclude that it is seeing or sensing something, other aspects actually deactivate parts of the brain, so that the subject is introduced to a new reality. Since perceptions are generated by what the senses tell the brain through a network of nerves, any interception in the network to introduce erroneous data will make the brain come to erroneous conclusions it will. The Brain and Mystical Experiences Chapter 6 51 Not be surprising, if following passenger, scientists are able to induce all the sensations of eating an apple pie in the brain of a person this does not mean that an apple pie was actually eaten neither does it mean that apple pies do not exist just because you can simulate the sensations in the brain. Deactivating the Brain Daniel Wenner, Professor of Psychology at Harvard University says that high levels of magnetic stimulation have been found to influence brain functions very briefly and can have effects somewhat like that of a temporary small brain lesion in the area of the brain that is stimulated 3 if that is so, then it is only when brain processes break down that passengers subjects experience a different reality from this point of view, the specific regions of the brain are not being stimulated but are being deactivated based on the many bodies many universes theory of metaphysics, outlined in the author's book Our Invisible Bodies 4, this simply confirms that when the brain of a lower energy body breaks down, the cognitive system of a higher energy body is activated giving rise to a new reality theologians and scientists caution against any attempt to reduce spirituality and, by extension, religious belief, to chemical reactions in the brain John Hort, a theologian at the Georgetown University Center for the Study of Science and Religion, said the research confirmed that most spiritual experiences are deeply connected to brain processes however, most theologians are able to distinguish between life and mind having a clearly definable chemical basis and the phenomenon of life and mind that most of us don't believe can be reduced to chemistry apostrophe. The activations of other parts of the brain besides the temporal lobe, deactivation of other parts of the brain may also give rise to mystical or spiritual experiences a limbic region, at the core of the brain, stimulated by music, dancing, or the chanting of religious ceremonies can trigger less intense spiritual experiences these activities, though sometimes less dramatically than meditation or seizures can also cause the hippocampus to block neuronal activity to other parts of the brain, tagging them with special significance this evidence is a stimulate cum block sequence this helps explain the transcendent experiences which some Muzi Chans report, or why chanting and ritual is so important to many religious traditions neurosurgeons who stimulate the limbic region during surgery say their patients report having religious experiences this too would have followed the stimulate cum block sequence hence. The stimulation of one part of the brain can lead to the deactivation of other parts of the brain. 52. According to Daniel Wenner, in schizophrenia there may also be experiences of thought insertion having another person's thoughts appear in your own mind, thought echo, experiencing one's thoughts over again, sometimes in another's voice, thought broadcasting, hearing your own thoughts spoken aloud, or alien control, experiencing one's actions as performed by someone else, such experiences are often called Schneiderian symptoms, after the psychiatrist Kurt Schneider these symptoms usually are interpreted as originating outside the self the voices are very close and real the drugs used to treat schizophrenia simply pushes the brain back to normal C5 in other words, it is only when the brain's normal functioning breaks down that such unusual activities occur the brain cannot therefore effectively insulate the consciousness from other realities. 53. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-7. Deactivating the brain. A leading study has been conducted by Dr. Andrew Newberg, with his late colleague Dr. Eugene Dequilly, in the Department of Psychiatry using high-tech imaging techniques to examine the brains of meditating Buddhists and Franciscan nuns at prayer won the scientists, using what is known as single positron emission computed tomography, SPECT 
concluded that intense spiritual contemplation triggers an alteration in brain activity in the experiments Newberg invited Tibetan Buddhists to his laboratory and set them up with their rugs, cushions and prayer wheels before they meditated. An intravenous tube was inserted this allowed a radioactive isotope to be directed when they pulled a string as they reached a peak meditative state the isotope remained in the brain long enough so that once the meditation was over the subjects could be put under the rotating triple head spect camera, similar to that used in hospital scans, and photographed to reveal images of their brain activity since the meditators were focusing intently, the prefrontal cortex, associated with attention lit up but more strikingly, the parietal lobes showed very little activity the parietal lobes are associated with the orientation of the body in space and processing information about time and space more specifically, the left superior parietal lobe creates the perception of the physical body's boundaries the right superior parietal lobe creates the perception of the physical space outside of the body blocked off from neuronal activity, the parietal lobe cannot create a sensation of boundary. 54. Between the physical body and the outside world, which may explain the meditator's sense of oneness with the universe, say Newberg and Diaquili since the parietal lobes were also unable to perform their usual task of creating our linear perception of time, meditators achieved a sensation of infinity and timelessness the study found that different parts of the brain can block input into other parts you can block out the input into the area that is giving you an orientation of space and time. Apostrophe Newberg says it is still trying to give that orientation but it no longer has any input on which to work the theory is that this gives you a sense of no space and no time Apostrophe Newberg says that by blocking the orientation association area the brain would have no choice but to perceive that the self is endless and intimately interwoven with Evian and everything the mind senses and this perception would feel utterly and unquestionably real Apostrophe to the authors also cite studies of seven other to Tibetan Buddhists and several Franciscan nuns the researchers mapped these subjects brains both before and at the peak of their transcendent feelings beforehand, the scans computer portrays the brains activity as a palette of fierce reds and rich yellows during meditation or prayer, however, a marked color change was noted in a small region on the left side of the cerebrum called the posterior superior parietal lobule which is just behind the crown of the skull the flaming reds had turned into a deep azure, signaling a substantial decline in activity 3 the posterior superior parietal lobule is responsible for the orientation of objects in 3D space it is involved in how we locate ourselves in physical space and integrates cues from the environment so that we do not walk into a door or fall down the stairs the authors termed the specific region the orientation association area and they believe that the decrease in its activity during meditation or prayer is highly significant the total differentiation or cutting off, of the posterior superior parietal lobe, especially on the right, results in a sense of pure space the subjective experience is one of spacelessness or of total perfect unity the posterior superior parietal lobule in the left hemisphere is responsible for the self other dichotomy during deep meditation, when the posterior superior parietal lobules on both sides are totally differented. Not only is there a sense of absolute space, but the distinction between self and the other is obliterated, according to Newberg and Dequilly with no sensory stimulus to delineate the borderline between the self and the world, the authors conclude, the brain would have no choice but to perceive that the self is endless and intimately interwoven with everyone and everything the mind senses apostrophe the neuroscientists say, a dulling. Deactivating the brain chapter 7 55. Of spatial perception could well be the key to experiencing a fluid sense of spiritual communion, such as many mystics do, this would also help explain why mystical occurrences, across a wide range of faiths, are often described in metaphorically similar terms apostrophe in neurological parlance, the orientation association area becomes deferented or cut off from inputs from other parts of the brain for in split brain operations. The left brain could also be considered cut off or deferented from the right brain, and vice versa alternatively, there are drugs that can suppress the functions of one of the hemispheres thirdly, 
it has also been found that one hemisphere can be prevented from knowing what is occurring in the opposite hemisphere via the inhibitory actions of the frontal lobes, which houses the attention association area apostrophe the effects of deferentation of the orientation association area include a softening of the boundaries of the self in a sense. This implies that the self arises as a byproduct of spatial and temporal perceptions because this area of the brain generates the space time matrix in which we live more specifically. When inputs to the orientation association area are interrupted, it has to work with whatever inputs it has and its internal logic, thus, experiencing infinite space and time. According to Newberg and De Quilly, the intensity of the experience depends upon the degree of the neural blockage. So there is a spectrum of unitary states that can be experienced. This continuum of experiences links the most profound mystical states to the mundane states in daily life. The total shutdown of neural input would have a dramatic effect on both the left and right brains. The right brain's orientation area, which is responsible for creating the neurological matrix we experience as physical space would lack the information it needs to create the spatial context in which the self can be oriented in this state of deferentation of the orientation area, the mind would perceive a neurological reality consistent with many mystical descriptions of the ultimate spiritual union, there would be no discrete objects or beings, no sense of space or the passage of time, no line between the self and the rest of the universe the mind would exist without, the concept of an ego in a pure state of undifferentiated awareness, avoid consciousness, the ultimate unitary state, according to Newberg and D'Aquili 5. If the doors of perception were cleansed everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. William Blake. 56. Perhaps we should say, if the doors of, sensory, perception were completely shut, i.e. deferented, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite apostrophe. Cognitive operators Newberg and De Quilly say that functions localized to discrete regions in the brain are not complex faculties of the mind, but elementary operations more elaborate faculties are constructed from the serial and parallel interconnections of several brain regions in a way these operations, both elementary and elaborate, are similar to operations performed in basic mathematics as processed information from different areas of the brain are added, subtracted multiplied, and divided with a wide range of other bits of processed information through the associations provided by neural pathways in the brain. The processes of association along with the plasticity of these connections provide the human brain with a multiplicity of possible expressions. Six The neuroscientists have hypothesized seven fundamental cognitive operators in analyzing the operation of the brain as mind, as follows. 1. The holistic operator. 2. The reductionist operator, 3, the causal operator, 4, the abstractive operator, 5, the binary operator, 6, the quantitative operator, and, 7, the emotional value operator. These functions allow the mind to think, feel, experience, order, and interpret the universe. Each cognitive operator carries out a specific function which combines with the function of the other operators to form the overall basis of the functioning of the mind in response to the external world. The holistic operator gives us the ability to perceive reality as a whole, to see the big picture apostrophe regardless of the particular object or group of objects involved. Whenever one considers or perceives the global or unitary perspective of things, one is employing the holistic operator the reductionist operator does just the opposite for us by allowing us to discriminate and break holes down into parts often these two operators combine to help form a more accurate view of our ever-changing reality the causal operator gives us the ability to perceive reality in terms of causal sequences it helps us develop a sense of causality lying behind all that we experience in other words it allows us to string together thoughts and experiences as sequentially related facts that produce a causal effect. The abstractive operator, on the other hand, allows for more creative input in the understanding of reality by forming general concepts based on individual and unconnected thoughts and experience any idea that is based on some factual evidence, but is not proved to be factual itself, is generated by the abstractive operator. 
Deactivating the Brain Chapter 7. 57. The binary operator helps us to perceive reality by ordering it into pairs of opposites when we experience something as good or bad, pleasure or pain, right or wrong, this is because our binary operator is helping divide reality into sets of opposites or dyads it is important to note that each opposite in the dyad derives its meaning from its contrast with the other opposite dot 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 they do not represent an absolute function the quantitative operator permits us to perceive and order reality in a mathematical sense as it gives us the ability to quantify experiences we use this quantitative ability to help us order objects according to some numbering system or else by estimation of mount the emotional value operator places an emotional value upon the information received by the other cognitive operators, and it is from this emotional value that we can use other operators to act on these generated feelings 7. Everything must pass through the brain everything that happens in the brain can, in principle, be imaged with the new technology it is all, in some sense, real because it represents the flux of electrons along neurons and the flow of neurotransmitters at synapses colors would also change on a spect scan during illusions and delusions, making them similarly real apostrophe for example, hallucinogens, like peyote, that were used by some Native American tribes in their religious rites caused profound alterations in the circuits of the brain which mediate sensory perceptions like vision and hearing similarly, dreams are of ten interpreted as messages from a supernatural world and are associated with various changes in cerebral regions, particularly those which mediate visual perceptions from the retina, even though the eyes of the dreamer are closed the words real and illusory become meaningless if one stays strictly within the brain. The suspect, scans taken at the peak of Robert's meditative state, however, show the orientation area to be bathed in dark blotches of ghoul greens and blues, colors that indicate a sharp reduction in activity levels as we pondered the question, a fascinating possibility emerged what if the orientation area was working hard as ever, but the incoming flow of sensory information had somehow been blocked? Andrew Newberg and Eugene de 58. Limitations of the Newberg de Quilly hypothesis The Newberg de Quilly hypothesis raises a number of questions if the orientation association area was working as frantically as Newberg and de Quilly suggest, why does the whole orientation area show a sharp reduction in brain activity? Should we not at least see a spot of red or yellow within it? It appears more likely that the whole orientation association area was disabled it's simply a brain deprived of an orientation association area without this area our brains would not be able to construct our 3D worlds Newberg and Diaquilly say that if deferentation causes the state of no space and no time, it matters little if the deferentation causes the state or allows us to enter this state that already exists out the apostrophe but they offer very little explanation as to how the internal logic generates the unitary state this means that the original hypothesis that the unitary state is generated by the orientation association area working on its internal logic has to be discarded the orientation association area, it seems, is simply disabled or bypassed allowing us to enter a reality unencumbered by the brain's constructions. Alternative hypothesis what exists out there, if we go by the findings of modern physics is a superposed fluid reality, not the concrete reality generated by our biomolecular brain this superposed state can be reached if no, or only weak, measurements are made by our sensory systems this is extremely difficult to achieve in our decoherent biomolecular brain which fixates on this physical universe the sensory system of a body can be compared to a measuring instrument in the laboratory participating in a double slit experiment the moment we observe the world with our biomolecular system the wave function collapses into our familiar universe without an orientation to this 3d physical universe the brain receives information from the next universe via higher energy bodies in a higher energy quantum-like universe. The wave function of the universe, and the individual within it, does not necessarily collapse it continues to exist in a superposed state of void consciousness, or what Newberg and Diaquilly call the absolute unitary state in fact, 
All elementary particles are in this absolute unitary state until observed in a particular context by a measuring instrument the context for the observations made by our sensory systems which constantly measure the environment is provided by the various association areas in the brain in order to be consciously aware of the unitary state and remember what transpired during advanced meditation after the state passes. The conditions are actually a bit more complicated it is only when certain specific. Deactivating the brain chapter 7. 59. Areas and operations of the brain are selectively disabled or switched off, i.e. when they are bypassed, that the state is experienced if the whole brain was disabled we would not be able to assimilate the experience into our everyday consciousness it occurs mainly when the association areas and all the cognitive operators identified by Newberg and Diaquili except the holistic operator, in the brain are disabled the association areas to be disabled include the orientation, verbal conceptual and visual association areas. Neurophysiologically, it seems that the language centers are generally bypassed in the generation of mystical experiences, comma, emphasis added, comma. Andrew Newberg and Eugene de Quilly 9. The cognitive operators that are disabled include the reductive, abstractive and binary operators, the holistic operator need not be disabled the attention area needs to be active to assimilate the experience at the biochemical level, so it is not only the orientation association area which is disabled before the unitary state can be experienced when the relevant areas are disabled, the brain receives information directly from higher energy bodies, without it being filtered through the association areas in the biomolecular brain and with the holistic operator in our biomolecular brain operating on them in the cases where the wave function of the higher energy quantum like universe does not collapse, the holistic operator operates on total reality, or the total wave function, making very weak or no measurements. I think therefore I am. On earth, we disable our thought processes in order to approach unity with the universe, emphasis added karma. Joel Witten and Joe Fisher, Life Between Life 10. According to Witten and Fisher, in the life between life state, we must start thinking to realize our individuality discarnate life proceeds unconsciously, and only the act of thought allows us to see the edges of our separate clouds within the endless cloud of existence apostrophe there is no experience of existence without thought, according to Witten and Fisher 11 in other words. There are no separate objects without thought associations generate thoughts and thoughts generate associations in the brain thinking, or 60. The generation of useful information, collapses the wave function Descartes formula, I think therefore I am describes the situation well. As he remains at the peak of perception, the thought occurs to him, thinking is bad for me not thinking is better for me if I were to think and will this perception of mine would cease, and a grosser perception would appear what if I were neither to think nor to will? So he neither thinks nor wills, and as he is neither thinking nor willing, that perception ceases and another grosser perception does not appear he touches cessation. Saying attributed to Siddhartha Gautama 12. Surviving an interesting aspect of the unitary state is that in the unitary state not only is the 3D physical environment no longer experienced, but our bodies and brains also vanish if we could somehow ask or instruct the person experiencing the unitary state to stand up or sit on a chair, he would experience difficulties because there is no 3D space provided by the OA from the perspective of observers. He would be no different from a person who has a lesion in the oar of his brain if he was living in the wild, he would be easily eaten up by an animal from the perspective of the unitary state, survival in this 3D space is irrelevant however, from the perspective of other observers in this 3D space the person would appear to be hopelessly ill equipped to survive it is not accidental, then, that intuitive insights and spiritual illumination occur when we are extremely relaxed i.e. when there are no perceived threats to our survival. To make biological survival possible, mind at large has to be funneled through the reducing valve of the brain and nervous system what comes out at the other end is a measly trickle of the kind of consciousness which will help us stay alive on the surface of the particular planet. Aldous Huxley 13.
Is it real? Skeptics claim that tracing the experience of God into the brain's hardware ring and especially being able to create similar experiences with passenger's helmet proves that God is a figment of the imagination they argue that no. Deactivating the brain chapter 7. 61. Evidence indicates that a divine power externally imposes ease experience some skeptics believe the temporal lobes may contribute to imagination and creativity, but that spiritual experience is a mental error akin to deja vu David Noel argues, how can you trust such an experience when, through science, we can convincingly mimic the fact of God. Believers counter with the argument that if God exists, he would of course design the brain so that we could have some form of interaction with him others argue that we can never know one way or the other and fault the human brain's limited conceptual abilities the reality is that it is the disabling of specific brain circuits while maintaining other brain operations that allow us to both experience and assimilate the experience of the unitary state and other intermediate states Newberg says that the fact that spiritual experiences can be associated with distinct neural activity does not necessarily mean that such experiences are mere neurological illusions it is no safer to say that spiritual urges and sensations are caused by brain activity than it is to say that the neurological changes through which we experience the pleasure of eating an apple cause the apple to exist the difference lies in the fact that most of us agree on the physical existence of an apple religious visions are more difficult to describe reproduce hold in our hands and take a bite out of if we do trust our perceptions of the physical world, generated by the brain, Newberg says, then we have no rational reason to declare that spiritual experience also generated by the brain, is a fiction that is only in the mind apostrophe 14 neuroscientist Eleanor Roche agrees with Zen practitioners that our everyday perception, even the mostly universal agreement on the existence of apples, may be a useful fiction Roche and research partner Christine Skada point out that the feelings of interconnectedness that people perceive during deep meditation may in fact be just as real as the popular assumption that humans are separate beings our perception of separateness from the outer world may just be a handy ability that enables us to achieve certain sensations the moments of oneness we experience may be the recovery of a larger reality Newberg and de Quilly however warned that too much should not be read into their findings to suggest that the objective experience of God could be reduced to neurochemical flux is nothing more than RV idealism to be consistent we must also make the same claim for the objective reality of the sun, the earth and our own bodies 15 if scientists ran the same tests, they would probably also find that each time you saw your mother-in-law certain parts of your brain would become activated coming to the conclusion that your mother-in-law did not really exist, though comforting, is a dangerous conclusion to come to. Jumping. 62. To such conclusions, might be a serious misinterpretation of the true nature of these mystical experiences all perceptions exist in the mind the earth beneath your feet, the chair you're sitting. The book you hold in your hands may all seem unquestionably solid and real, but they are known to you only as second-hand neurological perceptions, as blips and flashes racing along the neural pathways inside your skull the universe, from the nearest chair or table to the farthest stars and galaxies, is constructed from the information that the brain receives from the senses if you were to dismiss spiritual experience as mere neurological activities. You would also have to distrust all of your own brain's perceptions of the material world, say Newberg and De Quilly. Newberg likes to refer skeptics to the apple pie analogy if you ate a freshly baked, piping hot slice of apple pie and took a spect scan at the moment of your first bite, the parts of your brain that register shape and form, smell, taste, memory, and association would all light up while other areas of the brain not involved in the task would go dark this experience leaves its footprint on the brain in much the same way as does a peak meditative moment but does that mean the apple pie isn't real? Ultimately, there may be one of two conclusions to draw, the brain is set up to generate the concepts of religion, or the brain is set up by God because God wants us to have those experiences Newberg says, 
Neuroscience can't answer that apostrophe the research also implies that some people can be predisposed to religious experience and others are not if we understand how the brain works, we may find reasons why certain people are more prone to religion, says Newberg's sister Ilya Delio, a neuropharmacologist and associate professor of spirituality and ecclesiastical history at Washington Theological Union, believes that because human beings are created by God. They have the means, including the hard wiring of the brain, to know God but she is adamant that a biological basis for the experience of God cannot be equated with God God, she believes, is the ground of all that exists and cannot in any way be equated with material reality. Including the brain after declaring that these experiences are not outside of the range of normal brain function, Newberg concludes that, in other words, mystical experiences biologically, observably, and scientifically real. If we do trust our perceptions of the physical world, we have no rational reason to declare that spiritual experience is a fiction that is only in the mind apostrophe revelation, the scientists suggest, need no longer be relegated to the spiritual realm, the sort of thing available only to a select few in the form of burning bushes or thundering voices in the desert it can be seen as images on a computer screen, in vibrant colors, by all the authors hypothesize that these images of the left posterior superior parietal lobe may provide a deactivating the brain chapter 7. 63. Photograph of God apostrophe indeed, it is through this neural pathway that God gets into your head apostrophe and they come close to asserting that the SPECT scan proves the existence of God, or, in the author's cross-cultural term, absolute unitary being apostrophe those who have experienced advanced states of mystical unity, however, claim that these states do feel like a higher reality they insist that when compared to our baseline sense of reality. Absolute unitary being is more vividly, more convincingly real apostrophe logic suggests that what is less real must be contained by what is more real so, if absolute unitary being truly is more real than subjective or objective reality, more real, that is, than the external world and the subjective awareness of the self, then the self and the world must be contained within, and perhaps created by, the reality of absolute unitary being. Apostrophe say the neuroscientists 16 one fact that clearly should persuade us that what advanced meditators have experienced is real is that the reality they experienced and reported over the centuries correlate with scientific theories generated by cutting edge physics today the findings in physics contradict the everyday notions of the world, its concrete reality and the existence of space, time, mass and solidity in fact. It is more of a hallucination to experience space and time and feel the weight of your body than to experience their absence. 64. CHAPTER 8. Virtual Reality. All elements, including space time, appear to be discrete and bounded by the Planck scale as we get closer to reality's screen, the image becomes pixelated. Each pixel no larger than the Planck scale of 10 to 33 centimeters it's as if reality is being projected from the cosmic LCD projector we see galaxy, stars, planets, plants, animals and ourselves on the universal screen is the Planck scale the resolution of this cosmic projector. Are multiple universes projected on multiple screens in a kind of multi-level simplex to generate the multiverse? To participate in virtual reality movies, one has to don specially made costumes with the relevant sensors and motor response mechanisms attached. Are we wearing a series of suits now? What are normally referred to as higher energy subtle bodies in metaphysical literature, do we return to the void by removing these suits? Relative to the void are not all these universes virtual reality? What is the purpose of these virtual reality movies? for experience, information and entertainment. Who is watching all these movies? Who are you? Surface realities if we imagine a ripple on the surface of a still pond we see a small circular ridge of water surrounded by ever widening ridges until it merges with the surface of the pond from the metaphysical point of view, the smallest circular ridge would describe the area of our 3D physical universe, the second. Virtual Reality Chapter 8 65. 
circular ridge, with lower rand plitude, would describe the larger area of a higher energy universe, and the third ridge, with even lower amplitude, represents an even larger higher energy universe. Both physicists and metaphysicists agree that our universe exists only as a disturbance on the surface of a vast ocean, which appears to us, in its depths, as a void. Casey Cole, a scientist, asks us to imagine our 3D universe as the scum that forms on the surface of a pond apostrophe all the forces that make up our everyday universe, electricity, magnetism, and nuclear force s, would be trapped inside this surface according to string theory, they would be waves vibrating in this surface however, another, deeper diamond cyan would lie beneath the surface, like the water underneath the scum only gravity could make waves in this deeper dimension 1 our universe is stuck at the edge of this deeper dimension according to Reginald Cahill and Christopher Kliner of Flinders University in Adelaide. Space and time and all the objects around us are no more than the froth on a deep sea of randomness it takes only a negligible amount of energy or disturbance to stir the oceanic energetic void to generate universes 2 physicist David Peet says that the universe we live in is a very fine correction he asks us to think of a television set plugged into the wall with several amps of electricity at 110 volts entering the set superimposed on this energy is a virtually negligible energy tiny fluctuations in current which are picked up by the antenna from the broadcast station this negligible energy carries information which shapes the much greater energy generating pictures on the television screen the much greater energy of the television itself which has a simple and symmetrical order is modified by the negligible energy of the signal which has a complicated form or asymmetrical order this observation supports metaphysical concepts of a discriminating mind generating waves and in the process asymmetric universes in the perfectly symmetric void, with a negligible amount of energy this negligible amount of energy in an individual's brain generates pictures on the mental screen unconsciously. Metaphysical literature in 1888 Metaphysicist H. P. Blavatsky said space is the real world in its bottomless depths as on its elusive surface. A surface studded with countless phenomenal universes, systems and mirage-like worlds apostrophe three Paramahansa Yogananda, based on direct perception recalled an experience he had in 1946 he says, The breath and the restless mind, I saw, are like storms that lash the ocean of light into waves of material forms, earth, sky, human beings, animals, birds, trees as often I quieted the breath and the restless. 66. Mind, I beheld the multitudinous waves of creation melt into one loose and see dot 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 for according to the Sarangama Sutra, the disturbing manifestation of an external world arises because of defilements in the mind when they are stilled, there remains only empty space, abiding in perfect unity apostrophe 5 of course, the Bible states be still and know I am God apostrophe 6 the sutra points out, you have abandoned all the great, pure, calm oceans of water, and clung to only one bubble which you regard as the whole body of water in all the hundreds of thousands of seas comma emphasis added comma. Sarangama Sutra 7. The concept that the universe is a single bubble has tremendous implications, there may be many other bubbles out there all of which could be other universes, completely disconnected from ours there may be more universes than we ever contemplated, but we will have no way of reaching them. Nobel laureate physicist Leon Lederman and David Schrammett. Physicist, Tom Siegfried, also echoes the sutra when he says that our universe could turn out to be just a bubble of foam in an endless ocean a tiny island in a vast cosmic sea the true totality of creation would extend beyond human sensation and imagination apostrophe 9. Reality on screens based on the latest theories in modern physics, it appears that the information content in any part of our 3D universe does not depend on its 3D volume but on its 2D area 10 this betrays a characteristic of a hologram for example, a 3D hologram is projected from a small area in your 2D credit card since the 3D hologram is projected from a 2D area, it cannot have more information than what is embedded in the 2D area Gerard T. Hooft says, 
one must conclude that a two-dimensional surface can contain all information concerning an entire three space. In fact, this should hold for any two surface that ranges to infinity. The situation can be compared with a hologram of a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional surface. Apostrophe 11. This leads us to the screen theory in modern physics. The screen theory might describe a screen as something like a quantum computer, with one bit of memory for each pixel each pixel being two Planck lengths on each side. Physicist Lee Smolin says that if we assume that there are no things but only processes, only screens exist. Virtual Reality Chapter 8 67 All that exists in the world are screens, on which the world is represented, emphasis added comma. Lee Smolin, Physicist 12 you're holding a magazine it feels solid, it seems to have some kind of independent existence in space ditto the objects around you perhaps a cup of coffee, a computer they all seem real and out there somewhere but it's all an illusion those supposedly solid objects are mere projections emanating from a shifting kaleidoscopic pattern living on the boundary of our universe. The world is a hologram, emphasis added comma. J. R. Minkle, Science Reporter 2002-13. Metaphysical literature in 1946 Paramahansa Yogananda explained, just as cinematic images appear to be real but are only combinations of light and shade, so is the universal variety of illusion the planets, with their countless forms of life are nothing but figures in a cosmic motion picture this is the cosmic motion picture mechanism, producing the picture of your body your form is nothing but light. The cosmic stem of light, blossoming as my body, seemed a divine reproduction of the light beams that stream out of the projection booth in a cinema to create the pictures on the screen. Apostrophe 14. A cinematic audience may look up and see that all screen images are appearing through the instrumentality of one imageless beam of light. The colorful universal drama is similarly issuing from the single white light of a cosmic source. Paramahansa Yogananda, 1946-15. One question that scientists should ask themselves is how did Yogananda come to this conclusion half a century before science? This experience, like many other experiences of mystics, shows that a human being can experience reality directly and come to truths without the aid of advanced mathematics and scientific instruments the deactivation of certain parts of the brain, whether deliberately through meditation or narcotic drugs, or because of some disease or lesion, may be the trick apostrophe. 68. One's values are profoundly changed when he is finally convinced that creation is only a vast motion picture, and that not in it but beyond it, lies his own reality. Paramahansa Yogananda, 1946-16. Illusion of space-time There is mounting evidence from modern physics that space-time is an illusion in the Allen aspect experiment. It was confirmed that two particles which are entangled affect each other even if they are like years apart. In John Wheeler's experiment it was found that the history of a particle depended on what happened in the present. Einstein remarked in one of his letters that time is an illusion apostrophe space to is an illusion. The term illusion is used here in the sense that space-time is relative to the observer's frame of reference. It is very real to the observer from his local frame of reference but it is not definable globally. Henry Stapp notes that the central mystery of quantum theory is how information gets around so quickly he asks, how does the information about what is happening everywhere else get collected to determine what is likely to happen here? According to physicist Gary Zukow, the philosophical implication of quantum mechanics is that all of the things in our universe, including us, that appear to exist independently are actually parts of one all-encompassing organic pattern, and that no parts of that pattern are ever really separate from it or each other. In other words, none of the observed parts are actually separate in space or time, it is a perfect unity. Eastern mystics and Western poets have been telling us for a long time that whether we speak of something and nothing, yin and the yang, the proton and electron, we are describing two parts of an undivided whole. Stanislav Grof 
According to Lee Smilin physicists now regard time as nothing but a measure of change neither space nor time has any existence outside the system of evolving relationships that comprises the universe 17 former astronaut, Edgar Mitchell, says that we inhabit a quantum world where non-local effects should be expected at all levels of functioning not just as a curious artifact of the subatomic level of reality 18 the Sarangama Sutra emphatically states the perception of the eyes and the objects it sees and space itself, is devoid of location apostrophe 19. Virtual Reality Chapter 8. 69. Dot 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 we conclude that the activity of cells in V5 must indeed depend partly on color input and the activity of cells in V4 partly on motion visual consciousness must then be considered non-local. Andrew Duggins, Gary Trees, Chris Fritt, Neuroscientists, Department of Cognitive Neurology, University College London. Different regions in the brain are responsible for different aspects of visual perception yet consciousness comes up with a single image with all these different aspects coming together how is this possible? This is often referred to as the binding problem in consciousness perhaps the solution is in quantum physics there are well confirmed quantum mechanical effects that have a non-local character, widely separated parts of a quantum system behave as though they are, connected in a mysterious way, as discussed in the Allen aspect experiment, above. These are known as Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, or E. Prefects. Neuroscientist Andrew Duggins has suggested that the binding problem in conscious perception may actually depend on non local E. Prefects. Duggins has tested to see whether there are significant violations of Bell's inequalities, a mathematical procedure to test the hypothesis, in the formation of a mental image indicating the presence of non-local EPRA-type connections that would suggest that large-scale quantum effects are part of conscious perception he concludes from his experiment that visual consciousness must be non-local there is also evidence that indicates that subatomic particles constantly appear to be making decisions. More intriguing, these decisions seem to be based on decisions made elsewhere these particles seem to know instantaneously what decisions are made elsewhere, even if it's in another galaxy. Gary Zukow asks, how can a subatomic particle over here know what decision cyan another particle over there has made at the same time the particle over there makes it? A particle, as classically defined is confined to a region in space it is either here or there, but it cannot be both here and there at the same time for a particle here to know what is going on over there while it is happening, it must be over there but if it is over there, it cannot be here if it is in both places at once, then space time must be an illusion because it does not seem to exist for these particles apostrophe physicist Bernard Disk invites us to ask ourselves how the universe of space and time would appear from the perspective of a beam of light he explains that the laws of relativity are clear on this point if you could ride a beam of light as an observer, all of space would shrink to a point, and all. 70. Of time would collapse to an instant in the reference frame of light. There is no space and time if we look up at the Andromeda galaxy in the night sky, we see light that from our point of view took two million years to traverse that vast distance of space but to a beam of light radiating from some star in the Andromeda galaxy. The transmission from its point of origin to our eye was instantaneous he concludes, there must be a deeper meaning in these physical facts a deeper truth about the simultaneous interconnection of all things apostrophe 20 another source of evidence of the illusion of space-time is the uncertainty principle in quantum physics as we approach an elementary particle to measure its precise momentum. Its location becomes smeared all over space-time the particle does not allow you to pinpoint its precise location its evasiveness betrays the slippery and delusory nature of matter and space physicist David Bomb believes that an electron is an ensemble enfolded throughout the whole of space when an instrument detects the presence of a single electron it is simply because one aspect of the ensemble has unfolded when an electron moves. It is due to a continuous series of such unfoldments and enfoldments, 
In other words it pops in and out of the implicate void when a particle appears to be destroyed it has merely enfolded back into the deeper order from which it sprang the way an observer interacts with the ensemble determines which aspect unfolds and which remains hidden 21 according to the renowned neurosurgeon, Karl Pribram, there is no space and time, no causality, no matter and no mind in the holographic, enfolded order 22 holographic projections renowned physicist, Roger Penrose, notes that science seems to be driven to deduce that if mass energy is to be located at all, it must be in flat empty space, a region completely free of matter or fields of any kind. In these C.U. Rias circumstances, he says, matter is either there or nowhere at all this is a paradox yet, it is a definite implication of what our best theories are telling us about the real material of our world, he says 23 Michael Torbert says that creating the illusion that things are located where they are not is the quintessential feature of a hologram this is because the hologram is a virtual image in a holographic universe, Location is itself an illusion just as an image of an apple has no specific location on a piece of holographic film, in a universe that is organized holographically things and objects have no definite location 24 holographic images are generally rated from the constructive interference of two waves of coherent light all the information about a three-dimensional holographic object is captured in a 2D flat holographic template embedded with the interference pattern the Virtual Reality Chapter 8 71. Image of the object or any semblance of the image cannot be located on the flat holographic template if the flat holographic template is broken into many pieces, each piece will still be able to generate a three-dimensional hologram, although the image would not be as clear as when all the pieces are used this is the hole in the part or whip feature in holography since every piece contains every other piece, since it contains the whole. Every piece is interconnected with every other piece hence, the examination of each piece will reveal the other pieces, ad infinitum each piece is therefore a composite of composites apostrophe John Taylor says if in our search for the ultimate constituents of nature, we always found that they have their own constituents, and they theirs, ad infinitum, then our whole universe could then be considered constructed out of self-creating entities it would then be truly relative, nothing would be fundamental, everything would create and in its turn be created out of everything else 25 some decades ago, physicist Jeffrey Chu provided the bootstrap model of elementary particles, where no particle is considered fundamental apostrophe Henry Stapp wrote for the Atomic Energy Commission comma dot 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 an elementary particle is not an independently existing entity it is, in essence a set of relationships that reach outward to other things apostrophe the isolation that we create is an idealization, and one point of view is that quantum mechanics allows us to idealize a photon from the fundamental unbroken unity so that we can study it in fact, a photon seems to become isolated because we are studying it according to STAP, the physical world, according to quantum physics, is not a structure built out of independently existing entities, but rather a web of relationships between elements whose meanings arise wholly from their relationships to the whole, much like a hologram Niels Bohr says that an independent status, in the ordinary physical sense, can be ascribed neither to the phenomena nor to observers in other words, the world of seemingly independent objects, located within space-time cannot be as it appears what we perceive to be physical reality is actually our cognitive deconstruction or suppression of complementary attributes of the symmetric void interconnectedness and the resulting lack of independence of any part of the whole, since it is always connected to the whole, is an inherent feature of a holographically generated multiverse. Real-time holograms Digital holographic systems can generate holograms based on information fed into a computer, which need not be representations of existing objects but free creations of the mind an analogy would be computer music or art a musician may develop a musical manuscript using his laptop which 72 is then recorded onto a CD, compact disc, the holes in the CD do not at all resemble the music nevertheless, when a laser beam is bounced off these holes and processed, music is heard similarly, when coherent light is bounced off the holographically encoded full void, 
the holographic film of the multiverse, universes appear is it any coincidence that information in the brain itself is now thought to be holographically encoded? Where are we? If space-time is an illusion, then where are we? According to physicists Lederman and Schrum, the universe is not rotating, there is no axis of rotation and the relatively uniform Hubble expansion tells us that the universe has no center, no preferred point all points are equivalent apostrophe 26. God is a circle whose center is everywhere, and circumference nowhere. Empedocles, ancient Greek philosopher, historical. The understanding that all phenomena observed is relative to the frame of reference and that there is no center i.e. no privileged frame of reference, to the universe betrays the fact that the multiverse is embedded or as Bomb would have put it enfolded in an implicate order, in this case the full void or the event horizon of the multiverse. The void the multiverse is often imagined by a discriminating mind as a ball sitting in a black void however, Mellon Thomas Benedict. An near-death experiencer advises, the void is inside and outside everything you, right now even while you live, are always inside and outside the void simultaneously you don't have to go anywhere or die to get to the void is the vacuum or nothingness between all physical manifestations the void itself is devoid of experience it is pre-life before the first vibration apostrophe 27 according to Buddhists 28, the widest ground of experience appears to be a pure immediate presence before it becomes differentiated into any form of subject-object duality split second flashes of this open ground, which Buddhists have also called primordial awareness, original mind, no mind, are happening all the time, although one does not usually notice them Siddhartha Gautama spoke about literally developing awareness in terms of fractions of a second. To awaken people to the fleeting glimpses of an open, Precognitive spaciousness that keeps occurring before things get interpreted in a particular perspective, hence, our perception actually oscillates between the void and the virtual reality. Chapter 8. 73. Manifested universe in split seconds as we deconstruct the void into pairs of opposites, suppress the dissonant attributes, then put it back together again using the brain's holistic operator to present an understandable world to ourselves this deconstruction construction process goes on all the time but is imperceptible to our ordinary consciousness, in other words, we are unconscious of the process, just as you are unconscious of the many complicated biochemical activities that are occurring in your internal organs as you read this book. The everyday universe is therefore literally disappearing and manifesting every split second this process is similar to what happens as you look at an image on your computer screen, which is actually regenerated by the system every split second in computer parlance. The rate of regeneration is called the screen refresh rate apostrophe the refresh rate is important because it directly impacts the viewability of the screen image refresh rates that are to cause annoying flicker that can be distracting to the viewer and can cause fatigue and eye strain the refresh rate necessary to avoid this varies with the individual because it is based on the eye's ability to notice the repainting of the image many times per second while the flicker of the universal screen is imperceptible to most of us. Advanced meditators have alluded to it universes and particles are everywhere and nowhere in the void, just as projected holograms are everywhere and nowhere on a holographic film the full void is holographically encoded, it is analogous to the holographic template or film if the universe is everywhere in the void. It also means that the void can be accessed from any place in the universe if you were deep in the center of the earth it would take a much longer time to access the atmosphere if you were on the crusty surface of the earth, however, you would have immediate access to it but the universe is not this kind of sphere it is a holographic projection emanating from the full void hence, the origins of objects within the multiverse are in fact everywhere in the full void in our universe. Objects appear to be related and can be located in a local space-time grid in a deeper context, however, they are everywhere and nowhere the relationships that we see in our everyday world of objects are only appearances it is an optical illusion this illusion is not only baffling to laymen and scientists but has even baffled mystics and advanced meditators who have confronted it throughout the ages to the extent that some have said that ordinary consciousness generates illusions if we got rid of the lenses. 
apostrophe neurosurgeon Pribram proposes, we'd experience the interference patterns themselves we would be in the pure frequency domain what would that domain look like? Ask the mystics though they have trouble describing it, too, he says apostrophe 29. 74. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-9. Quantum holographic theory of perception. Holographic memory storage in the brain Carl Lashley has pointed out, after conducting numerous experiments on the brains of animals, that neither the learning nor the retention of a habit is localized in any one area of the cortex instead, the degree of retardation in learning or loss of memory following cortical lesions is proportional to the amount, and not the place, of the cortical lesion this fact, which he calls cerebral mass action, has been demonstrated over and over again one, suggesting that memories are stored in the form of holograms or holographic codes according to Pribram. The brain uses holographic-like code to encode incoming sensory information there are no laser beams in the brain the retinal image is mapped onto the brain cortex which breaks down the image into various waveforms using a mathematical technique called Fourier transforms as in holography, the brain does not store a literal reproduction of an object's image but an abstract holographic code of wave phase relationships like the overlapping patterns of light and shade on a holographic plate one in a sense, the brain, according to Pribram, represents the holographic film on which interference patterns are stored a deeper view would be that the holographic encoding occurs in the full void or zero point field but these codes are inherent in the holograms that the full void, Quantum Holographic Theory of Perception Chapter 9 75 Projects, which includes our brains and bodies the universe, our brains and bodies are all holograms emanating from the full void physicist Lee Smolin says that it is not enough to say the world is a hologram, the world must be a network of holograms, each of which contains coded within it information about the relationships between the others to the universe is a hologram that is generated by our active participation in it there is compelling evidence from the double slit and various other experiments that the only time quanta ever manifest as particles are when we are looking at them when an electron isn't being looked at, experimental findings suggest that it is always a wave this suggests that, at the most fundamental level. We are all simply waveforms in an infinite ocean of waves Swinney says that at the most fundamental level our bodies and the objects that we see are interference patterns caused by the interaction of consciousness and wave fronts arising from fields of infinite possibility apostrophe 3 as previously noted, when the Hindu mystic, Yogananda, quieted his breath and his restless mind, probably the discriminating mind associated with the dominant left brain, the multitudinous waves of creation melted into a loose MC4 and the Sarangama Sutra is adamant that the disturbing manifestation of an external world arises because of defilements in the mind these defilements are also referred to as samskaras, when they are stilled, there remains only empty space apostrophe 5 hence, Activity in the brain has an effect on the universe is perceived but how is this orchestrated? Generation of universes by mind self-consistent universes appear as a result of cognitive suppressions by minds making measurements and breaking the symmetry of a perfectly symmetric void it is no wonder then that the universe can be correlated so closely with mathematical models which are also created by our minds Eugene Winner the 1963 Nobel laureate for physics exclaims in disbelief the enormous usefulness of mathematics in the natural sciences is something bordering on the mysterious and there is no rational explanation for it apostrophe when weak measurements are made by our brains, the empty void collapses into an ocean of waves, with a positive and negative crest when strong measurements are made, the waves collapse into complementary pairs of particle and antiparticle if each particle is considered a pixel. We can imagine an infinite perfectly symmetric to D checkerboard screen of complementary pairs of pixels of plus ones and minus ones this checkerboard is nearly perfectly symmetrical and contains complementary attributes, making it a superposed or full void apostrophe through destructive interference, our brains, and its invisible superstructures, then break the perfect symmetry of plus ones and minus ones on this. 76. 
infinite checkerboard by suppressing dissonant attributes in each complementary pair during strong measurements, the dissonance arises relative to the internal logic of each evolved brain, there is a cascade of semi-try breaking through constructive interference, our brains, and its invisible superstructures, present to us are unique, asymmetric, left-handed 3D world constructive interference, which generates patterns in the void is the result of standing waves. Standing waves Standing waves are formed whenever two waves with the same wavelength pass in opposite directions in some medium they arise from the combination of reflection and interference such that the reflected waves interfere constructively with the original waves the waves change phase upon reflection from a fixed end the standing wave is a pattern in the combined waves that may manifest on constructive interference or disappear on destructive interference of the waves since wavelength and frequency are related, standing waves can only exist for a discrete set of frequencies that means that to create the standing wave pattern, some source must dry the waves at one of those frequencies each standing wave pattern has its own natural frequency, and if we drive the waves near that frequency, we will succeed in generating the corresponding standing wave the idea that electrons can only occupy certain discrete energy levels was very perplexing to early investigators and to Neil Spohr himself because the electron was considered to be a particle it would seem that an electron should be able to orbit around the nucleus at any radial distance moving among all orbits would enable electrons to emit all energies of light but this does not happen why the electron occupies only discrete levels is better understood stood by considering the electron to be, not a particle, but a wave using the idea of interference, de Broglie showed that the discrete values of radii of Boa's orbits are a natural consequence of standing electron waves according to Milo Wolf. The particle is a spherical standing wave, a pattern generated by two identical spherical waves traveling radially in opposite directions. 6. Gabriel Afreniri concludes that even magnetic and electric fields may be considered standing waves. 7. The fact that even a single photon or electron shows an interference pattern in a double slit experiment adds to the evidence that a single electron is a wave in order to view the electron as a particle, another wave traveling in the opposite direction, must be generated by a detector that interferes with this wave, to produce a standing wave the SCHR Dinger wave equation is in fact a linear combination of two waves traveling in opposite directions the second wave may actually be the first wave reflected off a detector only the reflected waves from mechanical. Quantum Holographic Theory of Perception Chapter 9 77 Linked to the minds of the experimenters and biological detectors have the special ability to send out waves with the correct phase so that a constructive interference occurs the original wave and the reflected waves from detectors form standing waves these standing waves form constructive interference patterns resulting in holograms of particles which form objects a quantum holographic theory of perception look around you now are the images of what you see inside of your brain or are they outside you, just where they seem to be? I suggest that your mind reaches out beyond your brain and into the world around you vision involves a two-way process, an inward movement of light and an outward projection of images. Rupert Sheldrake 8. Rupert Sheldrake tells us that what you see is an image in your mind which is not inside your brain your brain is inside your cranium your mind is extended in space and stretches out into the world around you it reaches out to touch what you see if you look at a mountain 10 miles away, your mind is stretching out 10 miles if you look at a distant star, your mind is extending over literally astronomical distances 9 how does a human being perceive a universe? We can assume two waves, one emanating from the environment and one reflected off imprints or samskaras, in the full void and represented in our holographic higher energy bodies and brains when the two waves, the incoming and modified reflected wave, interfere, as in a holographic machine, it results in destructive interference, which obscures other universes, and constructive interference patterns, i.e. holograms, in the form of standing waves, which are, in aggregate, perceived as objects and the world by our senses in other words, we, 
who are linked to one point in a complementary pair of points in the full void by a spectrum of energetic bodies, participate with the light waves from the full void in projecting the world we see, into infinity. The universal hologram is, therefore, the result of interactions or interlinking of one point in the full void with another, much like the interlinking of Jebbets and Cahill and Kliner's theory the interlinking of Jebbets is equivalent to the interference of waves in the full void according to physicist Richard Gregory, emeritus professor of neuropsychology at the University of Bristol. Plato was not entirely incorrect when he thought vision as working by light shooting out of the eyes to form optical images, analogous to the reflected modified wave, according to Gregory. 78. Light enters the eyes to form optical images, which are then projected psychologically out into the external world, as hypotheses, generated by the brain of what might be out the ten metaphysicist I.K. Tamney says that an individual's boundless mental space is projected from the center of his consciousness as an infinite sphere of three dimensions 11 Judith Hooper and Dick Drizzy say that even if it is only a metaphor, the hologram is a compelling one for the brain's magic show as it suggests how a finite lump of matter could contain an infinite mindscape 12. Reflected waves of conscious entities according to the proposed quantum holographic theory of perception, when the two waves intersect, standing waves are formed the reflected beam in a standard holographic machine is the wave that bounces off the holographic film in the machine by analogy, the original waves, from the environment, bounce off the holographic memory content of the observer, ultimately embedded in the full void as reflected waves, equal and opposite to the original waves, but modified by the samskaras imprinted in our higher energy bodies the whole universe, including all observers, exists objectively in the multidimensional reality, according to, Hugh, Everett's many minds theory each mind, however, becomes aware of only one facet of this multidimensional reality each point of view establishes a relationship between a state of awareness and the state of some part of the universe containing the observing instrument and the observed object any part of the multidimensional reality generates a perception only in relationship to frames constituted of the memory of the observer ever it assumes that each part of the wave function corresponds to a definite state of awareness of the content of the observer's memory 13. The content of our memories determine the reflected waves The reflected wave is a wave reflected off the holographic film represented in the unconscious of a conscious being, which constitutes the memory of the observer The segment of the wave function that collapses is therefore determined by the content of our memory directly or indirectly through our interactions with an observing system, in our case, our senses after kernel lapse. The lens of the biological eye facilitates the conscious capture of retinal images of these holograms of objects and sends them to the brain for further processing and holographic storage, in the void and as represented in the brain, which in turn determines the nature of the future holograms it perceives hence, there is a cycle of thoughts and perceptions which reinforces a particular reality in the conscious left brain. Quantum Holographic Theory of Perception Chapter 9 79. The role of useful information physicists now believe that it is the generation of useful information by a detector in an experiment which collapses the wave function this was confirmed in an experiment conducted by Anton Zeliner in an experiment done at the University of Rochester it was found that information rather than direct intervention destroys wave-like behavior on the other hand, erasing information about the path of a photon restores wave-like behavior as confirmed in an experiment done at the University of California at Berkeley by Raymond Kiao, suggesting that a collapsed wave function can be restored by raising, historical, information deconceptualization and deconstruction of theoretical constructs which reduces useful information, is an integral part of Zen meditation strategy and in many other meditative techniques found in various religions in the desert religions, i.e. Christianity. Islam and Judaism, 
faith is emphasized in the face of conflicting information which nullifies useful information conceptualizations are generally considered a hindrance in meditation this is explicitly stated in Buddhist and Hindu scriptures and commentaries more than 2000 years old it has already been noted by Newberg and de Guilly that activities in the verbal conceptual association areas of the brain are drastically reduced during advanced meditation 14 white noise is used in modern meditation techniques to scramble and neutralize conceptualizations, using electronics conceptualizations represent useful information which generates quantum decoherence this collapses the wave function trapping the locus of awareness of observers in this or that universe. Left brain, a generator of useful information we know that traditional meditation techniques tend to reduce activities normally associated with the left brain the left brain is a theory maker generating vast amounts of useful information throughout our life Michael Gazaniga reminds us that the interpretive mechanism of the left hemisphere is always hard at work, seeking the meaning of events and churning out conceptual frameworks and ideologies the left hemisphere seeks explanations for why events occur it is constantly looking for order and reason, even when there is none laments Gazaniga 15 but there is an advantage in such a system, by going beyond the simple observation of events and asking why they happened, a brain can cope with these same events better, should they happen again helping the life form to cope in a particular location of a particular universe Elizabeth Phelps of New York University. Janet Metcalf of Columbia University and Margaret Fun of Dartmouth College found that the two brains differ in their ability to process new data when presented with new 80. Information, people usually remember much of what they experience when questioned. They also usually claim to remember things that were not truly part of the experience when split brain patients are given such tests. The left hemisphere generates many false reports but the right brain does not, it provides a much more veridical account, according to Gazaniga. Why the devil won't go away the term veridical is defined in the dictionary as truthful and not illusory apostrophe this appears to echo what genuine mystics have been saying about their experiences and it is also interesting that Jesus, of Nazareth, characterized the devil as a liar apostrophe the left and right brains are, figuratively speaking, the devil and God in us in split the brain patients. The right and left brains operate different personalities and often do battle with each other where the integration of the two hemispheres is weak, due to physical, biochemical or psychological reasons, tussles between the two brains or hemispheres can be expected. A cloud of unknowing Hooper and Strizzi note that it is interesting that the path to God, in mystical traditions, seems to be a negative path. A path of unknowing apostrophe all the methods of tapping into the kingdom of God within the brain involve getting rid of something, to disassociate and disentangle from everyday concepts deconceptualization reduces useful information and enhances quantum coherence, allowing the meditator to be in a superposed state for long periods of time concepts and information, in a sense, freezes or quantizes dynamic reality within a space-time grid dogmatism and doctrines in religion also represent useful information in that they have unique solutions they effectively confine us to particular universes, within the multiverse. Physicists tell us the more useful information a universe contains. The more closed and partitioned off it becomes from other universes the information in a particular universe interacts with elementary particles to correlate it to a particular universe, so that we see and measure standard particles in our universe Fred Allen Wolf argues that according to a new interpretation of quantum physics, observation and awareness have a far greater effect on the physical world than was previously suspected intent, through our powers of observation actually modifies and alters the course of the physical world and causes things to occur that would not normally occur this implies that there is a deep connection between the observer and the observed so deep, in fact, that we cannot really separate them all we can do is alter the way we experience reality this is where intent comes in according to him, intent operates in the physical world by altering the observed state of that world if a quantum Quantum Holographic Theory of Perception Chapter 9 81 System is monitored continuously, we could say vigilantly, 
It will do practically anything this was confirmed in 1989 when physicist Wayne Etano and his Colonel Leagues at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Boulder, Colorado, observed 5,000 beryllium atoms confined in a magnetic field and then exposed to radio waves. Another experiment that confirmed this phenomenon was reported in the popular science magazine Discover Apostrophe 16. Information, the stuff of the universe. A causal bodied being remains in the blissful realm of ideas. Paramahansa Yogananda 17. According to the mystic Paramahansa Yogananda, in order to reach the highest frequency quantum like causal world, we would have to possess such tremendous powers of concentration that, if you closed your eyes and visualized the physical and higher energy universes in all their vastness, you would realize that they exist only as ideas if by this superhuman concentration you succeeded in converting or resolving the physical and higher energy universes with all their complexities into sheer ideas. He would then reach the causal world and stand on the borderline of fusion between mind and matter the one perceives everything as forms of consciousness or information, just as a man can close his eyes and realize that he exists. Even though his body is invisible to his physical eyes and is present only as an idea, or useful information, to him 18 physicist Lee Smolin says that space is nothing but a way of talking about all the different channels of communication that allow information to pass from one observer to another the holographic principle is the ultimate realization of the notion that the world is a network of relationships the relationships revealed by this principle involve nothing but information the history of a universe is nothing but the flow of information 19 Hawking points out rather elusively that it may not be only energy but information, that leaks between, parallel, universes in fact the ground state that Hawking refers to may be something in addition to a state of energy, it may be a ground state of information and order, according to Fred Allen Wolf 20. A final theory must be concerned not with fields, not even with space-time, but rather with information exchange among physical processes if so, information is the stuff the world is made of. Jacob Ekenstein Physicist 21. 82. The Platonic Universe Roger Penrose asks, what right do I have to say that the Platonic, mathematical, world is actually a world that can exist in the same sense in which our world exists? It may well seem that it is a ragbag of abstract concepts that mathematicians have come up with from time to time yet its existence rests on the profound timeless and universal nature of these concepts and on the fact that their laws are independent of those who discover them why, do. Such precise mathematical laws play such an important role in the behavior of the physical world? How it is that perceiving beings can arise from out of the physical world and are able to create mathematical concepts out of some kind of mental model? 22 It is proposed that the observer, with his limited mind, isolates a logically self-consistent asymmetric universe from the superposed symmetric void this solves the mystery of why our universe appears to follow mathematical laws in such a precise way we isolated this self-consistent universe from the superposed void just as other observers have extracted their own self-consistent universe from the superposed void the extractions are based on mathematical laws which are inherent in our minds the participatory universe the most profound lesson of quantum mechanics, Wheeler remarks, is that physical phenomena are somehow defined by the questions we ask of them this is in some sense a participatory universe, he says the basis of real it I may not be the quantum, which despite its elusiveness is still a physical phenomenon, but the bit, i.e. useful information, the answer to a yes or no question which is the fundamental currency of computing and communications Wheeler calls his idea the it from bit apostrophe following Wheeler's lead, various theorists are trying to recast quantum physics in terms of information theory already these investigators have found that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which is abound on information, wave particle duality and non-locality can be formulated more powerfully in the context of information the or I, According to William Woodters of Williams College, a former Wheeler student who is pursuing the 8 from bit concept.
Brains generate realities by generating information the resolving power of the eye is limited and non-uniform there are two retinal images which are distorted, tiny, and upside down 23 outside the high resolution foul region, the retina is nearly color blind and its powers of discrimination are severely limited the eye is in constant motion, sac cadding from point to point in the visual field three or four times a second. Quantum Holographic Theory of Perception Chapter 9 83 As a result, the data made available to the retina takes the form of a success sign of alternating snapshots and grayouts. How, on the basis of this fragmented and discontinuous information, are we able to enjoy the impression of seamless consciousness of an environment that is detailed, continuous, complex and in high resolution? How is it that we come to enjoy such richly detailed snapshot-like visual experiences when our actual direct contact with the world in the form of information on the retina is so limited? This is the problem faced by visual theory mainstream science proposes that the brain integrates the patchy and fragmentary bits of information on the retina available in successive fixations into a stable detailed model or representation but are our biochemical brains able to do this on its own? The brain is able to do this only because it has access to the holographic template that generated the world unconsciously in the first place and now allows it to reconstruct the world that is presented to consciousness we need our biological eyes primarily to direct our conscious attention to different areas of the unconsciously projected world in other words it merely mediates our contact with this projected world it allows us to move our holographic body within the hologram of the world which inadvertently develops a sense of self separate from the world because of this this project itself is an integral part of the projected world and cannot be separated from it theoretically, electromagnetic waves can propagate to infinite distant guess hence, the reflected waves from the content of our memories, represented in our bodies, participate with the original waves emanating from the environment to create an infinite mindscape of standing waves which form constructive interference patterns the content of the memory represented in each body, and embedded in the full void, determines the types of universes experienced or perceived. 84. CHAPTER 10. The Insubstantial Universe. The truth is not easy to see for one who sees there is nothing. Saying attributed to Siddhartha Gautama, Nirvana Sutra 1. Lead Peter and Besant, two leading metaphysicists of the 20th century, explained in 1919 that, based on metaphysical evidence, instead of thinking of the ultimate constituents of matter as solid specks floating in a vacuum, we realize that it is the apparent void which is solid and that the specks are but bubbles, of nothing, in it to in other words. Empty space is full and the material universe is literally nothing before you dismiss this as gobbledygook, consider the following if you took an inventory of particles making up the universe, massless photons and neutrinos would dominate if you were to examine where your body's mass came from, you would have two way each atom of your body atoms are, however, 99% nothing if an atom were the size of a huge cathedral then the electrons would be dust particles floating around at all distances inside the building, while the nucleus, or center of the atom, would be smaller than a sugar cube most of the mass of the atom is in this tiny nucleus, which is composed of neutrons and protons, which in turn are composed of quarks however, the three quarks that make up the proton contribute only 3% of the mass of the proton the rest is in the form of tension energy. The Insubstantial Universe Chapter 10. 85. Among the quarks so even the nucleus of the atom is close to nothing. That means you are basically nothing according to physicist John Hitchcock, all existent stuff in the universe pays for itself by being in gravitational relationship to the rest of the universe the cosmos, he says, adds up to nothing, the observed negative forms of energy, gravity, and positive forms of energy mass and radiation. Balanced to nearly zero in our entire observable cosmos 3 David Bohm echoes what Lead Beter and Besant said in 1919 by giving an example he says, according to quantum theory, a crystal at absolute zero allows electrons to pass through it without scattering, they go through as if the space was empty if the temperature is raised, 
However, inhomogeneities appear, and these scatter electrons if one were to use such electrons to observe the crystal, only the inhomogeneities would be visible it would then appear that the inhomogeneities exist independently and that the main body of the crystal was sheer nothingness bomb explains. What we perceive with the senses as empty space is actually a plenum, the ground for existence of everything, including ourselves things that appear to our senses are generated and sustained by the plenum, into which they must ultimately vanish space, which has so much energy is for rather than empty apostrophe for. Mass is a deficiency in an otherwise full space. What we think of as empty space is actually full dot 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 matter, mass, gravity and other forces, essentially all of the features of the universe we know, are deficiencies in a full space, not additions to an empty space the world we know is not more than nothing, it is less than everything. Jevin Jorbran, Physicist while Bohm arrived at his conclusions based on scientific experiments and mathematical arguments, Leadbeater arrived at it by direct perception these two approaches, one theoretic and the other experiential has been used by scientists and mystics, respectively how is it that the scientist and mystic, using different techniques, have arrived at similar conclusions? There are numerous correlations in their independent findings especially in relation to fundamental issues i.e. not whether Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system or whether the Earth is flat or spherical, but whether there is a fundamental constituent in the universe, whether space is empty, whether space and time are illusions many of the mundane questions that scientists ask may be irrelevant to metaphysicists this is because many metaphysicists were and are con. 86. Vinced that the universe is in the final analysis, a mind created in substantial universe furthermore, the mind breeds knowledge, churning out this or that concept or theory which in itself has no end in these conditions, it would be futile to hold on to theories the way, current, scientists, do and to be fixated on material objects as if they existed independently of the mind scientific experiments are confirming that photons, neutrons and even whole atoms act sometimes like waves, sometimes like particles, but they actually have no definite form until they are measured. The shock of matter being largely empty space may have been extreme enough but with quantum physics, even this tenuous result would be superseded by the atom itself not really being anything that exists until it is measured. John Horgan. Quantum Philosophy. The Illusion of Mass. Matter resists acceleration not because it possesses some innate thing called mass, but because the zero point field exerts a force whenever acceleration takes place mass is, in effect, an illusion there exists a background sea of quantum light filling the universe which generates a force that opposes acceleration when you push on any material object that is why matter seems to be the solid, stable stuff that we and our world are made of. Bernhard Sk, Physicist 2001-5. According to Bernard Sk, Alfonso Ruda and De Chi Pathoff, in their paper, Beyond D equals MC2, physical theory need no longer suppose that there is something called mass having an innate property, inertia, that resists acceleration. What is really happening, instead, is that an electromagnetic force acts on the charge inside matter to create the effect of inertia the presence of charge and its interaction with the zero point field creates the forces we all experience and attribute to the existence of matter the interpretation would apply even to an electrically neutral particle such as the neutron, because the neutron, at the most fundamental level, is thought to be made up of smaller particles called quarks, which do carry electric charge casks. Is matter an illusion? Is the universe floating on a? Uh, the Insubstantial Universe Chapter 10 87. Vast sea of light, whose invisible power provides the resistance that gives to matter its feeling of solidity. The mystics seem to have already known the answer. Long concentration on the liberating spiritual eye has enabled the yogi to destroy all illusions concerning matter and its gravitational weight. He sees the universe as essentially an undifferentiated mass of light. Paramahansa Yogananda, Mystic, 1946-6. Light play. The solid, 
stable world of matter appears to be sustained at every instant by an underlying sea of quantum light. Bernhardsk, Physicist, 2001-7. It is the underlying realm of light that is the fundamental reality propping up our physical universe, says Skiogananda already came to this conclusion more than 50 years ago, through direct perception. My physical body lost its grossness, I felt a floating sensation, the weightless body shifted slightly to the left and right I looked around the room, the furniture and walls were as usual, but the little mass of light had so multiplied that the ceiling was invisible this is the cosmic motion picture mechanism, a voice spoke, your form is nothing but light. I gazed at my arms and moved them back and forth, yet could not feel their weight the cosmic stem of light blossoming as my body, seemed a divine reproduction of the light beams that stream out of the projection within a cinema house as the illusion of a solid body was completely dissipated, my realization deepened that the essence of all objects is light. Paramahansa Yogananda, 1946-8. The illusion of things elementary particles are processes carrying little bits of information between events at which they interact giving rise to new processes although. 88. There appears to be static objects around us. The chair, the table and a computer, in reality they are processes since they are composed of elementary particles, like a candle flame in a windless room which appears to us like an independent object until we realize that it is actually changing every second or the static image of an object on your computer screen which is actually being regenerated at minute discrete intervals of time by the UN Erlang system. Quantum foam in 1919, years before quantum mechanics was developed by S. C. H. R. Dinger and Heisenberg, Leadbeater and Besant explained that bubbles exist at the most fundamental level of space-time 9 they said that the ultimate physical atom is nothing but the manifestation of a force which brings together 14,000 million bubbles, of nothing, in a particular form if this force is withdrawn even for a single instant, the bubbles will fall apart again and the whole physical realm would simply cease to exist they speculate that there may be a progressive diminution in the size of the bubbles in successive universes when symmetry is restored, the bubbles, and therefore matter, disappear they say that though the bubbles are the basis of all matter, they are not themselves matter, just as bubbles in water are not water but are places in which water is absent the interiors of these bubbles are void, of water. The substance of the material universe is, therefore, basically nothing a scientist confirms what Leadbeater and Besant observed in 1919, what we now call the quantum foam apostrophe Dan Azoha says, at the smallest level of space-time matter, space-time is continually fluctuating, creating momentary bubbles of matter which just as quickly vanish into nothingness again such bubbles do not appear only at one place, they bubble everywhere as a kind of frothy quantum foam apostrophe 10. Origins and future of our universe, the big ripple currently, astronomers have calculated that the age of our universe is 13.7 billion years, that the first stars lit up just 200 million years after the cosmos was born, and that it will expand forever at an accelerated pace thinning and cooling off until it eventually disappears into nothingness this is not much different from what the Hindus noted almost two thousand years ago, at dawn all things manifest springing forth from the unmanifest and then at nightfall they dissolve again into the unmanifest. The Insubstantial Universe Chapter 10 89 Yes. This whole host of beings comes ever anew to be, at nightfall it dissolves away, all helpless. At dawn of day it rises up again. The Bhagavad Gita 11. In the big ripple the universes, the physical and higher energy universes, will dissolve one by one, in their order of subtlety into the void, just as chemicals disappear into the implicate order in the BZ, Belazov Zhabotinsky, experiment. BZ experiment in the BZ experiment an acid was mixed with bromine producing fascinating geometric patterns such as concentric circles and Archimedean spirals that propagated across the medium the reaction results, first, in the formation of colored spots, 
which then grow into a series of expanding concentric rings or spirals the colors disappear if the dishes are shaken, and then reappear the waves continue until the reagents are consumed this experiment provided scientists undeniable evidence that chemical reactions could oscillate and are not halted by equilibrium thermodynamic behavior similarly, the manifestation of universes oscillates within the void. Dissolution of the manifest multiverse into the void interestingly enough, as the dark expanse in our classical universe expands as scientists now predict, it would also mean that higher energy universes which are dark or invisible from our perspective, currently, are also expanding just as each lower energy body comes to the end of its life and dissipates, so does each lower energy universe before the complete dissolution of our current universe, however, Intelligent beings from our current universe would have already abandoned their bodies corresponding to the current universe and would now operate in their new bodies in a higher energy universe this sequence will be repeated over and over again until the local multiverse finally dissolves into the implicate order of the unmanifest, perfectly symmetric, void state according to metaphysicist Lead Beta. Lower energy particles in our universe are secondary manifestations of higher energy particles 12 The reverse sequence, back to the void, is therefore a gradual withdrawal from lower energy universes which transform into higher energy universes, as a result of the transformation of lower energy particles to higher energy particles from the perspective of an inhabitant in the lower energy universe, the lower energy universe would appear to be disappearing into nothingness. 90. Because the higher energy particles would be invisible, or dark, to the inhabitant according to Advaita Vedanta religious philosophy, the sequence of dissolution is the reverse of creation this reverse process as gradual gross matter becomes subtler and subtler finally, the whole universe is absorbed and stays in dormancy in unmanifest condition in this condition, all the three fundamental constituents of Hindu metaphysics, i.e. Satavas, Rajas and Dharmas, are equiposed, restoring symmetry. This condition continues until the equilibrium of the three constituents is disturbed, i.e. when there is a break in symmetry, and creation starts again creation is the manifestation of the previously unmanifest, dissolution is the reverse process space is a positive entity it is converted into particles and particles are reconverted into it, says NC Panda 13 in other words according to Advaita Vedanta. Universes manifest when there is a break in the symmetry of the full void, moving away from equilibrium, allowing phenomenal life and complexity to manifest this is consistent with 20th century's chaos theory apostrophe after an unimaginably long period of time, the sequence reverses and everything returns to equilibrium astronomers Ten Odenwald points out, although, the equilibrium state appears to be dormant, Strictly speaking, neither the terms dormant nor active can be applied to it it is an ineffable state, which is neither static nor dynamic, the attribute and its contrary attribute are equiposed Odenwald warns us that in the end, it will be the void that survives through the eternities to come, as all the rest of the material world flashes out of existence 14. The whole universe might have a huge number of vacuum states and it might be possible to jump suddenly from one to the other the recent discovery that the universe started expanding and is heading to a local valley means that one day the universe will dissolve. John Barrow, Physicist 15. 91. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-11. The really astonishing hypothesis. Are these, mystical? Unitary experience is merely the result of neurological function or are they genuine experiences which the brain is able to perceive? Could it be that the brain has evolved the ability to transcend material existence and experience a higher plane of being that actually exists? Our research has left us no choice but to conclude that the mystics may be on to something that the mind's machinery of transcendence may in fact be a window through which we can glimpse the ultimate fullness of something that is truly divine. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D'Aquili, Neuroscientists 1. Newberg and D'Aquili hypothesize that the brain possesses a neurological mechanism for self-transcendence when taken to the extreme, this mechanism, they believe, 
would erase the mind's sense of self and undo any conscious awareness of an external world they describe the ultimate transcendent state an absolute unitary state, a state of pure awareness, a clear and vivid consciousness of everything as an undifferentiated whole this awareness would be neurobiologically incapable of differentiating between subject and object, between the limited personal self and the 92. External, material world it would perceive and interpret reality as a formless unified whole, with no limits, no substance, no beginning and no end. Strazi and Hooper ask, if our brains were a different size and shape, what would our religions be like? If we had three brain hemispheres instead of two, would our philosophies, our geometries, our mythologies, our notions of causality, space, time, and number be radically different? Two it has already been discussed in the author's book Our Invisible Bodies that different bodies, which are ensembles of sensory systems, allow the observer to experience different universes generated by the different brains just as the physical brain facilitates the generation of a 3D space. These higher energy body brains facilitate the generation of space-time with a higher number of dimensions. Def Janning says that our consciousness is, at its best, strictly three-dimensional in its spatial constructions. And its temporal organization is linear. Almost everything we win from the void and formless infinite is caught in this reductive structure. We are so immersed in the three dimensional makeup of our perceptions that we naively believe that reality itself is three dimensional. Jailing believes that the fact that cutting edge physics is telling us that reality is infinite and multi dimensional forces us to a radical revision of the alleged superiority of left brain consciousness, according to David Kaiser. Reducing input from the environment to components and sequences as a result of the left side's form of organization Rodney Bomford says that the movement from eternity to temporality is a movement out of the symmetric, unconscious towards asymmetric, consciousness and logic, i.e. either or rather than both and logic, three according to Gary Zukow. Since the wave function is thought to be a complete description of physical reality and since what the wave function describes is both idea-like and matter-like, then physical reality must also be both idea-like and matter-like so why do we not see it as idea-like? He asks perhaps it's because we have entrenched ourselves in a left brain reality. Evolution of the divided brain by Anki, who conducted experiments with rats, concluded that in rats the parallel and spatial processes of information is localized in the right brain, and the sequential and temporal processes in the left one for Ornstein says that the existence of such different ways to account for the world even when the rat evolved makes it clear that the division in the human brain into different modes of processing is not just a matter of upbringing nor is it a division related largely to language versus no language these rat studies and the really astonishing hypothesis chapter 11. 93. Other studies like them, he concludes, makes it clear that there is a fundamental division in an animal's contact with the world the division is based on a way of approaching the outside world that evolution worked out long before it thought of us, our divided cortex appeared with the first mammals according to him, each of these ways of organizing reality must have had immediate, evolutionary, Advantages Recent research has demonstrated that the two cerebral hemispheres are laterally specialized in species as diverse as birds, rodents, and monkeys. 5 The presence of hemispheric specialization in groups with such varied evolutionary histories may be explained by parallel evolution from common selective pressures according to David Kaiser. Lateral differentiation in neural organization and function may occur in the earliest brain structures including the lower brainstem and the thalamus. Different brains, different realities. It would appear that brief encounters with the right cognitive style shows that another reality can exist in which an entirely different type of thinking dominates, emphasis added karma. James Iaxino 6. After many years of fascinating research on the split brain, it appears that the inventive and interpreting left hemisphere has a conscious experience very different from that of the truthful, literal right brain, emphasis added comma. Michael Gazaniga 8. Both hemispheres of the brain are capable of some kind of awareness, but their methods of experiencing and expressing it are very different, 
Emphasis added comma. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D. Aquili 7. Our left and right brains allow us to view reality in two different modes, the left brain presenting it as this or that universe, subject to cycles and dualities, and the, advanced and isolated, right brain presenting it to us as an attributeless void dream researchers regard the altered state of consciousness during dreams as very mysterious, according to Iaxino, mainly because a different cognitive style using images associated with the right brain, is being employed upon awakening, the subject's left analytic mode usually has difficulty or cannot express in words what the right holistic mode experienced during the dreams a kind of amnesia sets in. 94. Advanced development of the right brain or the holistic operator Iaxino says that one characteristic not present in right holistic processing is the temporal ordering of elements rather, a present centeredness or timeless experience has been associated with this cognitive mode in which all events are perceived to occur immediately and simultaneously apostrophe he goes on to say that this type of thinking is reflected across many eastern cultures where no distinction is made between past and present and time is considered an ontological absurdity apostrophe he observes that the right brain's non-linear mode is cultivated deliberately in eastern mystical traditions for the purpose of arriving at a more accurate picture of reality not based on time, linear consciousness, or the physical changes of the illusory world apostrophe 9 if your right brain is in an advanced stage of development, and your left brain activity is largely suppressed, what do you think you will perceive? Would you see or experience anything? The fact that mystics and serious metaphysicists describe reality in remarkably similar ways as physicists today, from the holographic principle to screens, from impermanence to insubstantiality of the universe, from super universes to an attributeless void, the list of correlations is growing. It throws up an interesting question, does the advanced development of the right brain with its parallel processing of attributes allow you to perceive reality directly? The slower and more arduous process through the scientific method, supervised by the left brain, is only now throwing up models of reality described in mystical and metaphysical literature centuries and even millenniums ago were the Buddhists, Hindus and Taoists right in rejecting the slower left, tortoise brain method to embark on developing the right, hair, brain to perceive reality directly and in a shorter time? The Sarangama Sutra states all phenomena and their developments are simply manifestations generated by the mind all causes and effects. From great universes to fine dust come into apparent existence only by means of a discriminating mind 10, are we talking about the development of the left brain consciousness, here? If indeed our view of the empty multiverse is a cognitive construction, as pointed out by Gary Zuka and Siddhartha Gautama, then the left brain must be primarily implicated for this construction if the development of the appositional, top-down processing skills of the right brain, and its invisible superstructure in higher energy bodies, is taken to the extreme. It logically follows that every universe and its anti-universe would simply present a void to the right brain's processing style a binary splitter, identified by Newberg and de Quilly, would be rendered ineffective merely suppressing left brain activities will not lead to enlightenment as it is known in eastern religions, the holistic and parallel process. The really astonishing hypothesis chapter 11. 95. Inabilities of the right brain and its invisible superstructure in higher energy bodies, have to be highly developed over time before the experience of wholeness and emptiness is experienced. The left brain has to keep up with the development of the right brain in order to integrate the wisdom generated by the right brain into its own framework. A person who has developed both brains to very high levels leads a twofold existence, functioning rationally in an asymmetric universe while abiding in a symmetric void but are mystics who talk of a spaceless and timeless void hallucinating? Harman and Ringold argue that since science tells us that the universe, of which we are a part, is unitary in nature, we should not be forced to resort to theories involving hallucinations to account for the numerous records of individuals perceiving it accurately however, many will still find it difficult to believe that man, with his limited senses, 
could somehow come to perceive that unity directly and unaided 11 in fact, scientists believe that our senses can bring us just such a perception of unbroken wholeness of reality it is believed that our mind brain tunes into selected vibratory nodes i.e. frequencies, to present a picture of reality simplified enough for us to understand we learn to fit ourselves into the world by learning to perceive or not perceive whatever the adults around us perceive Alan Watts points out that there is a tendency to impose too quickly the conventional structures like space time and the subject-object dichotomy Harmon and Ringold say it is these left-brain tendencies which come between us and any direct perception of the fundamental unity apostrophe 12 they say our normal mental conditioning, however, is certainly not an insurmountable barrier to the direct perception of reality, as yogis, mystics and shamans have shown us Dr. Robert Benson observed that. Dot 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 this ecstasy could be induced in the ordinary man in a relatively short time by rhythmic exercises, involving posture, control of breath, coordinated movements, and oral repetitions apostrophe in fact, this barrier is so easy to overcome, say Harmon and Ringold, that according to Abraham Maslow most people report having had a profound sense of what has been called unitive consciousness at some time in their lives the major precondition, according to one group of Harvard researchers, is a nervous system devoid of mental conceptual activity dot 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 in a state of quiescence, alert, awake. But not active apostrophe meditation methods generally discourage both mental verbalizations and conceptualizations these functions are found in the verbal conceptual association area, of CA, which sits at the junction of the parietal occipital and temporal lobes of CA, according to Newberg and Diaquili, is 96. Responsible for the generation of abstract concepts and relating them to words it is also involved in conceptual comparisons, the ordering of opposites, the naming of objects, grammar and logic Harmon and Ringold also point out that although mystics have been telling us how to achieve this state of higher awareness for thousands of years, Science has only officially begun to recognize it since it became possible to reproduce the experience under laboratory conditions, via biofeedback 13 The more meditation is practiced, says Maxwell Cade, the easier it becomes to produce and to maintain an alpha rhythm, and the longer continuous alpha rhythm is maintained, the more often the individual experiences states of higher awareness according to mystics, when one comes to truly know oneself. The pull of the material body and ego personality become greatly decreased Abraham Masler comments on his patients who had mystical experiences, this is not as simple a happening as one might imagine from the bare words to have a clear perception that the universe is all of a piece can be so profound that it changes the person's character and his world view forever apostrophe according to Michael Talbot, the objective reality, the world of coffee cups, mountain vistas, elm trees, and table lamps might not even exist or at least not exist in the same way we believe it exists what was out there was really a vast, resonating symphony of waveforms, a frequency domain that was transformed into the world as we know it only after it entered our senses 14. Three modes of perception, three modes of reality it appears that based on whether we are using serial or parallel perception or a hybrid, we will experience different realities the extreme scenarios are as follows, a universe, where each attribute in a pair of complementary competitive pair is observed separately over time, a serial perception associated with the left brain a full void, where all complementary attributes, whether competitive or cooperative, are superposed, perception and non-perception are superposed an empty void, a state where perception, and non-perception, sees s because all complementary attributes cancel out. Which state we experience is relative to our orientation three observers would experience three different modes, of reality, observing the same phenomenon the first may observe an attribute the second will experience a supposition of an attribute and its contrary attribute the third will not. The really astonishing hypothesis chapter 11. 97 experience anything attributes that are observed simultaneously by one observer, i.e. in superposition, is observed as separate attributes by another observer, 
and as attribute less by a third observer using meditative terminology, one may experience perception, another may experience a superposition of perception and non-perception, and the third experiences the cessation of perception apostrophe the latter state is not unconsciousness, it is the cancelling off of the contrary states perception and non-perception apostrophe this non-dual state where dualities or polarities are cancelled out i.e. where the binary splitter in the brain is rendered ineffective, has been described by or alluded to by every major religion indeed, the multiverse is distinguished from the void only by the degree of symmetry in our awareness, from an asymmetric serial state of awareness to a symmetric parallel state of awareness this has led to the cryptic saying in Mahayanist Buddhism that Nirvana, the void, loosely defined, is samsara, the multiverse, apostrophe universes appear, are in superposition or disappear like a mirage relative to the degree of symmetry in our awareness when there is perfect symmetry in awareness, being neither attracted to an attribute nor repelled by its contrary attribute i.e. when an attribute is interchangeable with its contrary attribute, the state is indefinable in terms of classical logic contrary attributes within a universe and contrafactual universes are initially superposed, and then a cancellation of these attributes occurs spontaneously when there is a break in the symmetry of awareness, for example, when a desire arises, evidencing attractions and aversions, a universe manifests the middle path in Buddhism and centering meditation in Christian contemplation are attempts to restore our awareness to perfect symmetry and achieve a non-dual mode there are many intermediate states, which correlate to the various higher energy universes and the corresponding meditative states, where the superposed state can be intermittently experienced apostrophe symmetry, in the mathematical sense, means that one thing is interchangeable with another perfect symmetry in awareness simply means that the individual is neither attracted nor repelled by opposites in other words, a negative situation is interchangeable with a positive situation, joy is interchangeable with suffering, self is interchangeable with not self pseudo Dionysus, the 5th century father of mysticism in both eastern and western churches says that God is superior to all opposition between being and non-being. It therefore cannot be asserted either that God is or is not the modern view, in the light of what has been revealed by quantum physics, may be to say that everything and every person both exist and does not exist, S.C.H.R. Dinger's cat is both alive and dead. 98. C.H.R.P.T.E.R. 1-2. Superposition in the full void? lay down all thought, surrender to the void, it is shining. Or play the game existence to the end, of the beginning. Beatles, tomorrow never knows. Superposition of complementary competitive attributes long before S.C.H.R. Dinger wondered whether his famous cat could be both alive and dead at the same time, a commentator in the Sarangama Sutra questioned. Dot 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 if water and fire are present universally in the same space and at the same time, how is it that they do not destroy each other? Dot 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 how can two different and opposing natures be mutually universal at the same time? Superpositions of complementary attributes are difficult for the mind to grasp entangled particles which are anti-correlated in relation to spin continue to exist within our space-time they do not cancel out physicist Mirachzel says that the idea of superposition, of being at two places at once, is related to the phenomenon of entanglement to entanglement can be described as a superposition principle involving two or more particles which are generated in the same event but separated in space-time two particles that can be like years away may behave in a concerted way, what happens to one of them happens to the other one instantaneously, regardless of the distance between them considering that all particles in this superposition in the full void chapter 12. 99 universe were generated from one event, the Big Bang and its aftermath, in a sense then all particles are entangled with their anti-correlated particles this also means that the universe is in a superposition of contrary states right now. The superposed state with our current understanding of quantum physics, 
most physicists have come to accept the superposed state which allows contradictory states to exist at the same time quantum superposition, in which a system can exist in two states, such as having two different values of angular momentum or being in two different places, at the same time, has been confirmed in numerous experiments for example, a single ion can have a measure of existence simultaneously in two places several nanometers apart, within an atom trap 3, or wave-like manifestations of C60 molecules can be split and sent along separate paths of an atom interferometer 4 in a Stony Brook experiment quantum states were superposed on a macroscopic scale the quantum system in question was a supercurrent containing billions of electron pairs, flowing around a 140 micron sized superconducting quantum interference device, squid, circuit this device was a trillion trillion times larger than an atom, and yet exhibited quantum duality associated with waves in this case a supercurrent was made to flow in opposite directions at the same time the current was in a superposition of clockwise and anti-clockwise flows, it was never zero five this is also true of the universe which is a composite of attributes and its contrary attributes, yin and yang which is the same as saying that the universe is in a superposition of yin and yang, but it is never zero from our usual frame of reference. Superposed or symmetric logic Amir Achzal observes that in quantum mechanics we have to abandon the quotidian either or logic in favor of the new both and logic the concept, he says, is very foreign to us, since we never encounter it in our daily lives 6 yet Matt Blanco says this is the symmetric logic used by the unconscious. There is some support for equating unconscious states with quantum superposition Matt Blanco described the dream world as where paradox reigns and opposites merge to sameness, also an apt description of the quantum world. Petra Gopic, Neuroscientist. 100. Mystics who have been using language based on superposed or symmetric logic have had mixed responses, from amusement to accusations of being illogical while classical Aristotelian logic adheres to the law of non-contradiction, superposed logic transcends it superposed logic is not illogical, it is illogical. Weak measurements preserve superpositions a quantum particle such as an electron can spin clockwise and anti-clockwise at the same time, for example, or exist simultaneously in two places these strange superpositions are extremely fragile it had been a tenet of quantum theory that as soon as anyone tries to observe a superposition, it collapses back to some kind of normality make a measurement of, say, an electron spinning both ways at once and the electron appears to have just one spin lifting off the lid from the container containing SCHR Dinger's famous cat forces the cat to be either alive or dead and so this mysterious quantum world of superposed states has remained impossible to explore, until recently an international team of scientists, led by Yair Aharonov in Tel Aviv University, Israel used weak measurements to reveal interesting features of superposed states 7 a weak measurement does not disturb a system significantly, so it remains quantum coherent. But each individual measurement is less accurate to make up for this, the measurement has to be repeated many times in order to get as close to the real answer as possible on the other hand, a strong measurement attempts to be highly accurate in each observation immediately collapsing the wave function to this or that actuality. Effects of measurements on worldview. The organization of the brain obeys principles of uncertainty and complementarity, as does the physical world with which brains interact, and of which they form a part this suggests that these principles reflect each brain's role as a self-organizing measuring device in the world, and of the world. Stephen Grossberg, Neuroscientist Date. Einstein's objection to the proposition that consciousness causes the wave function to collapse was that non-human machines were doing the measuring we have to bear in mind, though, that our sensory systems, which include the relevant regions in our brains, are measuring instruments that process information without the aid of the conscious self hence, the same mysterious measurement process that leads to wave function collapse. Superposition in the full void chapter 12. 101. 
in laboratories would be operating in our everyday lives when our brains measure the environment it is possible to generalize that, strong measurements by the, discriminating, left, brain lead to wave function collapses and a manifest universe the proposition Alan discriminating human left brain, with its attention to detail and a demand for a high level of accuracy in specific observations, makes strong measurements this correlates to our classical Everyday world worldweek measurements by the appositional right brain preserves superpositions and is associated with the full void state the appositional human right brain with global attention to aggregated information. Makes weak measurements this correlates to certain advanced meditative states no measurements by the brain does not manifest anything and is associated with the empty void state this correlates to the non-manifest of consciousness of a liberated monk, as frequently described in Buddhist and Hindu religious literature. Event horizons event horizons, in a broader sense, mark the boundary between a state where events occur in space-time, and a state where events are irrelevant, between the universe and the empty void according to general relativity, gravitation severely modifies space and time near a black hole as the event horizon is approached, time slows down relative to that of a distant observer, stopping completely on the horizon this is also exactly what happens when the Planck limits are reached space-time, dualities and cycles are suspended held in abeyance or become frozen at the event horizon it's as if somebody pressed the pause button on the universal movie John Taylor says that a space traveler will take a finite time to fall into the event horizon around a collapsed star, from his frame of reference. But an observer, who keeps a good distance away, will only see the rocket and the rider going ever more slowly to the star. Getting fainter and fainter as they do so in fact they become redder due to the gravitational redshift, and fainter, and then become invisible it will take the spacecraft forever to reach the critical Schwarzschild radius 9 according to Ron Cowan, the observer never actually sees the person passing through the event horizon into oblivion that's because the gravity at the event horizon, which warps space-time severely, causes clocks to tick ever more slowly, ultimately freezing time altogether 10 the Voyager, however, rushes right through the horizon without any ill effects 11 on macroscopic scales, within a particular universe, black holes mark. 102. Event horizons on microscopic scales. The Planck limits mark the event horizons when approaching the Planck limits a similar freezing occurs Gerard T. Hoof prefers not to speculate that quantum mechanics breaks down at the Planck scale but instead suspects that quantum mechanics becomes trivial there in other words, quantum superpositions are still allowed but become irrelevant 12 in 2000 Jack NG of the University of North Carolina reported in Nature magazine that the foaminess of space-time near the Planck limits leads to an uncertainty in timekeeping, the more accurate the clock, the shorter its lifetime, which in turn leads to a bound on information processing, speed and memory simultaneously, analogous to the Heisenberg bound on simultaneous measurement of momentum and position he believes that the faint gurgle of space-time foam can be detected by just a hundredfold enhancement in certain projects this suggests that the Planck limits, in our universe, might eventually become a realm that can be approached and measured 13 on even larger scales, Event horizons are present where the universe meets the void the event horizon of a black hole encircles an invisible black hole sitting inside a manifest universe on the other hand, the event horizon of the universe encircles the manifest universe which sits inside what appears to be a black hole, a void? The most outrageous possibility is that we might be living inside an enormous black hole. R.G. de Guy, J.I. Capusta, Y. Hosotani Physicists 14. Superposed dualities at the event horizon of J. Dakeman notes that one of the phenomena common to all subjects is what appears to be the simultaneity of conflicting perceptions during advanced meditation states. Newberg and de Quilly say that during meditation or ritual states, logical paradoxes or the awareness of polar opposites may appear simultaneously both as antinomies and as unified wholes this experience is coupled with an intensely effective, oceanic or blissful experience during intense meditative experiences.
the experience of the union of opposites is expanded to the experience of the total union of self and other fifteen dualities become superfluous at the superposed event horizon, the full void, and cancels out in the empty void where there is near perfect symmetry, dualities are equivalent up or down, cold or hot means the superposition in the full void chapter 12. 103. Same to the observer a break in symmetry signifies that one of the polar ties in the duality takes precedence at a point in time this is required for any universe to manifest for example, science acknowledges that for our universe to exist there must be a preponderance of matter the universe as we know it, would not exist if there was an equal distribution of matter and antimatter in the nearly perfectly symmetric event horizon, the full void, polarities and dualities become meaningless and irrelevant as they are indistinguishable in the perfectly symmetric empty void they cancel out. Consciousness without feature, without end, luminous all around, here water, earth, fire and wind have no footing here long and short, coarse and fine, fair and foul, and name and form, i.e. dualities, are all brought to an end with the cessation of consciousness, each is here brought to an end saying attributed to Siddhartha Gautama 16. It is interesting to note that there are two very different types of consciousness mentioned above, consciousness without feature and just, plain. Consciousness the former alludes to right brain convergent awareness, which merges into a non-local universal mind, and the latter to left brain divergent awareness, as described in chapter 1. The former is a perfectly symmetric awareness, often called a non-manifest of consciousness, which is neither attracted nor repelled by opposites and beyond dualities, i.e. long and short, coarse and fine, fair and foul etc. Physicist John Taylor says, apostrophe the traveler into superspace has to leave all his usual notions of space and time behind him he cannot ask if superspace is hot or cold, whether it is wide or narrow, or whether it is shaped like a cube or sphere it has no past or future, nor any dimensions it is a lace worker of wormholes. Forming and disappearing constantly in motion but never advancing or retreating it is full of ceaseless activity, yet overall it is static and timeless apostrophe 17. Structure within the full void Heinz Pagels notes that the nothingness before the creation of the universe is the most complete void that we can imagine, no space time or matter existed it is a world without place, without duration or eternity, without number dot 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 yet this unthinkable void converts itself into the plenum of existence, a necessary consequence of physical laws where are these laws written into the void? It would seem that even the void is subject to law, a logic that existed prior to time and space still Odin will remarks that in some 104 unfathomable way, the gravitational field would contain all the information nature needed to fashion time and space even the things it contained, such as the fundamental attributes, would be part of its invisible fabric 17 physicist B.J. highly explained that in experiments which have been made to find the radius of the electron they assume that it has an internal structure however, they find no structure the natural assumption is that it is point like but it seems very difficult to understand how a point can process the information of its own field coming back from the environment therefore, physicists postulate that there should be some structure between 10 to 15 centimeters and 10 to 33 centimeters which is the Planck length he says this is where people think that space time will break down although he feels it may break down before that according to him you can have structure in an electron without being extended in space-time 19 paradoxically. Structural information and forms are implicit in the full void identity and intentionality may therefore yet be present, in a frozen state, on the surface of the universe, i.e. the event horizon, although it may become superfluous, and meaningless. This information will be there even when the universe is dissolved but will be activated in the next cycle of manifestation how can the full void or superposed event horizon contain structural information and identities? 
David Bomb described an interesting device he saw in a BBC television program. The device was a specially designed jar containing a large rotating cylinder. The space between the cylinder and the jar was filled with glycerin floating motionless in the glycerin was a drop of ink. When the handle on the cylinder was turned, the ink spread out through the syrupy glycerin and seemed to disappear but when the handle was turned back in the opposite direction. The ink slowly collapsed upon itself and once again formed a droplet. 20 bomb writes, This immediately struck me as very relevant since when the ink drop was spread out, it still had a hidden IE non manifest order that was revealed when it was reconstituted. 21 As noted in Advaita Vedanta, the universe dissolves into the void, only to reveal itself once again at the dawn of manifestation all dualities are suspended or superposed in the full void and cancelled out in the empty void the structure, i.e. form, of the universe appears to be inherent in the apparent emptiness of the full void according to Buddhist Mahayanist scriptures, form is empty. Emptiness is form apostrophe 22 according to Dana Zoha the quantum vacuum is very inappropriately named because it is not empty rather, it is the basic, fundamental, and underlying reality of which everything in this universe, including ourselves, is an expression physicist John Hitchcock believes that the superposition in the full void chapter 12. 105. World field in the quantum vacuum contains the forms that generate the universe. Perfect symmetry, perfect randomness, perfect freedom the void is symmetric this also means that it is totally random in character and a causal from our perspective to Reginald Cahill and Christopher Klinner space and time and all the objects around us are no more than the froth on a deep sea of randomness far from being merely associated with quantum measurements. This randomness is at the very heart of reality, says Cahill a metaphysicist stated basically the same idea but with a different interpretation I.K. Tamney argues that it is this indeterminateness at the basis of every natural phenomenon which is reflected in and referred to as the principle of uncertainty which has been discovered by physicists this uncertainty is due to the fact that at the basis of the phenomenal world which is governed by exact natural laws is consciousness the whole of the manifested universe which is bound by natural laws, and therefore determinate, is embedded, as it were, in consciousness which is free and therefore indeterminate uncertainty, therefore, is found at the bedrock of any phenomenon and not in the body of the phenomenon itself. Apostrophe 23 According to Lynn McTaggart, Einstein himself recognized that matter itself was a disturbance of perfect randomness. 24 Physical reality is irreducibly random. Gerard Milburn, however, questions. But how can anything so beautifully ordered and lawful as the universe arise from such an apparently lawless principle? The apparent intelligibility of the universe is constructed, according to him, bit by bit, from entangled quits apostrophe 25 asymmetric universes are generated from the symmetric void through repeated breaks in its symmetry nature seems to be dissatisfied with too much symmetry John Hitchcock says. Nearly all the symmetry in nature are less symmetric than the cause that gave rise to them. 26 Cahill and Klinner view forms as being randomly generated. Others are of the view that it only appears randomly generated because they are generated from an unbounded indeterminate consciousness. Tamney says that when action comes out from an integrated, unbounded, symmetric, Consciousness it comes out from the consciousness as a whole and not from any particular act of willing, as in the case of mind 27, much like creative ideas that appear almost from nowhere the term nowhere is significant, the void, or the equivalent illusory black hole interiors in the universe, is in fact literally nowhere since space is an illusion in other words. Tamney is appealing to a top-down and holistic process which gives rise to uncertainty and the probabilistic nature of the physical. 106. World at the subatomic level where it approaches consciousness Dennis Gabor described the film produced by a holographic system as noise, a meaningless angle of swirls yet the hologram of an object appears instantaneously when a laser beam is shone onto this noise apostrophe there is evidence that the whole universe is holographically encoded in the full void which appears to be an irreducibly random void this randomness of the void also gives it total freedom. Infinite energy the full void is a source of infinite energy according to Lynn McTaggart, 
every exchange of every virtual particle radiates energy the zero point energy in any one particular transaction in an electromagnetic field is half a photon's worth but if you add up all the particles in and out of being, you come up with a vast, inexhaustible energy source, equal to or greater than the energy density in an atomic nucleus, all sitting there unobtrusively in the background of the empty space around us, like one all pervasive supercharged backdrop the total energy of this zero point field exceeds all energy in matter by 1040 the energy in a single cubic meter of space is enough to boil all the oceans of the world 28 according to David Peat, modern physics tells us that the universe is created in a highly symmetric state but these symmetries are hidden in our everyday world until we reach very high energies, the natural energies of our universe 29 hence. Symmetry will be restored as we journey up higher energy, parallel, universes. Symmetry and manifestation Global symmetry demands that where there is a local violation of symmetry in one universe, this is compensated in some other mirror universe every asymmetric manifestation is reflected by its opposite by the perfectly symmetric void metaphysicist Tamney says that everything in manifestation must disturb the harmony and distort, or perhaps suppress the perfection of the whole so everything must have its, suppressed, equal and opposite in some form and somewhere apostrophe 30 Lynn McTaggart says that the quantum world was a perfect hermetic world of pure potential, only made real, and, in a sense, less perfect, when interrupted by an intruder 31 i.e. an observer's brain which suppresses certain attributes of the void enabling a universe to manifest chirality is the right-handedness or left-handedness of the universe, that is, it is the asymmetry associated with parity when the perfect symmetry of the superposed void is disturbed. Apostrophe it collapses and manifests as this or that, left-handed or right-handed universe, which counterbalance each of their individual universes are chiral the multiverse, however, disappears superposition in the full void chapter 12. 107. At the global level at this level, when near perfect symmetry is reached, the superposed full void is realized, when perfect symmetry is reached the empty void is realized the perfectly symmetric void is frequently referred to as the unmanifest in religious and metaphysical literature it is, thanks to chirality, says David Peat, that we have an observable asymmetric, universe at all 30 to a universe can only manifest to an observer if there is some asymmetry in the interactions between its particles and forces if there is perfect mere raw symmetry, there is no manifestation of any universe, in other words, there will be no measurables relating to that universe, similarly, there are no measurables associated with the perfectly symmetric non-manifest of consciousness of a liberated person as described in Buddhist and Hindu religious literature. There is no measuring of a man one to the goal when all conditions are removed, all ways of telling are removed. Saying attributed to Siddhartha Gautama 33. According to a T man, the highest states are unmanifest, unknowable and exist beyond the universe in Hebrew mysticism such a realm is called Ein Sof, the eternal state of being which results when all qualities are removed the unconditioned state of all things 34. 108. C H P T E R 1 3. Cancellation in the empty void? Cancellation of complementary competitive attributes. The right holistic mode is particularly good at grasping patterns of relations between the component parts of a stimulus array, integrating many inputs simultaneously to eventually arrive at a complete configuration i.e. a gestalt. Yaxino 1. Physicist Jevin Jorberan says, I used to believe that an overlay of worlds, the totally infinite, would be an infinitely dense and infinitely extended three-dimensional plane but now I understand that for every matter universe like our own, there exists an opposite antimatter world to cancel the first, and thus in truth, if we could observe an infinite universe we would not see anything at all, that is, if we could somehow observe all the worlds together within the same space apostrophe an overlay of worlds would produce a space without any observable matter, 
where every positive particle is matched with an equal negative particle the many worlds combined into a single state could possibly create such a perfect medium, where no one thing is apart from others yet remove one part and its opposite will appear in its absence return the part and the entire infinite field of space returns to zero mass, zero density, zero energy. Cancellation in the Empty Void Chapter 13 109 what would you perceive if you could perceive the multiverse, with its contrary attributes and universes, as a gestalt? Well, apparently, what logically follows is an attributeless void. The attributeless void since contrary attributes cancel out their conjugate partners in the void, the empty void can be said to be a attributeless apostrophe physicist John Hitchcock explains that a particle and its antiparticle, generated in the quantum vacuum, have the same mass but their charge and spin arise in terms of opposites i.e. positive and negative charge, and positive and negative spin, so that the positives and negatives cancel as to net quantity of each attribute which is generated in the process this is one form of emptiness, which he calls an emptiness of attributes apostrophe 19. Total functioning of the holistic operator. Mystics of all religions achieve an immediate sense of God via the total application of the holistic operator to the totality of reality. Newberg and De Aquili 2. According to Newberg and De Aquili, there is a holistic operator located in the parietal lobe in our non-dominant, usually right, brain in normal, everyday awareness, it is difficult for the holistic operator to function in isolation however, in intense meditation and prayer this operator can be made to function briefly in an absolute sense so that the entire universe is perceived as a unity apostrophe Newberg and De Aquili describe this as the absolute unitary state the absolute functioning of the holistic operator, they say, is associated not so much with the concept of God as with the experience of God if a universe of contrary attributes is experienced holistically it will be both a perfect unity and a perfectly symmetric void. Deferentation in Meditation. Yoga is the restraint of the processes of the mind. Tanjali, Yoga Sutras 3. Total deferentation is the cutting off of all input to a cognitive operator in the brain according to Tiller and Dragonetti's commentary on the Ptanjali's, Yoga Sutras, in order to free itself from suffering, the spirit must disidentify and disentangle itself from mental processes, it must tie so. 110. Late itself from mind and its functions for this isolation can only be brought about by the restraint of mental processes by elimination of these, mental, processes, one after the other. The only entity that ultimately remains, will be the spirit, free and isolated in its total and absolute purity during the highest stage of concentration. When there is a total and absolute restraint the spirit dwells established in its own nature dot 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 pure, isolated and free dot 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 pure consciousness without limitations of space and time, without any inner or external object in which it can be reflected, reduced to motionlessness and to the silence of a quietude raised to its highest level once the total restraint is produced dot 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 absolute voidness reigns in the mind, it is the deep calm, the profound silence. 5. The physical mental void While science views the void as purely physical, meditators know that it has effects that go beyond the physical apostrophe we know every emotion and idea has physical correlates we also have already argued that particle waves and fields, possess consciousness as a generic property, in the author's book, our invisible bodies apostrophe 6 and when we look at our physical bodies in the mirror, we know we have both physical and mental attributes according to Dana Zoya, one of the fields within the quantum vacuum is thought to be a coherent Bose-Einstein condensate, that is, a condensate with the same physics as the ground state of human consciousness understanding this might well lead us to conclude that the physics which gives us human consciousness is one of the basic potentialities within the quantum vacuum it might even give us some grounds to speculate that the vacuum itself is conscious, she says 7 hence, the void has psychological correlates which a being who can experience emotional and mental states can relate to accessing the void can therefore have both physical and psychological effects that last a long time. Stenodenwald asks, could there really exist some kind of elemental void? 
Could this place or condition be the complete negation of every physical attribute we can comprehend? It would be timeless, spaceless and empty of content apostrophe eight according to Siddhartha Gautama, by passing beyond the state of neither perception nor non-perception the event horizon of our awareness, the full void, a man enters and abides in the cessation of perception, the empty void, nine this man, says Gautama, does not imagine he is aught or anywhere or anything apostrophe in other words, the illusion of space-time evaporates there is a discontinuity between the full void and the empty void through spontaneous natural forces, this discontinuity is breached and a cancellation in the empty void chapter 13 111 region devoid of space or time or an elemental void can be realized, according to Gautama's findings about 2500 years ago, and similar findings in other religions. The public void this void is not a personal void it is objective and can be accessed by anyone, in the present or in the future according to, Siddhartha, Gautama, contemplatives and priests who in the past entered and remained in an emptiness that was pure, superior and unsurpassed all entered and remained in this very same emptiness that is pure, superior, and unsurpassed contemplatives and priests who in the future will enter and remain in an emptiness that is pure, superior, and unsurpassed, will all enter and remain in this very same emptiness that is pure, superior, and unsurpassed contemplatives and priests who at present enter and remain in an emptiness that is pure, superior, and unsurpassed they all enter and remain in this very same emptiness that is pure, superior, and unsurpassed apostrophe 10 Rodney Bomford says that both the unconscious and the goal of the mystic are not private, but are one and the same in every individual for if the mystic reaches non-being, that is to say, nothingness, then this nothingness is simply one and the same one person's nothingness is presumably the same as another person's if on the other hand the mystic is experiencing the unity of everything then again that is one and the same there cannot be two or more everything's apostrophe the depth of the unconscious is single, not possessed uniquely by the individual that which the mystic glimpses is not just his or her unconscious, but the unconsciousness of God, an unconsciousness its deepest level shared by every animate being, he says there is something universal in the kind of experience that people have of this deep level, an experience of everything, as well as of nothing he says, this experience is what Christian mystics describe as an experience of God. According to him Ten Newberg and de Quilly maintain that the actual experience of absolute unitary being is necessarily the same for any individual who experiences it apostrophe this is necessary from a neurophysiological as well as a philosophical perspective it is necessarily experienced as an infinite, unified, and totally undifferentiated state 11. Beyond the gates of Planck. What we have seen thus far is a progression from explicate order to simple three-dimensional implicate order, then to a multi-dimensional implicated order, then to an extension of 112. This to the immense sea in what is sensed as empty space the next stage may well lead to the notion of the implicate order beyond the critical, Planck, limit of 1033 centimeters. David Baum 12. Science now hypothesizes that beyond the Planck limit, the microscopic superposed event horizon, is a spaceless and timeless void i.e. where there is no distinction between here and the or between now and then apostrophe there is an absence of classical space-time and classical objects, including the sun, moon, or people, below Planck scales, dualities are meaningless below 10 to 33 centimeters, Planck space. Space ends at 10 to 43 seconds, Planck time, time becomes quantized die it becomes discontinuous below 10 to 43 seconds, it ends consciousness cancels out information ends what is present below Planck scale is neither consciousness nor unconsciousness according to Andre Lind, the universe cannot be said to be homogeneous or inhomogeneous because these concepts have no meaning in a place where there is no up or down no before or after i.e. where there are no dualities, as a result scientists have no way of predicting what state the universe was in right after the Planck era 13. The empty void? There the stars do not shine, the sun is not visible, the moon does not appear, 
yet darkness is not found when a sage has known, this sphere, then from, duality, form and formless, bliss and pain, he is freed. Saying attributed to Siddhartha Gautama 14. The Pate Price studies and the Pair studies suggest that at a more fundamental level of existence, there is no space or time, no obvious cause and effect. Lynn McTaggart, Science Reporter 15. According to Lynn McTaggart, Pat Price studies also suggest that the universe exists in some vast here where here represents all points of space and time at a single instant in the quantum world of the zero point field, a subatomic world of pure potential. Life exists as one enormous present 16 at macroscopic scales. Space and time, cause and effect also break down inside a black hole. Gantlation in the Empty Void Chapter 13 113. At the center of a black hole lies the singularity where space-time has infinite curvature here it is no longer meaningful to speak of space and time, much less space-time jumbled up at the singularity, space and time cease to exist as we know them in this bizarre realm in which space and time are broken apart, cause and effect cannot be unraveled. University of Illinois. Is perception indefinitely extended? The Sarangama Sutra claims that in the state of freedom from intoxicants a person will be able to look upon the countries of this world and see them as clearly as an object lying in the palm of his hand in that state the enlightened ones, looking beyond this world, have seen with like clearness, all the worlds, even hundreds of thousands of worlds their sight reaches everywhere but the perception of the eyes belonging to ordinary sentient beings cannot pierce through the thickness of a tenth of an inch apostrophe 17 in a sphere where time does not exist, it would be natural to be at all places at the same time the basic operations of the right brain generate an integrated representation of where we are in space currently. A 3D space is constructed by our brains for us based on incoming information if we can operate through other bodies and brains, we need not be restricted to a 3D space according to renowned physicist, Lee Smolin, when we imagine we are seeing into an infinite 3D space. We are falling for a fallacy in which we substitute what we actually see for an intellectual construct, generated by the brain, the continuous appearance of, 3D. Space is an illusion, he says 18 If space-time is an illusion, then perception could indeed be non-localized and extend indefinitely apostrophe. End of cycles We note that as we go up the energy ladder of, parallel, universes, the frequency increases hence, the wavelength decreases The wavelength of a wave is simply the length of one complete wave cycle, from the crest of one wave to another hence, as the wavelength decreases. The cycles contract to a point in the highest energy universe, space and time break up and become discontinuous The same thing would happen if we went down to microscopic Planck scales in the physical universe In either case, the subquantum region is reached. 114. False and true vacuums, full and empty voids According to Alan Wallace, Buddhist contemplative science, like Western physical science describes two types of vacuums firstly a false vacuum, which is called bhavanga in Buddhist literature it is described as the relative ground of becoming, out of which each individual mind stream emanates apostrophe secondly, a true vacuum, or primordial awareness, the absolute state of phenomena out of which space and time, mind and matter, everything in the universe, emerge 20. A false vacuum state has more energy than the true vacuum, which is taken to have zero energy density The false vacuum has positive energy density. Stephen Hawking A false vacuum, the full void, is the lowest possible energy state, but it is not completely devoid of energy The false vacuum has energy and structure and is not perfectly symmetrical Physicists work with false vacuums on a day-to-day -day basis The false vacuum is determined by the limitations of technology But the true vacuum depends on all the laws of nature whether they have been discovered yet or not in the false vacuum of the Bhavanga, contemplatives experience bliss and luminosity, devoid of conceptualization, as distinct aspects of consciousness but in the true vacuum of primordial consciousness, there is no differentiation among these experiences, or of subject and object, 
indicating a perfect symmetry that transcends relative space, time, mind, and matter. The Bhavanga has been characterized as the ground state of the human mind, out of which emerges all mental activity of a single individual primordial consciousness, on the other hand, is of the same nature as the ground state of absolute space out of which emerge all mental and physical phenomena in the universe while the relative vacuum of the Bhavanga can be realized through the cultivation of a state of mere meditative quiescence. The absolute vacuum can be realized only through the cultivation of contemplative, or experiential, insight apostrophe such experiential insight is gained by first investigating the origins, location, and manner of dissolution of all types of phenomena breaking down all reified divisions of outer and inner the illusions of space, then resting in a state of luminous non-duality 21 a true vacuum is defined as whatever remains once we have removed from some well-defined space everything that the laws of nature permit us to take away but scientists do not know all the laws of nature, so it is difficult for them to conceptualize the true vacuum, let alone create one such. Cancellation in the Empty Void Chapter 13 115. A region of space is as empty of material bodies and of energy as nature allows having no internal structure, it is perfectly symmetrical, timeless, featureless empty space, in which nothing changes, and everything would be the same since it is changeless, it is imperceptible to our measuring instruments, and nothing that scientists could do to it would make any difference to it says Wallace 22 while the Bhavanga has an internal structure and is bound by time and causality, the unity of absolute space and primordial consciousness is the absolute, or true, vacuum, devoid of all internal structure the true vacuum, empty void, is perfectly symmetrical in the true vacuum, particles, fields, and electricity are undifferentiated in the false vacuum, these entities are distinct from each other the true vacuum is described as empty of matter and energy in contrast to the false vacuum as empty of matter but not energy if you could observe bare consciousness, without mental states. It would appear empty in luminous thoughts obscure the luminosity of consciousness 23. Contemplative technique to realize a mental vacuum Contemplatives follow a variety of procedures to create a mental vacuum One common strategy is to powerfully contract consciousness by focusing on a small mental image, the smaller the object on which consciousness is focused, the more potent the consciousness becomes when the mind is so concentrated that all physical senses have gone dormant and awareness is luminous and pure, the image is released in this state, bliss, luminosity and non-conceptuality are experienced distinctly, just as the various attributes of the false vacuum of physics, particles, fields, and so forth are distinct from one another the Bhavanga is not a true vacuum because precognitive conceptual structuring of awareness still persists even though concepts such as subject and object are not manifest. Awareness is still structured by conceptual and biological influences like its analog in physics, the false vacuum of consciousness, the above anger, appears to be empty but has structure and energy the realization of the true vacuum of consciousness is by way of achieving the false vacuum of consciousness the true vacuum of consciousness is utterly free of all conceptual constructs, including space and time mind and matter, even notions of existence and non-existence the true vacuum of consciousness is one of perfect symmetry, for it is non-local, timeless, homogeneous, and devoid of internal differentiation. 116. When scientists observe physical space and its material contents, the perceptual images that they experience arise in the space of consciousness not some objective space existing independently of consciousness as neurologist Antonio Damasio points out, there is no picture of the object being transferred from the object to the retina and from the retina to the brain apostrophe likewise, when physicists construct mathematical laws and theories to describe nature, those concepts arise in the space of consciousness and nowhere else 24. Physicists have imagined a universe devoid of consciousness but the only universe of which they have any knowledge is one generated with consciousness the external space envisioned by physicists is as devoid of real, subjective experience as the world of experience is devoid of real, 
objective space each one is out of touch with the other, which raises the question, which one, if either, is real. Alan Wallace 25. Physicists' descriptions of the relative and absolute vacuum states of external space bear striking resemblances to the relative and absolute vacuum states of consciousness described by Buddhist contemplatives, says Wallace. One striking difference, according to Wallace, however, is that the absolute vacuum as conceived by physicists is devoid of consciousness, while the absolute vacuum conceived by Buddhists is of the same nature as non local, atemporal, Primordial Consciousness 26, we have already argued earlier, however, that the vacuum or void does indeed have both physical and psychological attributes, although they may be superposed or cancelled out in a perfectly symmetric consciousness apostrophe. Creativity and the void imagine for a moment if you wanted to write on a piece of paper, which already had writing on it you either would have to erase what was written, modify what was written or be constrained by what was written to be totally original and not constrained, however, a completely clean piece of paper is necessary to write on in a tributellous multidimensional void is therefore necessary for original universes to appear physicist K. C. Cole says that the void is the blank template on which the universe is written without this blank template nothing original can be generated 27 the will is not free unless it exists in a void where all possibilities are equally available hence the void itself is the source of our free will without a void in us we would not be cancellation in the empty void chapter 13 117 free creativity is an expression of the void asymmetric logic has a deterministic feel it never delivers a new truth symmetric logic of the void, by contrast, has considerable freedom, it can move in a variety of directions. Rodney Bomford The Symmetry of God 28. A Christian writer once wrote, when you are in the center, you have the freedom to move anywhere apostrophe the key to centering and achieving perfect symmetry and equilibrium in awareness is to be neither attracted nor repelled by events or attributes this disentangles the mind allowing it to go into a superposition and then slip into an elemental void through natural forces of course, each universe would follow the same route over a much longer time scale than an individual's trajectory ultimately, every particle of consciousness of every being, even incorrigibles, according to Buddhist scriptures, will be carried by the universal tide into the void. As for the cosmos in which we live, beyond the normal unpredictable surprises of the near future, Apparently in a far distant future our own space-time and our parallel antimatter cosmos which we are inseparably connected to will both merge a multitude of parallel worlds all unite within one place to return to the medium from which they originated. Stanislav Grof. Karma. The force of symmetry. A force from the void? Regardless of the world's endless complexity, there is every reason to believe that change moves toward a balance and the same principle likely applies to all aspects of nature and life the move towards an undivided whole is likely a universal principle guiding our lives. Stanislav Grof 29. Karma is a force that brings points of consciousness back to equilibrium, back to perfect symmetry each time symmetry breaks there is a force that builds up, pushing consciousness back to the perfectly symmetric void heavens and hells are both movements away from the void. 118. Mystical experience is beyond the realm of opposites visionary experience is still within that realm heaven entails hell, and going to heaven is no more liberation than is the descent into horror even the blissful visionary experiences tend to change sign if it persists too long. Aldous Huxley 30. Abiding in the void while in the world. I abide much in the void, Ananda. As formerly, so now too, I abide much in the void. Dot 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 you should train thus, we will enter upon and abide in the void that is pure and unsurpassed by any other. Saying attributed to Siddhartha Gautama 31. According to Paramahansa Yogananda, it is the spirit of God that actively sustains every form and force in the universe, yet he is transcendent and aloof in the blissful uncreated void beyond the worlds of vibratory phenomena those who attain self-realization on earth live in a similar to fold existence, he explains 30 to the left and right that brains mediate this two-fold existence.
the left dominant brain presenting to us samsara and the right brain, devoid of all influence from the left brain, enabling us to realize nirvana hence, the enlightened ones, such as the arhats in Buddhist literature, experience two different realities mediated by the two brains at the same time. The transmutation brought about through detachment is so ineffably sublime that it enables the sage to live in the world while not being of it. Bik Kunanananda 33. According to Nanananda, sensory data fall on the enlightened monk only to roll off like drops of water on a lotus leaf. To S. Where Taimani says that the enlightened monk as an individual can experience, in terms of bodily comfort and discomfort, what result is left to be experienced due to earlier residual karma 34 when the monk's physical life is over, this karmic residue is exhausted hence. After enlightenment, which is mediated by the right brain, the reality of the left brain still persists and is superimposed over the reality that the right brain has realized through enlightenment this dual state has been described as incomprehensible and difficult to imagine. Cancellation in the Empty Void Chapter 13 119 after the locus of awareness moves up all the higher energy bodies in parallel universes, in time, it confronts the final superposed event horizon and experiences the full void apostrophe without thinking or willing it slips naturally into an ineffable empty void lead beater argues that it is somewhat misleading to speak of individual souls merging into the great soul every monad is fundamentally a spark of the divine as he or she evolves the spark evolves into a flame he or she then becomes more and more conscious of his unity with the divine 35 the divine is really, perhaps, the residual void in all of us as we ascend, this void expands so that finally there is nothing but the void efforts are made to exhaust all emotional and mental content from the higher energy bodies if this is successful, when the physical bodies die. There will be no other universes, heavens or hells, to inhabit, freed from both samsara asymmetric reality or the space-time continuum, and karma different beings make different choices, exposing them to different consequences. The experience of the void Patterson's experience Alex Paterson described his experience of the void he says, it has no actual form and as such was empty, yet paradoxically, was so big as to be infinite, it was huge it could not be defined in any terms of this reality, even to the extent that it had no actual presence even though I was intimately aware of it, a paradox, thus there was no sound, no sight, no taste, no smell, no feel and no emotion about it, yet somehow I was fully aware of it 36 I had a sense it was pure awareness, devoid of experience and as such just as the void had no form or substance or presence and was everywhere yet nowhere apostrophe this experience provided me with an insight into the esoteric concept that God just is, he says, and as such is everything comprising the universe, including humans, as well as the unmanifest infinite being the unmanifest infinite, the void is simply beyond the limitations of time and space associated with the physical universe which is why it cannot be adequately described in terms of this reality apostrophe 37. We are the universe interacting with ourself. Never do we imagine that the infinite must be all around us, that we are entangled within its ebb and flow no man is an island, but rather part of a seamless whole we are all only the universe interacting with itself. Comma emphasis added comma. Stanislav Grof 38. 120. Stanislav Grof says, when we encounter the void, we feel that it is primordial emptiness of cosmic proportions and relevance we become pure consciousness aware of this absolute nothingness, however at the same time we have a paradoxical sense of its essential fullness this cosmic vacuum is also a plenum since nothing seems to be missing in it while it does not contain anything in a concrete manifest form it seems to comprise all of existence in a potential form in this paradoxical way we can transcend the usual dichotomy, the division into two, the binary split, between emptiness and form, or existence and non-existence however, the possibility of such a resolution cannot be adequately conveyed in words, 
it has to be experienced to be understood apostrophe Groff says that people who have had the experience know they have encountered God apostrophe however for most of them the term God does not adequately capture the depth of their experience, since it has been distorted, trivialized and discredited by mainstream religions and culture even the names like absolute consciousness and universal mind seem to be hopelessly inadequate to convey the immensity and shattering impact of such an encounter some people consider silence to be the most appropriate reaction to the experience of the absolute because it is obvious to them that those who know do not speak and those who speak do not know apostrophe 39 non-manifest of consciousness at the superposed event horizon, dualities are suspended, cycles freeze passing the event horizon, into the perfectly symmetric void, there is no manifestation of any universe, contrary attributes cancel out, manifestations occur only when symmetry is broken in a perfectly symmetric consciousness there is no manifestation of any objects or universes in metaphysics we would observe that when the mind particle, the residual causal body disappears, the manifested universe disappears like a mirage relative to this perfectly symmetric consciousness only the void is according to metaphysical evidence, relative to external observers, the body of the individual will continue to manifest to them even after the meditator passes the event horizon and into the empty void, from the viewpoint of an observer outside the black hole, the particle asymptomatically approaches the event horizon, but never crosses it on the other hand, from the point of view of a freely falling observer accompanying the infalling particle the horizon is crossed after a finite time in fact nothing special happens to the infalling matter at the horizon. Daniela Bigatti and Leonard Susskind, Physicists 40. Cancellation in the Empty Void Chapter 13. 121. The trajectory of the mind has been characterized as an asymptomatic spiral on its approach to nirvana in Buddhist scriptures and commentaries sometimes, all it needs is a nudge to fall into the full void, analogous to the event horizon of a black hole, and then into the empty void, analogous to the interior of a black hole. 122. C-H-O-P-T-E-R-14. Meditation and the Brain. According to Carl Bribram, a lesion in the temporal lobe near the amygdala can produce something akin to mysticism, there is a disruption in self-awareness, a kind of consciousness without content, an oceanic feeling and the loss of the distinction between self and the other one while brain machines and drugs may be used in sophisticated ways more often in the future to shift reality modes, eastern mystical traditions have resorted to various techniques, including viewing diagrams or yantras, confronting puzzles over phrases that have no rational meaning, or cones, and mental and physical exercises which aim to produce a state of no conceptualizing while remaining fully awake apostrophe another popular meditation method used consists of silently repeating or chanting a phrase, a mantra, over and over again, or of concentrating on one object and turning off the normal internal talk lessening the hold of the left brain's verbal mode the aim of all these activities is to deactivate the verbal conceptual association areas in the brain drugs have also been used to generate spiritual experiences in a religious setting presumably they cause similar changes in the neuronal activity of the brain as does meditative methods although they may have negative side effects absent from traditional meditation Right brain good at detecting low frequencies the non-dominant right brain is much quicker and much more accurate at detecting very large waves of visual information, i.e. low frequency. Meditation and the Brain Chapter 14. 123. Information, whereas the left is much better at detecting the very short waves, i.e. high frequency information. The low frequency information is like a fuzzy but general outline, the high frequencies convey the details the large waves form the fundamental background images of our world view, such as the overall view of the body in space according to Einstein, it could easily be that the two hemispheres process information through different kinds of filters and that in some way the left hemisphere has been tuned like a musical instrument to higher spatial and temporal frequencies and the right to slower ones eastern mystical traditions have encouraged listening to low, 
frequency, tones in chants and bells in temples, thus eliciting and encouraging responses from the right brain, he says too. Meditation changes your brain key parts of the brain actually get thicker during meditation brain imaging of regular workers who meditate regularly revealed increased thickness in cortical regions related to sensory, auditory and visual perception, as well as internal perception, for example, the automatic monitoring of heart rate or breathing. The study also indicates that regular meditation may slow age-related thinning of the frontal cortex. The research was led by Sarah Lazar, assistant in psychology at Massachusetts General Hospital. 3. What is most fascinating to me is the suggestion that meditation practice can change anyone's gray matter, said study team member Jeremy Gray. An assistant professor of psychology at Yale the study participants were people with jobs and families they just meditated on average 40 minutes each day. You don't have to be a monk apostrophe the study involved a small number of people. Just 20 all had extensive training in Buddhist insight meditation but the researchers say the results are significant most of the brain regions identified to be changed through meditation were found in the right hemisphere the researchers speculate that other forms of yoga and meditation are likely to have a similar impact on brain structure but each tradition probably has a slightly different pattern of cortical thickening based on the specific mental exercises involved for holistic perception the spiritual traditions are mental training systems their own descriptions show a concern with the lessening of the verbal and conceptual approach to the world associated with the dominant left brain and do seem to encourage factors that involve the right hemisphere according to Einstein they seek a deeper framework for the meaning of life and the meaning of one's life this means that emphasis was placed in perceiving events in 124 Aggregate 5 as noted earlier, see chapter 1, whereas the left brain's attention is divergent, the right brain is convergent the left brain sees the universe projected out from itself whereas the right brain sees the universe converging on itself hence, meditators focus slightly on a point to coerce the brain to go into a convergent right brain mode apostrophe saint, Teresa Rivla described two types of visions she received one she called imaginary visions which involved imagery and the second which she called intellectual visions which were abstract she tried to explain the distinction between these two types of vision by giving an example she asks us to imagine that we are in a room in which are placed many objects though a person may not remember each object afterwards she says he may recall the sight of the whole collection apostrophe in other words the intellectual vision was seeing things as a whole rather than by parts, a process normally associated with the right brain 6 according to neuroscientist, James Iaxino, Eastern religions and cultures emphasize right modal thinking he says that past research has shown that calm, restful right brain alpha rhythms can be produced while inside the yogic meditative state 7. Dehabituation and dotamization are ordinary brains tune out in response to continual, repetitious stimulation. Eight, this habituation, according to Einstein 9 and Ashbrook 10, seems to be a function of left mode of thinking. However, yogis can respond to a series of repetitive stimuli at the same reaction level when not meditating. 11. Iaxino says that this dehabituation and dotamization process can be learned. One technique that has proved useful in changing left brain dominance involves focusing attention onto a single object, e.g. a blue vase. With continual concentration on every feature of the stimulus, an almost hypnotic, sometimes mystical, state is achieved, in which a blanking out of the left brain's reality occurs this is replaced by unity and oneness apostrophe 12 after the subject re-enters the left reality, he or she will carry back some of those right modal experiences and perceive everyday objects in an entirely new fashion, says Iaxino 13. Bliss according to Iaxino. Right modders usually overestimate good feelings and drastically underestimate experienced negative circumstances the right style is claimed to polish perceptions to such a point that happy feelings will dominate over sad ones 14 Iaxino says that the holistic style attempts to present a more optimistic view of life, sometimes to the point of being irrational, for the express purpose of motivating individuals to live each.
Meditation and the Brain Chapter 14. 125. Day completely and to the fullest. States of Knowledge William James believes that mystical states, though similar to emotional states, are also states of knowledge they are states of insight into the depths of truths or the gist of existence, unplumbed by the discursive conscious intellect apostrophe meditation allows you to communicate with the intelligent unconscious 15. Battle between the brain's harmon and ring old summarizing the perennial wisdom, say that the most essential part of the self is the supraconscious not ordinarily accessible to conscious awareness at higher states of consciousness there is awareness of participation in a transpersonal mind, or the universal mind, and if the oneness of all the transient ego, threatened by the revelation, throws up smoke screens to block awareness of this supraconscious 16 this ego, which is associated with the dominant left brain has been characterized as Satan or the devil in conventional religious literature the ego's aggressive resistance against the transpersonal mind, accessible via the right brain, is not an exaggeration the ego sees the other mind slash brain in its midst as an enemy being intelligent, being the brain hemisphere you most frequently use in everyday life. It devises incredible traps and threats to recover its former glory in a dominant left brain the battle between the two minds slash brains in our body can be quite real, as was illustrated in one of Roger Sperry's cases of split brain patients where one of the patient's hand was holding a knife to kill himself but his other hand was trying to prevent it religious literature abound with stories of how the devil or the ego tries to thwart the upward climb of an aspirant to a more expansive and holistic awareness. Deconstructing the brain's reality according to neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, when an image enters the brain via the visual cortex, it is channeled through convergence zones in the brain until it is identified each convergence zone handles a category of objects, faces, animals, trees, etc., a convergence zone does not store permanent memories of words and concepts but helps reconstructing them once the image has been identified. An acoustical pattern corresponding to the image is constructed by another area of the brain this is the form of the image finally an articulatory pattern is constructed so that the word that the image represents can be spoken this is the name of the image. 126. There are about 20 known categories that the brain uses to organize knowledge, including fruits slash vegetables, plants, animals, body parts, colors, numbers, letters, nouns, verbs, proper names, faces, facial expressions, emotions and sounds according to sensei, Buddhist meditation serves to deconstruct mental processes which we have developed during our lifetime by reversing the process of constructing experience, which is basically what our brains do, meditation brings us into contact with the true nature of reality as it already and always exists as the breathing and mental activity, and the equivalent neuronal activity in the brain, become more regular and reduced. The meditator learns to disengage from external reality and the impact of sensations so as to bring awareness carefully to bear on the stream of consciousness it is at this point that categorizations processes cease we simply observe but make no attempt to categorize experiences that arise in the stream of consciousness awareness is reduced to a subtle flow of mental and physical events 17 when attention is sufficiently refined through training. All that is actually apparent from moment to moment is a mental or physical event and an awareness of that event it is at this point in the process of meditation, in which the sense of our being an observer separate from the process of experience, begins to disappear no longer is there a sense of observing experiences, just individual moments of experience at this level of awareness. We develop the understanding of how the self is constructed in each moment as a relationship with an object of experience eventually, with much practice. One observes the stream of consciousness as having an observable beginning, a duration and an observable end in terms of information processing theory. What the meditator is experiencing is the nature of perception prior to pattern recognition this is the original bare experience apostrophe there is no I or object past or future, only present experience what the meditator has actually done, according to Sensei, is to reverse the key stages in the brain's representational process, 
which yields self and object representations only as the end products of a very long and complex reworking of stimulus information 18. Hot and cool meditation. While certain types of meditation appear to have a greater effect on the arousal system, others have a greater effect on the quiescent system. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D'Aquili 20. Meditation and the Brain Chapter 14. 127. Newberg and D'Aquili classify meditation into two types, active and passive meditation in passive cool, meditation, or via negativa approach. One simply tries to clear the mind of all thoughts and avoid direct sensory input attention is not focused this blocks off the verbal conceptual association area as well as direct inputs from the senses, resulting in a cutting off, or deferentation, of the right orientation association area in active hot, meditation, via positive approach. The attention is focused on some, physical or mental, object according to Newberg and D'Aquili. During meditation there is a strong inverse correlation between increasing activity in the frontal lobe, the area associated with focusing attention, and the orientation association area the more subjects are able to focus during their meditation, the more they are able to block input into the orientation association area 21 although. It is popular to classify meditative techniques as categorically passive or active. A number of meditative techniques, including Buddhist insight meditation, oscillate between the two types of meditation in a single sitting, although one of the two types of meditation will usually dominate over the other. Insanity physicist John Taylor says that it is a good thing, for our own peace of mind, that we cannot explore other worlds directly meeting my identical twin in all things but his ability to fly or walk on the ceiling could give me quite a shock it is better for all of us that these bizarre worlds in which we also exist are denied us apostrophe 22 the danger of contracting insanity during advanced meditation has been pointed out in the relevant scriptures by yoga masters and the like Rajnish says that we have not yet been able to differentiate religious madness from non-religious madness. So in America both of these types of cases are put in the same asylum apostrophe 23 there are usually elaborate preparations for participants in advanced meditation it is possible that schizophrenics and other mentally unsound patients may have had encounters with beings from interpenetrating universes so different from ours that it causes a shock to their belief systems it has also been observed that beings from parallel universes, in this case, what we call ghosts have been startled by human attention a confrontation with super space would not only be bewildering, it can drive a person, who expects nothing but classical physical behavior, insane. 128. Super space is the plethora of possible developments of the space in which we live some of them will send a normal human mad if they were experienced. John Taylor, Physicist 24. John Taylor warns us that we must be prepared for the instantaneous jump from one point of space to another if we want to understand how to penetrate and escape from superspace near the singularity of a black hole quantum effects will become important and the plenitude of worlds in superspace should begin to be experienced apostrophe. Weak measurements in meditation in most meditative techniques. The individual is taught to observe without any expectations to relax the gaze and shift into a state of mind which is in equilibrium, neither attracted nor repulsed by any sensations unlike normal waking awareness which intensely measures the environment, the meditative mind observes but does not carry out any strong measurements of the environment this disentangles the mind from the environment, allowing it to slip into parallel universes or the void. Switching mental gears in past life regressions according to Peter Novak, an empty dark void is experienced in near-death experiences and past life hypnotic regressions in this void, the subject does not seem to sense the separate presence of anything else, no visible light, forms, body, emotion, issues, relationships, past, future pressing needs or obligations or goals no other of any kind there doesn't seem to be anything else except consciousness or awareness in the dark void. The subject often experiences no sense of self at all 25 in their book Life Between Life Joel Whittem, 
a neuropsychiatrist at the University of Toronto, and Joe Fisher quote their subjects as saying, in the interlife there's no part of me I can see apostrophe they describe the afterlife as a timeless, spaceless glide through pure nothingness, a mysterious void between incarnations in which identity, memory, and emotions are diminished one of their subjects reported, I felt no fear and no loneliness. Although I seemed to be alone apostrophe another subject, all cares and fears were left behind time and space were no more than a memory apostrophe other subjects reported, I'm walking in endless nothingness, no floor, no ceiling, no ground, no sky and I'm not aware of being anywhere and it's black apostrophe the subjects of another past life therapist, Roger Walsher, describes the dark void as follows, it's blank dot 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 dark dot 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 nothing I find myself in a great aloneness nothing there, not even a sense of time apostrophe 26. Meditation and the Brain Chapter 14. 129. Visits to heavenly realms of light are often described sequentially however, Witten, who has performed hundreds of between life regressions says that there is an utter lack of temporal sequence in the realm in between lives Wolger writes that more than 95% of his subjects reports of the entire life described this same peaceful void there is a disagreement among regression researchers about what occurs in the entire life some find that the majority of their subjects only describe floating alone in an empty void these subjects never catch so much as a glimpse of the light stage during their entire life, no heavenly realm of light or hellish realm of bewildered spirits others find that the majority of their subjects describe afterlife experiences inside the realm of light. Light and dark states Novak says that there is some evidence that both dark, the empty void, and light, the manifestation of a particular universe, states are experienced by all past life subjects the only reason we hear of one of these stages being reported more frequently than the other may have more to do with the hypnotic commands of the therapist than with the actual experiences of the subjects 27 in those reports where light is reported by the subject the hypnotist usually uses a certain command to coerce or instruct to move into the light or something similar for example when Dr. Michael Newton's subjects are regressed to a point in time in between lives, his subjects usually report finding themselves alone in the familiar dark void however, when Newton commands the subject to shift mental gears, to transfer awareness to a different mind. The subject doesn't is able to recall an existence in a particular higher energy universe Novak is of the view that the dark and light states are occurring simultaneously and independently of each other 28. Left and right at brain realities this switching from a bright temporal state to a dark timeless state during past life hypnotic regressions opens up the exciting possibility that hypnosis, besides traditional meditative or contemplative methods, can be used to realize a timeless and spaceless void in a shorter time it is possible that the bright temporal state is associated with left brain reality while the dark timeless state with right brain reality. Hypnosis eek studies show that the hypnotic state is not a form of sleep it is, in fact, a form of focused alertness, with increased attention in one area and 130 decreased or absent focus on other areas much like the active, hot, meditative state of one-pointedness apostrophe as noted earlier, according to Newberg and D'Aquili, there is an inverse correlation between the attention association area in the brain and the orientation association area during active hot, meditation when the activity in the attention association area increases, there is a sharp reduction in activity in the orientation association area, which provides our orientation to this universe according to various researchers, when we are in hypnosis, we are able to get in touch with our subconscious mind, presumably mainly harbored in the right brain, others have commented that hypnosis is the induction of a trance-like state during which the patient is in an enhanced state of awareness. Different to sleeping during a hypnotic trance the conscious mind, frequently associated with the dominant left brain is suppressed and the subconscious mind, frequently associated with the right brain, is revealed the left side of the brain is considered to be analytical and conscious during hypnosis, this side of the brain is distracted, allowing the non-analytical, 
non-critical subconscious right side of the brain to become more alert hypnosis is a normal state of mind one which most people go in and out of every day it is not an unusual state of mind you may not feel like you are in a trance or in hypnosis for most people they simply feel relaxed people who lose themselves in a movie a book or a daydream are probably experiencing a mild form of self-hypnosis in fact all of us pass through brief periods of hypnosis every day once when falling asleep i.e. the hypnagogic state and once again when waking up the hypnopompic state. These states have already been noted to open up access to the intelligent intuitive unconscious, see chapter 3. There are significant changes in brainwave activity during these states the brain's waking state registers beta waves however, just as you are going to sleep it changes to alpha and then to delta and theta in deep sleep the alpha state is a very dreamy pleasant state during this time the mind is very open to visualizations and can create a rich sensory experience when you are watching a movie that you are engrossed in driving down a long monotonous road listening to music that captures a mood or engrosses you you are in hypnosis we experience the hypnotic state every day without being aware of it when you are in a guided hypnotic trance session or driving down the road in trance you have an observer self which is an actual part of you that is always aware and watching out for you this observer self has been documented as a credible aspect of our mind that keeps us safe, even when asleep this observer self has also been mentioned in the Sarangama Sutra, see chapter 2, and can be meditation and the brain chapter 14, 131, associated with the right brain when done by an experienced therapist, hypnosis can be considered a form of guided meditation self-hypnosis can generate the same cognitive processes as meditative methods it is no wonder that most persons undergoing past life hypnotic regression also go through meditative states reported in the metaphysical and religious literature 132 C H P T E R 15 metaneurology dot 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 even if there is a soul our experience of whatever we mean by soul must pass through the brain the question is how we can show that the brain is what mediates all of our experiences. Andrew Newberg and Eugene D. Aquili 1. In the metaphysical literature higher energy bodies are mentioned and described the model in the author's book our invisible bodies sees these bodies as liquid crystal bodies composed of magnetic plasma of super particles too hence they are referred to as magma short for magnetic plasma. Bodies How does the brain in the physical biomolecular body interact with these higher energy bodies? The Sarangama Sutra states that in heavenly realms there may be seen similarities to light and darkness, and all other phenomena of this world, but that is because of the lingering memory of objects seen in this world under those heavenly conditions, you would still have to continue making distinctions between yourself and objects apostrophe three in other words, the discriminant in consciousness, associated with our dominant left brain, is also present in higher energy bodies and their universes without it, no universe or body would manifest to primordial awareness the silver cord, that is frequently mentioned in books on astral trav. Meet our neurology chapter 15. 133. Illing, operates as a communications cable, much like the corpus callosum in the human brain while the corpus callosum connects the right and left brains, the silver cord connects one body brain to another in other words, activities occurring in the higher energy body brains are also communicating with the brain in our biomolecular bodies if this cord is severed or dissolved the activities of the brains in higher energy bodies will not be reflected in the physical biomolecular brain or mediated by it the cognitive sensory systems of higher energy bodies allow us to experience parallel universes with different space-time signatures the brain's invisible superstructure the visible brain Vincent Gaddis, in his article with Brain Destroyed, They Live and Think For has given many examples of persons, who, with their brains either partially or wholly destroyed, 
continued to live and think normally Professor G. W. Sriya reported of a case of a man who had been insane for many years then suddenly became normal just before his death the autopsy revealed that there was practically nothing of the brain left in his brain pan a pathological process had gradually destroyed and diminished the brain's mass but the mystery of his return to normalcy remained unexplained Dr. Gustav Jelly reports a case of a young boy who died in full possession of his mental faculties although due to an active abscess, involving the entire cerebellum. This encephalic mass was completely detached from the bulb, which is a condition equivalent to literal decapitation he has given many such cases in his books which lead to the conclusion that the full spectrum of consciousness exhibited by the biochemical brain does not originate there. Lorber's work Roger Lewin's article is Is Your Brain Really Necessary? 5 outlined the remarkable research conducted at the University of Sheffield by neurology professor, the late Dr. John Lauber when Sheffield's campus doctor was treating one of the mathematics students for a minor ailment. He noticed that the student's head was a little larger than normal and referred the student to Professor Lauber for further examination. The student in question was academically bright had a reported tick of 126 and was expected to graduate when he was examined by CAT scan, however, Lorber Discoff feared that he had virtually no brain at all. Ordinarily, the walls of the cerebrum are 4 to 5 mm thick in this case, the student had less than 1 mm of cerebral tissue covering the top of his spinal column he was suffering from hydrocephalus nevertheless, the Sheffield student lived a 134. Perfectly normal life and went on to gain an honors degree in mathematics. This case is not rare in a study of hydrocephalus sufferers carried out by the University of Sheffield. Professor John Lauber discovered that there is no relation between the volume of brain tissue and dick of the 253 subjects in the study. Nine were found to have approximately only 5% of the normal amount of brain tissue despite this. Four hadicks of above 100, the national average, and another two hadicks of above 126, while one of the subjects proved to be as intelligent as those studying him, he had a first class degree in mathematics. Other cases across the world, there are hundreds of cases of people with hydrocephalus in this condition, cavities form in the brain that can be so large that they account for 95% of the brain's usual volume in 1970. A New Yorker died at the age of 35 he had left school with no academic achievements, but had worked at manual jobs such as a building janitor and was a popular figure in his neighborhood tenants of the building where he worked described him as passing the days performing his routine chores, such as tending the boiler, and reading the tabloid newspapers when an autopsy was performed to determine the cause of his premature death he, too was found to have practically no brain at all Professor Lauber has identified several hundred people who have very small cerebral hemispheres but who appear to be normal intelligent individuals some of them he describes as having no detectable brain yet they have scored up to 120 on ICT tests in 1996 in the US a young boy here referred to as James was about to undergo a serious operation James was only 8 years old and suffered from a condition known as Sturge Weber syndrome, which had caused the formation of abnormal blood vessels in the left hemisphere of his brain as a result he was afflicted by regular epileptic fits and had a very low mental age. The only word in James's vocabulary was mama apostrophe in an attempt to rectify the problem, doctors felt forced to take drastic steps. They decided to remove the entire left side of his brain the medical team knew that, since the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. The operation to save James's life would also leave him partially paralyzed what they did not expect, however, were the developments in James's condition which occurred soon after the surgery within weeks, James began to talk and, two years later, was close to reaching a normal mental age Matt Singley. The operation to remove an entire hemisphere of his brain appears to have cured him of his learning difficulties such remarkable examples of adaptability are far more common than. Meet our Neurology Chapter 15. 135. We might think in conflict with established medical thinking, 
there are later ally hundreds of cases where people have either been born with an underdeveloped brain, or have had large areas of their brain damaged in an accident, but are still able to function normally. Explanation? Some scientists believe that the remaining cortex takes over the functions once provided by the removed cortex however, this explanation cannot be carried too far in some patients there is so little brain left, one wonders if this explanation is tenable there is cynicism on the question of the brain's spare capacity to take over the functions provided by the parts of the brain that have been removed or damaged to talk of redundancy in the brain is an intellectual cop out to try to get round something you don't understand, says Patrick Wall, professor of anatomy at University College, London Norman Jeshvind a neurologist at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital agrees, certainly the brain has a remarkable capacity for reassigning functions following trauma, but you can usually pick up some kind of deficit with the right tests, even after apparently full recovery apostrophe some neuroscientists, like Wall, say that, perhaps. We have underestimated the work of the deep subcortical structures for hundreds of years neurologists have assumed that all that is dear to them is performed by the cortex, but it may well be that the deep structures in the brain carry out many of the functions assumed to be the sole province of the cortex apostrophe nevertheless, scientists have studied the subcortical structures no scientist has any evidence that these subcortical structures in a normal brain can actually perform the cognitive functions currently attributed to the cortex instead of substructures we have to turn our attention to superstructures the invisible superstructure one explanation is that the physical biomolecular brain is supported by an invisible superstructure composed of dark matter which develops during life although there is much indirect evidence of the existence of dark matter, it is mentioned in every current textbook on physics and is estimated to contribute to more than 80% of the matter of the universe, current scientific instruments are unable to detect it directly it had been noted previously that children who have undergone brain removal at an early age develop more or less normally, see chapter 1. Adults have a harder time coping it was also found that the instances in which brain loss do not interfere with normal life are cases where the condition 136 develops slowly gross surgical lesions in rat brains are known to inflict severe functional disruption, but if the same damage is done bit by bit over a long period of time, the dysfunction can be minimal just as rat brains appear to cope with a stepwise reduction of available hardware, so to do human brains in some cases of hydrocephalus this time delay allows invisible superstructures of higher energy matter to form and link to the remaining visible structures. The biomolecular brain, a dumb terminal? It is true that some conscious experiences are associated with particular activities in particular parts of the brain modern scanning techniques show how particular parts of the brain light up when particular mental activities are going on but it is also true that the pictures on the screen of the television set and the sounds coming from the speakers depend on the patterns of electrical activity inside the receiver it is also true that different parts of the electrical circuitry are involved in the production of images and sounds but this does not prove that everything you hear and see on television originates inside the receiver. Rupert Sheldrake 6. The brain merely acts as a mediator or a switchboard between higher energy bodies and its environment, or like a semi-intelligent computer terminal connected to an invisible universal supercomputer which carries out the more advanced mental functions the access to the supercomputer's processing power and memory by the biochemical brain is of course constrained by its own hard and software apostrophe many of the advanced cognitive functions take place in the brains of higher energy electromagnetic body the biomolecular brain merely acts as a mediator what we see in the cortex are hyperlinks or shortcuts to use computer terminology to the brains in higher energy bodies it is easier to cut and paste links from one folder to another on your computer rather than to move entire files in other words there is a transfer of links from the cortex to the remaining parts of the brain that remain not whole functions medical science is right in pointing out that plasticity may be the key to understanding these cases of brain loss however, 
The evidence shows that this cannot be a substantive plasticity but a superficial plasticity which simply relocates the links to invisible higher energy body brains metaphysicist Charles Leadby denotes that there are wires of communication between. Meta Neurology Chapter 15 137 The Biomolecular Brain and Higher Energy Brains Brain lateralization and higher energy bodies metaphysicist Barbara Brennan, a former NASA scientist and now a subtle energy healer, observes that the higher energy bodies alternate between structured and structureless bodies the structured, or crystalline, body is associated with a mental body, and the structureless, liquid or fluidic. Body and Emotional Body 7 The nature of these bodies has been discussed in detail in the author's book Our Invisible Bodies Apostrophe A. Lead Beta points out that every part of our, biomolecular, brain is mapped onto these higher energy bodies 9 If that is so, then there must be a correlation between the alternate mental and emotional bodies described by Brennan, and in general, the metaphysical literature, and the left and right brains respectively the evolution of brain lateralization in life forms on earth, including human beings, allow these life forms to access the processing capabilities of higher energy body brains in parallel super universes alternate higher energy bodies undertake cognitive processes corresponding to the left and right brains this means that when neural activity is shifted from the left to the right brain, or vice versa, different higher energy bodies are activated the fact that different brain activities are localized in the left and right hemispheres of the brain in a consistent manner has already been discussed in this book studies of split brain patients show that the localization may be so pronounced that the two hemispheres are seen to represent almost two different persons living in a single body. The two minds, or persons, can even have different opinions about people and things we also now realize with some astonishment, that the structure of our brain has a profound effect on our post-mortem states. Post-mortem states Brennan identifies four physical bodies, the physical biomolecular, with which we are familiar, and three other physical etheric bodies the first is a template body apostrophe the second and third are the emotional and mental body which correlate with the right and left brains, respectively according to the metaphysical literature, during the death process of the physical bodies. The mental body dissolves and contracts into the physical etheric nucleus around the heart region it then travels through a meridian, which would appear to it to be a tunnel, in the template body and exits out of the head it will subsequently be absorbed by the next higher energy body, effectively reincarnating into a new body. 10. 138. The physical biomolecular body and the template body, which is closely integrated with it, will then start to disintegrate so what happens to the emotional body, which is mapped onto our right brain. If it does not dissolve, it will loiter in familiar places and subsequently be attracted to places where other similar bodies, with similar resonant frequencies, congregate hence, during the death process. There is a division of consciousness as evidenced by the separation of the emotional body, which correlates to right brain awareness, and the mental body, which correlates to left brain consciousness. This has been reported by Peter Novak in his book, Division of Consciousness, and is consistent with the metaphysical and religious literature. Novak describes the emotional body as the soul, and the mental body as the spirit. Apostrophe Emanuel Swedenborg, the 17th century mystic claims that following the post-mortem life review, a person's conscious mind, correlated to the left brain, separates from the unconscious mind, correlated to the right brain. And thereafter the unconscious soul enters into heaven or hell Novak says the conscious spirit then reincarnates into a new body 11 Dr. Frederick Schiffer says that one of the most important findings of split that brain research is that each hemisphere of the brain has a mind of its own he hypothesizes that in many people one mind may be less mature and more disturbed by past trauma than the other 12 similarly when the mental and emotional bodies of the physical ether ensemble go their separate ways, they may behave very differently from each other the unconscious emotional body, separated during the death process and correlated to our right brain.
will exhibit characteristics which will be similar to a left brain damaged patient or the person in the right brain of a split brain patient, and conversely for the conscious mental body. The study of these split brain patients would therefore throw much light on the behavior of our post mortem minds which are separated, including dysfunctional spirits and ghosts. The unconscious component, that is the emotional body, on separation if a person had lived a life which brought peace and joy to his inner soul, according to Swedenborg, at death the unconscious would, upon contenzing, find these attributes to be its essential nature, and would enjoy a heaven-type experience conversely, the unconscious would suffer a hell-type experience according to Novak, due to its absolute isolation from all outside stimuli. Emotions would come to fill the entire field of awareness of the emotional body, and so would be felt on an absolute level of intensity and once parted from the conscious half, it would lose all capacity for objective, rational. Meta Neurology Chapter 15 139 Thought, unable to think clearly, it would be doomed to remain in whatever automatic, subjective, emotionally based patterns it had forged during life having lost the capacity for intelligent decisions. The unconscious would find itself frozen in form, permanently holding whatever opinions, psychological habits, and unresolved emotional complexes it possessed at the moment of death and since the unconscious is emotionally oriented, it would focus intently and feed blindly on the emotional content it has built up over and over again if its judgments of its memories were self-approving, the corresponding emotional experience would be absolute, unending, ever-increasing joy, but if those judgments were self-condemning, the emotional responses would be absolute, unending, ever-increasing misery 13 according to Nines, National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, US, Neuropsychologist, Paul Fidio. The brain's two hemispheres normally work in tandem to judge emotions around us so we can make the right response. The right brain functions like radar, scanning for the blip on the screen, signs of negative emotion or danger, and alerts the left side. This ability is what may be sometimes called the ekapostrophe. The left hemisphere analyzes the situation, determines the risk and formulates a logical strategy but in our research, Dr. Fidio continues, we found that with damage to the left brain, the right brain becomes overstimulated and runs out of control the patient becomes anxious, pessimistic, and tends apostrophe a description that could easily fit some dysfunctional ghosts. We know that processes in the right brain, normally associated with the unconscious, are unintentional and is automatically cued there is an absence of personal will and intentionality we also know that these processes are common to all mammals the processes in the left brain normally associated with the conscious on the other hand are normally described as intelligent purposeful and intentional an exercise of free will and individuality these processes are unique to humans over age two and perhaps some language trained apes according to lead beta the essence of the higher energy bodies of generally unconscious, animals goes back to a group soul, after a short stay in the higher energy astral world 14 similarly, the essence of the higher energy body representing the unconscious portion of the human being joins a group soul, after a short individualized existence the unconscious even in a living human being, as represented in the right brain, is not as individualized as the conscious component as represented by the left brain, the rate of development of the two brains, as pointed out by Dr. Schiffer above, can be quite different, the sense of a separate identity and self-concept emanates from the discriminating left brain. 140. Since the higher energy emotional body is a magma, magnetic plasma, body, and because magma bodies with similar physical properties naturally come together, all these non-individualized emotional bodies would gradually be attracted to each other and slowly coalesce and, in time, evolve into demonic or divine archetypes within the collective unconscious. The conscious component on separation and leaving the dying body, the conscious, i.e. the mental body in Brennan's model, will also be separated from its unconscious it would be struck with amnesia, with respect to the type of memories associated with the right brain the left brain is responsible for the encoding and recall of verbal, 
temporal sequential, and language-related memories, whereas the right brain is dominant in regard to visual spatial, nonverbal, and social-emotional memories each brain stores in its memory the type of material that it is best at recognizing, processing, and expressing 15 even before death, when one brain learns, has certain experiences, and slash or stores information in memory, this information is not always available to the other brain, one brain cannot always gain access to memories stored in the other brain 16 according to Novak, in the post-mortem state without the unconscious subjective perspective. The conscious would not feel related or connected in any way to the world around it in fact, it would not experience any feeling or emotion whatsoever. 17. Completing the picture Novak's theory of a division of consciousness summarizes religious and metaphysical literature over several centuries it has brought into prominence the post-mortem division however, it is incomplete it appears to address only the split of bodies at the lowest rung of the energy ladder the higher energy groups of bodies which succeed the physical body I also alternate with mental and emotional bodies as each ensemble of bodies, with their emotional and mental components, dies. The mental and emotional bodies go their separate ways the splitting between the soul and the spirit as explained in Novak's book Division of Consciousness. May be seen as the lowest horizontal division it is not a split between all the mental and emotional bodies in the whole spectrum of higher energy body each ensemble of higher energy bodies also vertically divides during the death process for example. The physical bodies vertically divide from the higher energy bodies during the death process of the physical bodies Novak observed curiously, in contradiction to his theory, that apparitions and visitations of the recently dead, often reported by family members shortly after the death, suggest that such souls are not suffering from. Meta Neurology Chapter 15 141 any after-death division at all these visitors from the next world seem to have all their wits about them, with functional minds, logic, memories, and senses of identity still intact these souls have apparently not experienced the division predicted by the BSD, binary soul division, apostrophe he then asks, the question is, have they permanently avoided it, i.e. the division, or has it not just caught up with them yet? The answer based on the broader theory found in traditional metaphysical theories, is both apostrophe the split did occur however, further splits will occur as each higher energy ensemble, also consisting of mental and emotional bodies, unzips and dies 18 contents and other structures, or even whole bodies. That cannot not be integrated with the ensemble of higher energy bodies which are seeking to go to a higher plane or sphere are expelled as soul fragments they may be considered leftover products, which have other uses in the wider scheme of things the unconscious fragments that were left behind are now not supported by higher intelligence they are known variously as shades or shells in the metaphysical literature and have been written about extensively by Lee Beta. Shades and shells Novak should distinguish between what is commonly called shades which are debris discarded by the rising locus of awareness, in the metaphysical literature with fully living souls, with the spirit still invigorating it. Leadbeater says that in the course of his physical life the ordinary man usually entangles himself so much in, dark, astral matter, in other words that he identifies himself so closely with desires associated with lower frequency bodies, that the indrawing force of the higher energy bodies and consciousness cannot entirely separate him from it again consequently, when he finally breaks away from the lower frequency, astral, body and transfers his activities to the higher frequency, mental, body, he loses a little of himself leaving a remnant of himself in the lower frequency body this gives a certain remnant of vitality to the astral corpse, so that it still moves freely in the astral world. And may easily be mistaken by the ignorant for the man himself, he says such fragmentary consciousness, says Lee Beta, still retains a person's memories but is only a partial and unsatisfactory representation of the person since the higher consciousness has been withdrawn, there is no further development to the memories in these macroscopic body, they are repeatedly played out, 
and the bodies appear as automatons it's as if the user had left and the computer just keeps re-executing a program from its memory lead beta describes the abandoned astral. 142. Corpse with fragmentary consciousness and memories a shade apostrophe 19, Novak himself describes the unconscious souls as discarded unconscious minds 20. At a later stage, lead beta says, even this fragment of consciousness dies out of the astral body, due to increasing entropy, it does not return to the higher energy bodies and consciousness to which it originally belonged as Novak implies, just as matter belonging to a physical corpse is abandoned to the processes of nature, when the astral corpse remains, but without any trace of its former life, lead beta describes it as a shell apostrophe 21. Influence of resurrection theories Novak's theory implies that the discarded fragments, which are in reality corpses animated by residual energy, like inanimate objects which have picked up some electrostatic charge, should reunite again with the main body this is similar to certain Christian resurrection theories, where a resurrected physical, primate, body is reunited with its owner Eastern religious theories on the other hand, encourage the abandonment of these bodies, which they call sheaths or koshas to liberate the divine spark, or divine void, from being trapped in manifested universes further encasements in bodies or memories would be detrimental to liberation as explained in the author's book Our Invisible Bodies 14. The vibratory signatures of the stored incoming particles, i.e. the former nuclei of higher energy bodies, eventually generate higher energy emotional and mental bodies which are identical in composition to the previous bodies just as DNA can be used to create a clone of the original, in other words, a body similar, but not the same body, a clone, is resurrected using stored vibratory signatures. Resurrection or reincarnation? This also means that while memories, in the form of the unconscious emotional bodies, are abandoned by the ascending spirit, they are stored in particles which continue to be linked to the spiritual body in fact, it is also these stored memories, or samskaras in Hindu and Buddhist literature, that results in the dreaded cycles of births and deaths therefore, there is actually no urgent need to integrate with broken, macroscopic, soul pieces or fragments from the Eastern religious point of view, as what is implied in Novak's and similar theories which lean towards the desert religions the particles, particularly the lower energy particles, have been observed to eject from the head of a dying person by metaphysicists and even ordinary persons 22 memories become dormant in particles stored in higher. Meta Neurology Chapter 15 143 Energy bodies after they are ejected they are activated in the next downward cycle to reincarnation to produce similar bodies using new materials, rather than regenerating the old bodies similarly, every time an individual reincarnates in a physical body, through the operations of DNA, and its invisible superstructures, a resurrection of a new physical body takes place. 144. C-H-O-P-T-E-R-16 universal brain mind. The brain is chemically controlled, and experience has shown that it can be made permeable to the superfluous aspects of mind at large by modifying the normal chemistry of the body. Aldous Huxley 1. Aldous Huxley is convinced that the function of the brain and nervous system and sense organs is in the main eliminative and not productive each person is at each moment capable of remembering all that has ever happened to him and of perceiving everything that is happening everywhere in the universe, he says the function of the brain and nervous system is to protect us from being overwhelmed and confused by this mass of largely useless and irrelevant knowledge, relative to his functioning in the current universe actually just this small planet, in this way, the normally functioning brain acts as an inhibitor of certain types of experiences. A person under the influence of mescaline or lysergic acid will stop seeing visions when given a large dose of nicotinic acid another inhibitor of visionary experiences ordinary, everyday, perceptual experiences. Aldous Huxley 2. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16. 145. 
a gigantic multi-tiered electronic brain. It is interesting to note that the higher energy, super, universes which are composed of magnetic plasma and filaments punctuated with galaxies resemble nerve fibers punctuated with neural cells in our brains. Three these universes can operate as the many layers of a gigantic electronic brain, analogs to the cortex and subcortex in our biomolecular brain inside which our own super magma brain bodies live and think the filamentary structures carry current, just as nerves, to some extent, do it would not be difficult to incorporate logic gates and arithmetic units in these structures the computational power required to generate a tiny living ant, which responds to multiple inputs from the environment and with its unique structure and behavior would be challenging even to our current supercomputers considering that there are maybe trillions of life forms on this planet alone. Only the computational power of a series of higher energy universes would suffice this is the source of universal intelligence and creativity. Things and information according to science reporter J. R. Minkel, in his article If the Universe Were a Computer, information theory says that every physical system, from a glass of water to a microchip, holds ones and s in the states of its component particles changes in those states could be called computation, just as your desktop machine computes by changing the information in its memory for von Bayer says that, Anton, Zelina's conceptual leap is to associate bits with the building blocks of the material world the only possible outcomes of measuring an electron's spin are up and down apostrophe you can choose any axis to measure the spin along, vertical, horizontal or tilted, but once that axis is chosen only the two results are possible these outcomes could just as well be labeled yes and no, or as in digital computers, 1 and 0 apostrophe 5 according to Seth Lloyd in a paper called Computational Capacity of the Universe. Apostrophe all physical systems register and process information the laws of physics determine the amount of information that a physical system can register and the number of elementary logic operations that a system can perform the universe is a physical system and the number of elementary operations it has performed to date has been calculated to be 10 120 operations on 1090 bits. Computational power Eric Aclari it reports in the journal Science News that plants may perform what scientists call distributed emergent computation unlike traditional computation, in which a central processing unit carries out programs. 146. Distributed emergent computation lacks a central controller instead, large numbers of simple units interact with each other to achieve complex. Large-scale computations Many biological systems appear to carry out this type of distributed computation, for instance, ant colonies, nervous systems, and immune systems 6 Stephen Levy asks, from a single seed and a set of rules, structures that amazingly resemble natural snowflakes emerge on the computer screen they are so similar to natural forms that they raise a question. Does nature generate its own complex forms by like mathematical process? 7. Intelligent animal behavior If the intelligent unconscious can intervene in our consciousness and life processes, as discussed in Chapter 3, is it not also possible that this could account for its intervention in nature? How does a bee construct its mathematically precise honeycomb? How does a spider spin an intricate web? How does a badger construct its dam? Given that the consciousness of these animals may not have evolved into self-consciousness to a degree evidenced in human beings, it is possible that they are harnessing the intuitive and computational powers of their brains, which are normally associated with our right brains. Animals do not verbalize but most large animals can visualize they do not generally analyze, left brain-wise but they intuitively find solutions to locate food and ward off predators there are many cases of animal intelligence yet the main reason why they are not considered intelligent is because they have not evolved language but is left brain type of intelligence associated with language the only type of intelligence animals may be largely intuitive in executing intelligent operations of course we prefer to describe it as instinctual apostrophe but instinct is just the bottom rung emotion the middle rung, and intuition the top rung on the ladder of unconscious intelligence. Karmic Calculator
you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny? Saying attributed to Jesus, of Nazareth, 8. Accountability is a fundamental concept in many religions and Eastern philosophies, this concept is given the name karma apostrophe karma, from individuals to groups of living beings, may be similarly generated in a highly detailed computational process, where all parts of the universe are involved karma is a fundamental conservation law, every part of the universe is. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 147. Accountable to the rest of the universe, and the whole multiverse is moving towards greater symmetry and entropy, consistent with the second law of thermodynamics. We are as, our shared brain Harman and Ringold believe that the research on remote viewing suggests that the creative slash intuitive mind could be getting information in ways other than from the lifelong learning of the person research on telepathic communication suggests that we are all joined at a deep level, research on psychokinesis indicates a connection between mind and the external environment apostrophe 9. Information fields Rupert Sheldrake says that he sees minds as being field-like and mental fields as the basis for habitual patterns of thought mental fields go beyond, through, and interface with the electromagnetic patterns in the brain in this way mental fields can affect our bodies through our brains however, they are much more extensive than our brains, reaching out to great distances in some cases. He says 10 the higher energy universes have enormous computational power autistic savants and the greatest scientists, including Einstein, have this ability to tap into these universes there is sympathetic resonance between similar thought forms so that they cluster and form databases apostrophe these thought forms can be considered morphic fields which are generated and retained in the higher energy universes for some time nevertheless. Although similar thought forms can influence and facilitate the final structure of the life form, they do not determine it, as what is being suggested by Sheldrake, what determines the forms are the bioparticles in each body, in the case of the biomolecular body, this is the DNA molecule. The Earth's higher energy magma spheres, while having its own memoir I, serves at the same time as a storehouse of all thoughts generated on earth the earth's memory store can be accessed through what many metaphysicists call the akashic records apostrophe nevertheless since all physical objects of their dark matter counterparts larger mental bodies and storehouses of memories exist at the level of the solar system the galaxy clusters of galaxies the universe and the multiverse as a whole Global memory in 1908 Lee Beter explained that there is an affinity between any particle of matter and the record which contains its history, an affinity which enables it to act as a kind of conductor between that record and the faculties. 148. Of anyone who can read it the scenes through which we pass in the course of our life seem to act in the same manner upon the cells of our brain through which our mind is put en rapport with particular portions of the Akashic. Records apostrophe 12 from the 1930s onwards, Wilder Penfield developed a surgical procedure for epileptics, involving the use of a local anesthetic to open up and operate on a patient's exposed brain while the patient remained fully conscious this enabled Penfield to perform remedial treatment and at the same time use the opportunity to map out the functions of different areas of the brain cortex when he applied his electrode to the patient's temporal lobe. The patient began to describe a complete flashback to an episode from earlier in his life the scenes always moved forward, and only forward, and never still if music was involved, this followed the precise original tempo, the full score of which the patients would be able to hum with total accuracy, much as an autistic savant would be able to reproduce music with a high accuracy, Almost like a recording machine the temporal lobe has also been implicated in near-death experiences it appears that cells in the brain are hyperlinked to some non-local memory like the Akashic records some scientists like to think of records being mirrored in the zero-point field. If all subatomic matter in the world is interacting constantly with this ambient ground state energy field, the subatomic waves of the zero-point 
field are constantly imprinting a record of the shape of everything as the harbinger and imprinter of all wavelengths and all frequencies, the zero-point field is a kind of shadow of the universe for all time, a mirror image and record of everything that ever was. Lynn McTaggart, Science Reporter 13 Records imprinted on the zero-point field are the Akashic records of metaphysicists this forms the memory of the universal brain-mind according to Lee Beta, if the observer is not focusing on them, the records simply form the background to whatever is going on under such conditions they merely reflect the mental activity of a greater consciousness on a far higher plane 14 which is accessible to us we are in a sense living in a much larger brain this suggests that we use the shared, information processing, services of a much larger brain with other human beings observing the dynamic and visual Akashic records would be like watching the larger brain's movie from a distance as you move closer and focus on what is going on in a particular scene, you are immediately in the Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 149. Scene, surrounded by all the characters the characters of course cannot see you neither can you change anything in the scene in this way, a person can time travel as an observer, without violating causality what you are seeing is in the past, and sometimes in the future, our past or future is relative to our frame of reference. Nevertheless, the rate at which the story unfolds can be altered lead beta warns that the Akashic records must not be confused with mere man-made thought forms, which exist in abundance in the higher energy planes or spheres 15 it is possible that if the right brain is not shielded effectively from the usually dominant left brain, the theory maker, many errors will arise when reading the records. Brief History of the Akashic Records the Akashic Records or the Book of Life can be equated to the universe's supercomputer system it is this system that acts as the central storehouse of all information for every individual who has ever lived upon the earth. Kevin Tuchchi, Case Scholar The Akashic Records was a term coined by the Theosophical Movement which originated in the 19th century, and referred to a universal filing system which records every thought, word, and action these records are embedded in the Akasha, which is the Sanskrit word for sky, space or ether the records are said to have existed since the beginning of creation some describe these records as similar to a cosmic or collective consciousness the records have been referred to by different names including the cosmic mind, the universal mind, the collective unconscious or the collective subconscious the Akashic records resemble a library and has also been compared to a universal computer, some have described it as the mind of God, there are various databases covering different subjects the Akashic records and universal mind have also been referred to at various times and places as the hall of records and hall of knowledge different people, at different times, in different ways to different degrees are and have been able to access the Akashic records, apparently accessible via our subconscious mind some writers believe that free from and independent of all religions and faiths, there exist many libraries or record repositories such as the Akashic library throughout the universe, on various planes of existence it is a complete and thorough record of everything. 150. That has ever occurred including the thoughts and feelings of every individual, all through time the well-respected Australian metaphysicist Robert Bruce defines the Akashic records as an infinite, never-ending, interdimensional, energetic echo field, containing perpetual echoes, similar to the zero-point field, generated by each and every act of consciousness, in energetic form, different, levels of the Akashic records can be accessed and perceived, or viewed in various ways during an out-of-body experience, with the most common being the traditional library scenario apostrophe Bruce considers the records to be an energetic medium as opposed to the common belief that the records are a structured esoteric repository some who believe in the records claim that they were used by ancient peoples around the world, including the Indians, Moors, Tibetans, Egyptians, Persians, Judeans, Greeks, Chinese, Hebrews, Christians, Druids, and Mayans the belief is that the ancient Indian sages of the Himalayas knew that each soul recorded every moment of its existence in a book, 
and that if one attuned oneself then one could read that book in Egypt, it is said, those who could read the Akasha were held in high standing and were often found advising pharaohs on daily activities and dream interpretation a Chinese seer named Su Jujin was reported to need only the first name of anyone to access the records and describe their life history, another Chinese seer, named Da Zhao, explored a variety of topics in the records which span over 2000 years the Bible mentions the records as a book of life on several occasions, both in the Old and New Testaments the first reference in the scripture to some mysterious book is found in Exodus 32 colon 32 after the Israelites committed a most grievous sin by shaping the golden calf, Moses pleaded to God on their behalf even offering to have his own name struck out of thy book which thou hast written to compensate for the wrongdoing later, in the Old Testament, we learn that there is nothing about an individual that is not known in this same book in Psalm 139, David makes reference to the fact that God has written down everything about him and all the details of his life even that which is imperfect and deeds which have yet to be performed it was believed that the druid cultures of England and Wales demonstrated the ability to access the records the famous seer Nostradamus was claimed to have gained access to the records Rudolf Steiner, the Austrian born philosopher who lived up to the early 20th century, and founder of the Anthroposophical Society, possessed the ability to perceive information beyond the material world a spiritual world which was just as real to him as the physical world was to others when asked about the source of Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 151 His information, Edgar Case, the renowned clairvoyant, who died in 1945, replied that there were essentially two, the first was the subconscious mind of the individual for whom he was giving the reading and the second was the Akashic Records 16. Records etched in the fabric of reality Einstein displaced the theory of the ether with his 1905 special theory, of relativity, and then resurrected the concept with the idea of a space-time manifold in his 1915 general theory, of relativity based on a modern interpretation, and a simple substitution of terms. The Akashic records would be said to be written on this space-time manifold in fact, Edgar Case said just that, upon time and space is written the thoughts, the deeds, the activities of an entity, as in relationships to its environs, its hereditary influence, as directed, or judgment drawn by or according to what the entity's ideal is. Edgar Case 17. When Case was asked to explain what was meant by the Book of Life he replied that it was, the record that the individual entity itself writes upon the skein of time and space. 18 World-renowned Case scholar Kevin Tuchchi says that the Edgar Case readings suggest that each of us writes the story of our lives through our thoughts, our deeds, and our interactions with the rest of creation echoing Lynn McTaggart's description of the dynamic interaction of the universe with the zero-point field. Accessing the records every human being contributes and has access to the Akashic records various techniques, e.g. yogic breathing and visualizations, can be employed to quiet the mind to achieve the focused, pre-conscious state necessary to access the records the Akashic records are said to be visible and are often compared to seeing a full color movie with a plot and characters when viewing the future, the events are known, but the responses are only probable based on an individual's responses in the past, the Akashic seer or reader can investigate probable future responses and give the highest future probability including witnessing several alternate endings to the main characters in a movie at some point in the evolution of the Akashic reader, however, a state of unification and awareness can be achieved in which even the future responses are known with absolute clarity instead of only as a probability. 152. It is believed by some that the events recorded on the Akashic records can be ascertained or read in certain states of consciousness which can be induced by certain stages of sleep, weakness, illness, drugs, and meditation, 
so not only mystics but ordinary people can and do perceive the Akashic Records it is believed that the Akashic Records make clairvoyance and psychic perception possible some psychics who do past life readings claim to receive their information from the Akashic Records forensic psychics, who assist the police in investigations, appear also, quite frequently. To be accessing these records we also have the ability to access the records in our dreaming state the information received in precognitive dreams clairvoyant dreams relating to an event or a state not yet experienced, is often said to be ultimately derived from the Akashic records certain persons in subconscious states do read the Akashic records an explanation for this phenomenon is that the Akashic records are the macrocosm of the individual subconscious mind the intuitive mind, associated with the right brain, of the individual acts as a bridge between the discriminating mind, associated with the left brain, and the universal mind, as noted in the Lankavatara Sutra. See Chapter 2, the collective subconscious includes a network of subconscious minds which can be read by other subconscious minds someone who meditates regularly, over time, learns to restrain mental activities in the conscious mind, of ten associated with the left brain, and to go deeper and deeper within the subconscious mind, which is often associated with the right brain, until it merges with the bedrock. The universal mind that he begins to be able to perceive this universal knowledge instead of being limited to information and experiences that are accessible from the biomolecular brain he or she now has an expanded consciousness, and effectively using a larger brain, that is capable of receiving the accumulated knowledge of millions of people over thousands and tens of thousands of years Edgar Case did his readings in a sleep state a trance Dr. Wesley Ketchum described Case's method. Case's subconscious is in direct communication with all other subconscious minds, and is capable of interpreting through his objective mind, normally associated with the left brain, and imparting impressions received to other objective minds. Gathering in this way all knowledge possessed by endless millions of other subconscious minds apostrophe apparently Case was interpreting the collective subconscious mind long before the psychiatrist C. G. Jung postulated his concept of the collective unconscious, according to Dr. Daniel Condren 19 access to the Akashic records will differ from person to person it may often be presented as a library of books, one single book, images on a television or movie screen or perhaps even on a computer they are not. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 153 Actual books or scrolls, though many people see them as such when they access them, but they are actually energetic vibrations that are translated into these images and forms to make it accessible to our consciousness. Modes of Access According to Max Heindel's paper on the memory of nature, the Akashic records may be read in different modes in the lower energy etheric plane there are pictures of all that has happened in the world, at least several hundred years back, or much more in some cases, and they appear almost as the pictures on a screen in order to see an event unfolding in everyday sequence with the arrow of time pointing forward, Heindel advises us to rewind to a point in time before the event we are interested in then the scenes will roll forward in orderly sequence just as Benfield's patients saw the scenes moving forward, until we come to the episode we are interested in in a high air world the memory of nature is read in an entirely different manner, covering the essence of a whole life or event for example, if we concentrated our thoughts on the historical Martin Luther. We will call up in our mind at one flash the whole record of his life there will be neither beginning nor end. But we shall obtain at once the essence of his whole existence Heindl explains, neither will this picture or thought or knowledge be outside ourselves, so that we stand as spectators and look at the life of Luther, but the picture will be, so to speak, within ourselves, and we will feel ourselves as if we were actually Luther this picture will speak to our inner consciousness and give us a thorough understanding of his life and purpose we shall feel whatever he felt and obtain a perfect understanding of what the man was from the cradle to the grave every thought, no matter how secret, and every act, no matter how well concealed, will be known to us with all the motives and everything that led up to the event, and thus we shall obtain a most thorough understanding of the life of Luther so intimate that probably not he himself during life. 
realized himself as perfectly as we shall then apostrophe 20 this experience, incidentally sounds very similar to a life review during a near-death experience, as described by the metaphysicist, Charles Lee Beta 21. Difficulty in translating into temporal sequences having obtained such an intimate and thorough knowledge of Luther, Calvin, Napoleon, or any other man or event in history, or before the date when history was written, the ordinary conclusion would be that we should be able to write books that would explain all these things in the most accurate and comprehensive manner however, Heindel explains that anyone. 154 who has tried to read the memory of nature is kept in that high region will testify that they have felt just that way when they left the reading and returned to their ordinary brain consciousness however, thought must be manifested through the brain and to be intelligible to others it must be translated into sentences consecutively unfolding the ideas to be conveyed no one who has not felt this limitation on coming back from the heaven world with such valuable information can realize the chagrin and despair which one feels when he endeavors to do this laments heindel in the highest regions heindel explains all things are included in an eternal here and now there is neither time nor space, beginning nor end to arrange what was seen and heard and felt in that state of consciousness into consecutively arranged ideas in conventional time is next to impossible it simply refuses to filter through the brain. According to Heindel we who have seen and heard know what we have seen and heard, but we are unable to utter it there is no human language or tongue that can translate these things in an adequate manner and give to another anything but the faintest feeling the most attenuated shadow of the glorious reality, says Heindel 20 to this frustration is also a common one heard among near-death experiences. Interaction with the present much more than simply a memory storehouse, the Akashic records are said to be interactive the records appear to have a tremendous influence upon our everyday lives, our relationships, our feelings and belief systems and the potential realities we draw toward us according to Helena Blavatsky who lived in the 19th century, Russian immigrant, mystic, and founder of the Theosophical Society. The Akashic records are much more than simply an account of static data which may be gleaned by a sensitive, instead, the records have an ongoing creative stimulus upon the present the records connect each one of us to one another they contain the stimulus for every archetypal symbol or mythic story and have been the inspiration for dreams and inventions they draw us toward or repel us from one another they are the unbiased judge and jury that attempt to guide, educate, and transform every individual to become the very best that she or he can be a description that will be familiar to near-death experiencers who have undergone life reviews, they embody an ever-changing fluid array of possible futures that are called into potential as we interact and learn from the data that has already been accumulated according to Ernst Oortis, references in the Old Testament and beyond give us the sense that there is a collective storehouse of knowledge that Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 155. Is written on the fabric of reality the amount of information now stored in computer memory and crossing the internet highway daily is literally unfathomable and yet, this vast complex of computer systems and collective databases cannot begin to come close to the power, the memory, or the recording capacity of the Akashic records, he says the Akashic records contain the entire history of every soul, i.e. its world line. Since the dawn of creation these records connect each one of us to one another and have an effect upon us, here and now in fact, the records have such an impact upon our lives and the potentials and probabilities we draw toward us that any exploration of them, it is claimed, would provide us with deep insights into the nature of ourselves and our relationship with the universe. Collective Unconscious Jung's description of the collective unconscious has similarities with the Akashic records, the cosmic mind and cosmic consciousness it is a general metaphysical belief that individual human consciousness is like an island in a vast ocean of countless other islands above the surface of the water there is a sense of separate existence with definite boundaries where the shore meets the sea beneath the surface however, the island is connected to all the other islands personal awareness beneath our everyday consciousness, merges with a collective unconscious, 
through which we may be able to receive insights otherwise denied to us. Jung describes the collective unconscious as the all controlling the positive ancestral experiences from untold millions of years, the echo of prehistoric world events to which each century adds an infinitesimal small amount of variation and differentiation. These primordial images are the most ancient, universal and deep thoughts of mankind. Edgar Case discovered that he could put himself at will into the state of mind in which he could tap into this reservoir of knowledge. He dictated 14 million words while in this state of wider awareness his findings suggest that we all have this ability to tap into this information, truly the collective unconscious, but few of us can bring it to conscious awareness. Life reviews during near-death experiences case has stated that each person will be held accountable and will be confronted with his or her own personal Akashic record of what they have or not done in life. In the afterlife this is of course what often happens during a near-death experience when persons who have undergone a near-death experience report a life review apostrophe in discussing the process for accessing the Akashic records. Case described his experience as follows. I see myself as a tiny dot out of my fizzy. 156. Gull body, which lies inert before me suddenly, I am conscious of a white beam of light as this tiny dot, I move upward following the light dot 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 as I move along this path of light I gradually become conscious of various levels upon which there is movement upon the first levels there are vague, horrible shapes grotesque forms such as one sees in nightmares passing on, there begin to appear on either side misshapen forms of human beings with some part of the body magnified again there is change and I become conscious of grey hooded forms moving downward gradually, these become lighter in color then the direction changes and these forms move upward and the color of the robes grows rapidly lighter next, there begin to appear on either side vague outlines of houses, walls, trees, etc., but everything is motionless as I pass on, there is more light and movement in what appears to be normal cities and towns with the growth of movement I become conscious of sounds, at first indistinct rumblings, then music, laughter, and singing of birds quite suddenly I come upon a hall of records it is a hall without walls, without ceiling, but I am conscious of seeing an old man who hands me a large book, a record of the individual for whom I seek information apostrophe 23 once given the record, Case had the ability to select the information which would be most capable of assisting the individual at that time in his or her life frequently, a reading might suggest that only a selection of the available material was being provided, but that the individual was being given that which would be most helpful and helpful apostrophe additional insights were frequently provided in subsequent readings once an individual had attempted to work with and apply the information which had been given previously cases account above could pass off easily as a near death experience this and many other similarities lead to the conclusion that the Akashic records are being accessed in their life reviews during near death experiences based on records available from the International Association for Near-Death Studies, experiencers frequently describe their life reviews as panoramic or holographic in a life review. The experiencers' perception includes not only their own perspective in increased vividness, as if they were reliving a given episode, but that of all other parties they interacted with at each point being reviewed the term 3D is also employed to describe the inclusion of different physical perspectives onto a scene the high density of information was described by one reporting individual as enabling him to count every nearby mosquito, but equally common is the description of feeling the emotional experience of the other parties including in one case virtually everyone in a room while some accounts appear to describe scenes as selected, others narrate the experience as including. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16. 157. Details that they had long forgotten cognition expands dramatically Betty A.A.D. One near-death experience recounted, I was astonished that I could understand so much information at such a speed apostrophe you relive your life when you have a life review in 360 degrees panorama without turning your head, you may see your past, present and future you may even see how many leaves were on the tree when you were six years old. 
playing in the dirt in the front yard apostrophe you may watch your life from a second person's point of view you literally become every person that you have ever encountered you will feel what it feels like to be that person and you will feel the direct results of your interaction between you and that person the life review indeed has many interesting characteristics which are similar to a reading of the Akashic Records, these include instantly becoming everyone you came in contact with in your entire life, feeling their emotions, thinking their thoughts, living their experiences, learning their motives behind their actions, reliving every detail of every second of your life, every emotion, and every thought simultaneously and the way you dealt with others and how others dealt with you viewing a few special deeds in your life and replaying a part of your life review to focus on a particular event for instruction, and viewing past lives and slash or your future your motives for everything will be as visible as your actions this is why it has been repeated often that reading the Akashic records would have a beneficial effect on your personal development life reviews have been described as viewing a movie, a video, a vivid 3D color display of your entire life or segments of your life it has even been described as viewing hundreds of television screens with each screen showing a home movie of one event in your life some have described it as viewing a three-dimensional hologram of your life in full color, sound, and sent Betty A. A. D. recounted that her life appeared before her in the form of what we might consider extremely well-defined holograms, but at tremendous speed the scenes can also go into a preview mode, viewing scenes of your life in little bursts, at random, with the scenes of your life skipping from one scene to another, in fast-forward mode, viewing scenes of your life at a tremendous speed, in slow motion or paused, in order to focus on a particular detail of your life you may also enter the scene and relive your entire life with scenes of your life are projected around you, with square screens up and down the walls and on the ceiling this is very similar to how lead beta, described reading the Akashic records these variations in the speed of the reviews and selections of specific clips are characteristics of a deliberate review, very similar to a reading. 158 or review of the Akashic Records contemporary experiences may also see a screen that displays a tremendous amount of scientific data, numbers and universal codes, similar to how some autistic savants and geniuses view their solutions on their mental screens apostrophe a less contemporary type of review may be of a higher being reading from a book of life, for Christian experiences, or a being reading from the Akashic Records, for Hindu experiences. The review can take place before a council of elders who are seated at a table or even in an amphitheater the size of a sports stadium filled with light beings who will observe your review they witness everything you did, even in secret nevertheless, the review will feel like a fact finding rather than a fault finding review the beings may pause the review for a while if you are upset apparently to strengthen you with love they also take into consideration various aspects about your life, such as how you were raised, what you were taught, the pain inflicted upon you, and the opportunities missed or not received however, you are the judge the beings merely facilitate the review. Clairvoyance Clairvoyance is defined as a form of extrasensory perception whereby a person perceives distant objects, persons, or events, including seeing through opaque objects and the detection of types of energy not normally perceptible to humans, for example. Radio waves, typically, such perceptions are reported in visual terms, but may also include auditory or touch impressions remote viewing is closely related to clairvoyant abilities it allows a viewer to gather information on a target consisting of an object, place, person, etc., which is hidden from physical view of the viewer and typically separated from the viewer by some distance remote viewing is often done in conventional time, although some have reported to have crossed into the past or future it had been reported that in some instances psychics working with the CIA were asked to spy on Soviet military bases in their dreams they had many remarkable successes and were able to provide verifiable information about the chosen targets your dreams may already spontaneously reveal clairvoyant knowledge about distant locations or the future precognitive dreams are a special category of dream clairvoyance which appears to tell us that time may be an illusion, i.e. it is not the same in different frames of reference. Psychometry, 
or the ability to know about the history of a person, thing or place, using touch, is based on the metaphysical belief that every thought, action, and event that has ever occurred since the beginning of time leaves. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 159 an impression on the ether now interpreted as Einstein's space-time manifold or the zero-point field. Psychometric skills have therefore been closely linked to the ability to read the Akashic records as Lead Beta pointed out. Each cell in the brain seems to be linked to certain portions of the Akashic records many clairvoyants who tune into the past, including psychic detectives or forensic psychics are believed to read the Akashic records in order to get their information the role of forensic psychics in fighting baffling crimes appears to be growing in one case, a teenage girl vanished on her way home from school the police contacted psychic Nancy Orlan Weber who offered uncannily accurate descriptions of the crime, the suspect and where he's been hiding, using her clairvoyance New Jersey police, trying to solve the murder of a woman bludgeoned to death in her own bed first think her boyfriend did it a desperate family member contacts Weber, who sees that the boyfriend is innocent, and gives police details that help undo the real killer's alibi while shooting pool in a Louisiana bar, Andre Daigle meets a beautiful and mysterious woman that night, he disappears with no clues to go on, Andre's family calls in psychic Rosemary Kerr whose remarkable visions provide the answers New Orleans investigators are stumped when a young mother turns up beaten to death, and her son gravely injured the suspects, the husband and his friend, blame each other, so investigators turned to Kerr, who, tapping into the fallen wife's vibration, apostrophe discovers a truth that breaks the case a flooded creek during an unexpected storm rips two children from their mother's arms and they go missing psychic doctor Sally Heading helps track them down using clairvoyance the psychics often felt the pain of the victim and in some cases viewed the crime scene from the attackers point of view they were literally reliving the events this is obviously very similar to reading the Akashic records or undergoing a life review in a near-death experience is it a record or an alternate reality? Closer to our current era, a great deal of contemporary information on the Akashic records has been made available by both reputable psychics and modern-day mystics, individuals who have somehow perceived beyond the limits of three dimensions. Kevin Tushchi, Case Scholar Case alluded to the fact that the Akashic records were not simply a transcription of the past but included the present, the future, and certain. 160. Probabilities as well Max Heindel said that in a high air world the memory of nature is read in an entirely different manner, covering the essence of a whole life or event in 1899, Leadbeater reported that on a very high plane the past, present and future are all existing simultaneously he gives the analogy of a passenger in a train the passenger, if he could never leave the train nor alter its pace would probably consider the passing landscapes as necessarily successive and would be unable to conceive their coexistence apostrophe 24 comma emphasis added comma lead beater apparently anticipated Einstein's block universe concept and the relativity of simultaneity through his direct experience with super universes Paul Davis says physicists prefer to think of time as laid out in its entirety a timescape analogous to a landscape with all past and future events located that together apostrophe, emphasis added comma this is generally described as the block universe concept in physics human experience is temporal hence, we generally believe that only the present is real, while the past no longer exists and the future does not yet exist we also frequently believe that the future is indeterminate and contingent by contrast, in the block universe past, present and future all exist simultaneously all events are fully determined, and none are contingent apostrophe in a sense time becomes spatialized die it behaves as a spatial dimension. Just as we envision all of space as really being out there, as really existing, we should also envision all of time as really being out there, as really existing too. Brian Green, Physicist, The Fabric of the Cosmos Einstein's block universe bears a strong resemblance to descriptions of the nature of the Akashic records in higher planes, by Edgar Case, Max Heindel, 
Charles Leadbeater and other metaphysicists the question now arises, are the dynamic Akashic records being continuously written or is it simply an alternate reality where time is absent or diluted? When we read the Akashic records, are we peering into another reality where the measure of time is different, relative to the reality we are viewing it from? Are the Akashic records in the brain? That deaf, dumb and blind kid sure plays a mean pinball. How do you think he does it? I don't know. The who, pinball wizard. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 161 Researchers are probing the seventh mind from the inside, using both gene mapping and PET scans as these two paths of investigation converge. Many of our long-held notions about the limits of human potential are being overturned. Neuroscientists believe that savants tap into areas of the mind that function like supercomputers, compiling massive amounts of data from the senses to create a working model of the world. Apostrophe Derek Baravicini is a highly acclaimed jazz pianist who plays regularly with top names to packed houses. Stephen Wilcher's gift is art and books of his drawings have quickly become bestsellers around the world however, what is baffling about Derek and Stephen is that they have ics of less than 60, experience difficulty communicating, and often struggle to lead a normal life they are savants apostrophe savants are people who possess severe disabilities along with flashes of brilliance the term savant dates from the late 19th century. When a small number of people in European asylums classified as feeble-minded idiots were discovered paradoxically to have extraordinary, even uncanny skills one had memorized the decline and fall of the Roman Empire after reading it a single time others were able to multiply long columns of numbers instantly and factor cube routes in seconds, though they could barely speak savant syndrome itself is rare the rarest of the rare is the prodigious savant, like Raymond Babbitt portrayed in the movie Rain Man, who could memorize phone books, count 246 toothpicks at a glance, and trump the house in Vegas for savants, asking for a birth date is a common way of introducing themselves in every culture, the enhanced skills of savants cluster in the same narrow domains, numerical and calendar calculation, artistic and musical proficiency, mechanical aptitude and feats of memorization neuroscientists say that these tasks draw primarily on the strengths of the brain's right hemisphere. Indicating that, in many savants, a healthy right hemisphere is overcompensating for damage to the left many savants are left-handed, and most have deficits in language, additional clues that something is amiss in the left hemisphere according to scientists, autism rewires the brain's entire network from the limbic system to the executive functions in the frontal lobes that enable us to absorb new experiences, prioritize tasks, set goals, and imagine the future when these areas are damaged, we are at the mercy of a flood of incoming sensory impressions and conflicting impulses geneticists are also starting to identify DNA anomalies in savants from birth more than a dozen genes may contribute to autism several other forms of mental impairment also produce islands of startling ability, known as splinter skills in the man who mistook his wife for a hat, Oliver Sacks wrote. 162 about the twins who amused themselves for hours trading six-digit prime numbers, although they were incapable of performing even simple multiplication they told Sachs that they saw prime numbers just appear in their minds to understand how mentally retarded savants can do such complex calculations subconsciously, Derold Treft says, we need to examine one of the oldest, least evolved regions of the brain. The primitive storehouse of memory drift believes that when associative memory systems, located in the higher regions of the cortex, fail older parts of the brain, the ancient pathways in the basal ganglia known as habit memory, take over habit memory is Pavlovian, an archive of involuntary stimulus slash response loops, the memoir I that never forgets how to ride a bike it's not that savants remember everything, says drift it's that they are unable to forget anything Treft is convinced that some savants do not have to learn the algorithms involved in tasks like calendar calculating the software comes pre-installed you have to go beyond talking about traits, he says, 
and start talking about the genetic transmission of knowledge apostrophe, emphasis added comma the drawing abilities of most seven artists, for example, burst forth with no preparation, no training, and no practice, as if their skills were already there, fully fledged, needing only access to a pencil or a brush metaphysicists generally appeal to reincarnation theory for such spontaneous knowledge they point out that in many cases of reincarnation, where there is unexplainable and spontaneous knowledge from birth, there is no genetic link between the biomolecular body of the reincarnated person and his previous biomolecular body. Impairment uncovers genius San Francisco neurologist Bruce Miller noticed that certain people diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia suddenly develop aptitudes for music and art when their language faculties are destroyed by the disease. One patient, a 78-year-old linguist, began composing classical music soon after the onset of dementia, though he had little musical training. He felt that his mind was being taken over by notes and intervals. Another patient, an established landscape artist, turned toward abstraction and painted even more expressively as her verbal skills declined. Brain scans of frontotemporal dementia patients confirm patterns of damage similar to those found in many savants as the disease progresses. These patients experience curious perceptual alterations, becoming more attentive to textural details visual patterns, and sounds Bruce Miller now believes that as some patients with frontotemporal dementia get worse, they also get better he posited that the dementia does. Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 163. Not create artistic powers in these patients, it uncovers them the disorder switches off inhibitory signals from the left temporal lobes enabling suppressed talents in the right hemisphere to flourish. Instant genius as new research reveals more areas of untapped potential in the brain, some neurologists are asking whether there might be a way for the average person to switch on these hidden skills without having to suffer the kinds of brain trauma seen in Miller's dementia patients at the Center for the Mind in Sydney. Alan Snyder has built on the work of Treft and Oths to suggest that autistic savants have privileged access to the mind's raw data before it is parsed and filtered by the brain's executive functions musical savants, he believes, have absolute pitch because they tap directly into the discrete frequency receptors in the cortex without any left hemisphere meddling savant artists draw with exceptional accuracy, he says, because they see the world as it really is apostrophe. Our knowledge and expertise blind us if we could switch off our conceptual mind, we could have a momentary literal viewing of the world the computational abilities of savants may give them glimpses of the world as it really is, emphasis added comma. Alan Snyder. You would be excused if you thought that the above verse was taken from some ancient Buddhist scripture Buddhism, Hinduism and other Eastern meditative traditions, and Christian contemplatives have always looked at concepts as barriers to realization, enlightenment or union with the divine apostrophe Buddhism has always insisted that we need to see things as they really are this implies that meditative practices can also be used to uncover our genius some believe that savants acquire their peculiar skills like any normal person through repetitive practice another view is that savants have more highly developed brains in specific domains these explanations do not fit well with reports that savant skills can emerge spontaneously, e.g. following an accident or at the onset of frontotemporal dementia, and that these skills do not improve qualitatively with time, even though they may become better articulated furthermore. It would appear highly coincidental that a single savant can display several of these peculiar skills and that the same skills are found in savants across cultures, argues Snyder an alternative explanation is that savant skills are largely innate. 164. Requiring little or no practice because of their brain impairment, savants have a paradoxical access to a wealth of information that resides equally within everyone but cannot normally be accessed to test this hypothesis, 
Snyder suggested that repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation may be used to temporarily facilitate savant-like skills in normal people. Low frequency magnetic stimulation inhibits brain activity thereby creating virtual lesions apostrophe similar to what Michael Pissinger had been doing with his god helmet apostrophe Snyder delivered the inhibiting treatment for 15 minutes at either 0 5 hertz or 1 hertz over the left frontotemporal lobe of 11 healthy participants an area of the brain implicated in the Savant syndrome. Both in the case of born Savants and Savants who emerged later in life due to frontotemporal lobe dementia three of the four facilitated participants experienced altered psychological states after stimulation one participant said he was more alert and conscious of detail apostrophe 25 Snyder believes he is switching off the conceptual mind by creating virtual lesions in the left temporal lobes volunteers given this treatment. Snyder says, draw more naturalistically, and their proofreading skills also improve, because they see what's in front of their eyes, rather than what their conceptual minds think they are seeing according to Snyder, recent experimental findings are consistent with the possibility that savant-like skills are accessible, can be switched on, by turning off disinhibiting, the part of the brain that inhibits access to such skills 26 such magnetic stimulation is known to inhibit the normal functioning of localized regions of the brain 27. We emphasize that these changes are due to the inhibiting influence of low frequency transcranial magnetic stimulation they are due to turning off part of the brain, not exciting it the intent of our study is not to devise a clinical application but rather to provide empirical evidence for the hypothesis that savant-like skills can be facilitated in a healthy individual by suppressing part of the brain with transcranial magnetic stimulation. Savant skills are not normally accessible without a rare form of brain impairment. Comma emphasis added comma. Alan Snyder 28. Snyder's findings support Aldous Huxley's eliminative theory of the brain and also the extended theory presented in this book which concludes that it is due to the impairment or shutting off of specific parts of the brain that results in mystical and psychic states, and access to information which would not normally be associated with our everyday state of Universal Brain 1001 ND Chapter 16 165 Consciousness Snyder believes that the mental apparatus to perform lightning fast, calculations resides in us all, even though it is not normally accessible 29 this suggests that the unusual skills of savants can be used as a diagnostic tool to probe information from lower level mechanisms which is not available to introspection in the normal mind however, the savant has not revealed unknown or unexpected mechanisms in the case of drawing or perfect pitch. According to Snyder the physics of natural scenes already tells us how perspective must be computed by the brain and discrete frequency analyzers are already known to be the primary auditory receptors nor, in this vein, should the savant's astonishing feats of recall for detail reveal anything new about mental processing, Snyder says, since much evidence supports the view that we all store an enormous amount of information with only a minute subset available for recall apostrophe 30 hour recall, like our drawing skills. Appears to be concept orientated 31 this blocks us from unfiltered information. Facts or assumptions? Medical science and those associated with it assume that the information is buried inside the brain but can this information be non-local? The invisible superstructure that supports the activities of the brain, which has been discussed in this book is a better candidate for the complex calculations and recall, by reading the Akashic records, that savants have impairment not only uncovers savant skills but intuitive knowledge and mystical visions precognitive dreams which suggest the dilution of time betrays the fact that these experiences do not originate with the brain but pass through it, as suggested by many psychics, mystics and metaphysicists. In the process getting filtered and clogged up this produces the familiar near-death experience amnesia or the post-birth amnesia of a reincarnated being according to Hebb's rule in neuroscience, when neurons repeatedly fire in a particular pattern, that pattern becomes a semi-permanent feature of the brain, i.e. it becomes a memory if the connections so formed should later prove of little use, 
resulting from infrequent firings across the previously strengthened synapses. The connections weaken on their own from the lack of stimulation yet we know from the study of autistic savants that they can remember prodigious amounts of information from just one encounter with the stimulus spontaneously even decades after the event with photographic clarity there appears to be no need for rehearsal, reinforcement or constant recall to strengthen synapses how does Hebb's rule fit into all this? Surely this suggests a different type of memory mechanism. 166. Which is clearly not explained in current neuroscience, which studies only the biomolecular brain of photographic recall, CD-like audio recall, fast calculations and video player operations such as fast forwarding and rewinding suggest an electromagnetic substrate which can be found in higher energy magnetic plasma bodies these are only uncovered or unveiled more fully when biochemical operations in the brain fail so long as neuroscientists are fixated on the brain they will never realize that the brain acts just like a tv basically as a receiver and tuner the scientist who exclaims see we have proof, the PET scans show that the neural activity in the brain has changed, is missing the point all experiences can be interpreted by changes in the brain because the transmission passes through the brain unless the person takes a wider view, gets his eyes off the TV and looks around to see the background infrastructure of TV aerials or cables. He will be oblivious to the fact that the signals are being transmitted from a broadcasting station instead of trying to get the wet biomolecular brain to explain everything in piecemeal, like proposing an epicycle to explain each deviation from a plan A's orbit, before modern science, it is time for a shift in paradigms in fact, all explanations become easier and more natural when we take the view that the biomolecular brain that is visible to us is just the tip of an iceberg there are invisible superstructures that science is only beginning to suspect in order for the paradigmatic shift to occur in neuroscience, neuroscientists must look to cutting edge physics for the wider view there are current scientific theories, taught in mainstream physics which tell us that only 1% of the universe is visible to us if that is the case, why treat the visible brain as an end in itself? Isn't it logically possible for an invisible superstructure to be supporting the more complex operations observed and currently being misattributed to mysterious processes in the wet biomolecular brain? The conscious self is a construct of evolutionary processes and is unquestionably distinct from pure awareness individual consciousness is a secondary reality deriving from organic evolution and pure awareness unlike individual subjective consciousness, pure awareness is non-local, unlimited and creative. Comma emphasis added comma. Andrew Newberg and Eugene de Quilly, Neuroscientists 33. 167. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-17. Full-time mystic, part-time scientist. The mystic's knowledge is experiential, scientific knowledge is analytical to understand the difference. We can consider two beings with different modes of perception, one being, the scientist, can only see lines, a 1D perception the other being, representing the mystic can see 3D objects both have the ability to think abstractly the only difference is in their perception of the world in this example, imagine reality is a 3D cube informing a model of this cube, the 1D being would generate a plethora of theories to explain how the lines form up into a cube the 3D being, however, can see the cube, its nature would be self-evident and axiomatic to him it would appear superfluous to him to construct theories that the separate lines make up the cube apostrophe while linear thinking and theory making is associated with the left brain. The right brain is associated with spatial intelligence, which includes 3D perception Michael Gazaniga writes that the left brain is constantly and reflexively generating theories to explain the internal and external events that occur around us and it is because of that structure that we always attribute causes to everything that happens to us one findings suggest that the interpretive mechanism of the left hemisphere is always hard at work, seeking the meaning of events it is constantly looking for order and reason, even when there is none which leads it continually to make mistakes it tends to overgeneralize, frequently constructing a potential past as opposed to a true one too of course, 
while science generates theories it also. 168. Checks it, so there is a correcting mechanism in trying to communicate with the 1D observer and trying to relate to the latter's theories, the mystic often tries to interpret his 3D experiential knowledge in the context of 1D analytic knowledge, after getting acquainted with the latest 1D theories and then extending them to fit his observations it is here that many mistakes are made the mystic may not be adequately versed in the latest 1D scientific theories he may not even have any interest in them previously or currently the relevant theories and mathematics may be so far short of explaining the 3D observation that it may take decades or lifetimes to construct 1D theories that adequately describe them the mystic is therefore confronted with this dilemma after many years of evolving to a new awareness in a higher dimensional consciousness. He has to now descend to lower grade analysis to explain to 1D analysts his truths in terms of what they know in doing so. He has to tether his higher dimensional consciousness now to a lower dimensional consciousness in order to relate his 3D, experiential, knowledge to the existing 1D, analytical knowledge. He may neither have the expertise nor the motivation to do this this knowledge, which is highly prized by the 1D beings, is uneconomical long-winded and dead to him he has to force himself to an unrewarding task of going back to 1D basics most mystics, however, choose to remain where they are and try to coerce and educate ones to a higher dimensional awareness through mental training however, ones may not always be very responsive to the new knowledge because they cannot readily relate to them this is particularly true of scientists firstly. This is because of the attachment that a scientist has to his body of knowledge that he had created and tested he would therefore expect the mystic to relate his knowledge to this body of knowledge secondly. His 1D knowledge would be so extensive and intensive that the mystic would have a hard time trying to relate his 3D experiential knowledge to this vast 1D analytic knowledge of the scientist the mystic would have to be a full time 1D scientist and 3D mystic, at the same time. Even to ask one scientist to be an expert in two different areas of science would be at all order to ask a mystic to promptly take an interest in something that he had already rejected a long time ago and now to become an expert in it would be almost impossible hence, there are very few mystic scientists this also explains the current gap between science and religion however. To fulfill a mystic's social responsibilities the mystic has to find time to update his scientific knowledge and relate his experience to this knowledge at the same time, ones have to embark on exercises to develop their consciousness and awareness this will put fewer burdens. Full-time Mystic, Part-Time Scientist Chapter 17 169 on teachers with higher dimensional consciousness there could also be intermediaries who are sympathetic to both parties and who have the ability to interpret the findings of one party to another notable examples include William James, Carl Jung, Ken Wilbur, Gopi Krishna, Itzhak Bentoff and Rudolf Rucker, this is not an exhaustive list. Experiential versus analytic knowledge Harman and Ringold say that one of the primary characteristics of the experience of mystical states is that it does not lend itself well to precise verbal expressions they are experiential traditions apostrophe William James called this quality ineffability and explains that no definite report of the content of the experience can be given by the subject in words the quality must be directly experienced it cannot be imparted or transferred to others apostrophe while, bottom up, analysis, associated with the left brain, is natural for the wants. Analysis diminishes and becomes superfluous for the threads who appear to be using intuition or direct knowledge, associated with the right brain, what are considered theoretical deductions, logical extensions from axioms, in a lower dimensional space would be considered axiomatic self-evident. In a higher dimensional space the mystic does not need theories because he has first-hand experience of it by altering the way his brain processes information from the environment or even changing the body brain that he is operating in when Niels Bohr invoked the complementarity principle, which basically states that the reality of electrons or photons cannot be reduced to a 1D, particle concept or a, 1D, wave concept. 
he edged science out of a purely linear approach both contradictory dimensions must be accepted at the same time to understand the nature of the electron or photon although this can be understood abstractly. Most of us cannot perceive this directly or even imagine it, in our mind's eye, the dominant left brain, possessing serial perception oscillates between two contradictory concepts or images Poe's complementarity principle is not mathematically derived from quantum theory, it was invoked on an intuitive basis to explain the conflicting theories which arose from experimental results it cannot be proven within quantum theory in higher dimensional perception, because the observer is part of the environment he is observing. The subject-object dichotomy breaks down if we perceived our bodies in all four dimensions, three space plus one time dimension, our bodies would be indistinguishable from the universe as every particle is connected to every other particle in time, beginning from the Big Bang apostrophe the whole universe was the size of a particle in the first instant that this universe was generated it is only because the dimensionality of our frame. 170 a reference is less than the dimensionality of the universe that we perceive our bodies as separate objects in a universe this is the shaky basis of what we call objectivity apostrophe the universe, perceived in this frame of reference is devoid of subjectivity as the dimensionality of the frame of reference of perception increases, objects merge with the universe and the two become indistinguishable if a person was observing himself as an object, then as the dimensionality of his frame of reference increases, emerges and becomes indistinguishable from the universe the dichotomy between subjectivity and objectivity then breaks down what if the dimensionality of our frame of reference is greater than the universe? Then the universe would become an object in us. A swelling glory within me began to envelop towns, continents, the earth, solar and stellar systems, tenuous nebulae, and floating universes the entire cosmos, gently luminous like a city seen afar at night, glimmered within the infinitude of my being. Paramahansa Yogananda 3. Mystics perceive this directly and experience it first hand to a scientist, however, a mystic may appear very simplistic because he does not carry around the big bag of rigorous theories to support what he says the knowledge gained by the mystic is axiomatic and self-evident since there is no theory, nothing can be communicated to the scientist in terms of linear theories, only observations a 1D analysis of the 3D experience would generally rate several self-contradictory, geometrically orthogonal, 1D theories although analysis which is associated with the left brain is an integral part of meditation, it is generally not associated with meditation in the layman's mind its purpose is mainly to assimilate the experience of the right brain into the left brain's framework perhaps it has not been emphasized because there is a risk that the brain mind may get carried away with analysis which provides pseudo multidimensionality, multidimensional models not multidimensional experiences these are not self-evident truths, they are disconnected correlates and cheap substitutes of multidimensional experience multidimensional experience, which represents a top-down approach to knowing, when translated to linear scientific theories is therefore necessarily paradoxical and ineffable as each dimension is orthogonal, contradictory, to another linear theoretical analysis, which represents a bottom-up approach to knowing similar to cognitive processes associated with the left brain, is necessarily incomplete, compared to 2D or 3D experience, because full-time mystic, part-time scientist chapter 17, 171, of the condition of logical self-consistency within each dimension each dimension is closed off insular, but unbounded, within that dimension, for a wonder furthermore, Emergent properties brought about by the interaction of various dimensions, or theories, may be missed one clue to the development of polarities in knowledge generation is the excluded middle apostrophe Aristotelian, bivalent, asymmetric, logic, which excludes the middle, generates polarities, which in turn generates complexity if the universe is a mirror then the excluded middle is the crack in the middle of the mirror, so that the attributes in one broken part of the mirror is reflected in the other mirror with reversed attributes this is evidenced in the fractals Cantor's set and Gotch's snowflake, 
Both examples of complexity arising from excluding the middle polarities arise when the middle is excluded experiences in the middle, analysis leaves you at the poles. End of science 1 Limitation of experiential mystical knowledge is its increased subjectivity, since, most of this knowledge is axiomatic it may be difficult to communicate this knowledge to linear analysts apostrophe the second disadvantage is that since the three dare has no theories, only axioms, his knowledge would be perceived to be of little value to the linear scientist this argument may be used to support analysis against experience as it stands in history. The mystic says that we do have the facilities to perceive reality directly, stating that such abilities have been underdeveloped in human beings the scientists are not convinced, citing the lack of empirical evidence however, with new scientific instruments and unavoidable changes to scientific theories, the realities that mystics experienced and are experiencing are being increasingly reflected in modern scientific theories if everybody took the mystic's route, we would find that as our experience is enhanced. The need for linear analysis is reduced and can even be eliminated science would become redundant knowledge would become totally axiomatic and experiential however, until consciousness is brought to higher dimensions, science would still have a crucial role to play it can generate higher dimensional knowledge through linear correlates of higher dimensional experience in fact. There is a one-to-one -one mapping of linear analysis to higher dimensional experience however, the mapping is not an experience the difference between a linear mapping and a 3D experience is that the former is sequenced in time, correlating it with the left brain, but the latter is simultaneously perceived, correlating it with the right brain. 172 Reality decomposition in lower dimensions bottom-up processing breaks the world into tiny pieces and then puts it back with theories and laws in a process of generalization in a kind of reverse engineering it takes the world apart and studies its components to see what relationship these components have with other components the discovered relationships, invariants or symmetries, are expressed in theories and laws to a certain extent, this is second-hand knowledge the advantage of this knowledge however, is that it is portable, it can be easily communicated to others something similar happens when 3D sounds received by a telephone receiver is converted to 1D bits of data that travel along telephone lines the portability of scientific knowledge has made it popular the disadvantage of this knowledge is that it has to be reconstructed by the receiver involving a laborious process this may introduce errors due to incorrect processing of the data and noise in the incoming signals furthermore, the difference between holistic experiential knowledge and analytical knowledge by parts is the difference between knowing 12 edges or lines and their relationships and seeing a cube while a 3D observer may see a cube, a linear observer sees 12 edges furthermore, this linear observer notices that these 12 edges have some relationship this is because they appear to move together also, if he punches into one edge, let us imagine the cube as a wooden crate the others vibrate and deform then he formulates a theory from this relationship he empirically tests his theory every time he punches into one edge, at least one other edge deforms in the opposite direction so he formulates a theory, that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction all other linear experimenters record the same result this theory then becomes a law however, for a 3D observer, these laws and theories are superfluous because of the lack of two dimensions, the linear observers have to formulate a number of theories and laws to link disparate events to the linear observer analyst this theory and law is meaningful to the 3D observer, the relationship between the edges is self-evident axiomatic, there is no need for proof the linear theory appears simplistic to the 3D observer what is axiomatic to the 3D observer is theoretic to the linear observer subjectivity of higher dimensions there is an increasing integration of disconnected events and observations as the dimensions of consciousness increases there is also a movement towards experience, and experiential knowledge, and greater subjectivity, a movement from theorems to axioms. The subjectivity of 3D experiential knowledge means that the mystic cannot share his experiences with linear analysts in a direct way however, the subjectivity arises partly due to the fact that his listeners are linear thinkers if all his listeners were 3D observers, 
his knowledge would not be considered subjective and incommunicable apostrophe this subjectivity is therefore, in the first instance, a measure of the disparity between the communicators and the listener's dimensionality of consciousness from another point of view this subjectivity can be considered a prejudice generated by linear analysts scientists the only difference between an empirically tested theory and an experientially tested theory is that in the form of the measuring instruments are non-human, or more generally, not self-conscious. If a 3D observer outlines an experiment to be conducted with human measuring instruments, i.e. the senses and the brain mind, and the outcome of this experiment is confirmed by the majority of experimenters, this should be considered an objective result but it is not in hard science, generally. The outcome is considered to be objective only if the majority of experimenters record the same results using non-human measuring instruments. 174. Epilogue. Redefining the partnership There are mistakes and imprecision in scientific experiments There are contradictions in scientific theories just like religion, science too has its share of tricksters and fraudsters Science and religion, more accurately spirituality, are complementary, one is empirical the other is experiential the experiences of religion should be analyzed by science in a respectful way for its own benefit, not to be summarily dismissed just because it does not conform to conventional scientific theory these are valuable human experiences which can be studied to develop our scientific knowledge of the world around us and ourselves science would eventually mature and accept contradictory theorize, which explain the same experimental results as part of a multidimensional reality in this way, there will be more resonance between science, philosophy and religion as science moves into an appositional phase, where conflicting and complementary internally self-consistent linear theories are accepted, as in the case of the particle wave duality in quantum physics, we will see a closer matching between scientific and mystical models of reality. Moving forward there is much evidence to support the view that a different kind of reality is experienced when we develop our right holistic brain, a reality which is just being explored and described by science this reality has been described in religious and metaphysical literature meditative techniques have been developed, even as far back as 2500 years ago. To enter into this reality spiritual drugs have also been used by certain cultures to facilitate entry. Epilogue. 175. Into alternate realities in the future, sophisticated electronic instruments and drugs may effectively cause the differentiation of the relevant parts of the brain, and channel the mind stream to different meditative states using genetic engineering and brain engineering, the future human brain may be customized to the user's requirements enabling minds tourists or psychonauts to take tours to parallel universes and different states of consciousness safely, and even migrate from one reality to another. Synergistic relationship between the brains the left and right brains in the human body have a synergistic relationship, each brain enabling the other brain to maximize its natural abilities Frederick Schiffer says, we may have two minds, or distinct parts of our personality when they are similar. Our personality is harmonious and we feel a sense of mental well-being when the two sides are in conflict, we feel confused, stressed, anxious, depressed apostrophe the emphasis on the right brain in meditation does not appear to be an end in itself since we are left brain dominant, this movement basically bring us back to the center in fact, in meditation. We frequently focus our eyes in between our eyebrows eye movements have been shown to correlate to neural activities in the relevant brain focusing at the center means maintaining a middle position. Between the two brains meditation also makes us more conscious of the contents of our subconscious it is a way for our left brain to get to know our right brain much better on a metaphysical level, harmony between the brains means harmony and integration between our mental bodies and our emotional bodies the real goal of spirituality appears to be the integration of these bodies, so that the to become one body, one mind but a balance between right and left brain activity is also a mark of the genius hence, the spiritual goal is also an operational goal for living life to the fullest.